directed by call to order. The Secretary of the Commission is directed to call the roll. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. The Honorable Chairman, Senator Panfilo M. Larson of the Committee on Foreign Affairs of the Commission on Appointments, other officers and members of this committee. Advincula, Almario, President. Alvarez Jr. Present. Arbison. I will start with you. Cagas. Tepeco Jr. In video, Unahin Muday. De La Rosa. De La Rosa. Trilon. Present. Present. Senator De La Rosa is uh, present. Yeah, you see, Mom. Ninja naman na yung trape. Umunga Trilon. Ferrer the Fourth. Heron. Go. Pontiveros. Present. Noel. Pancho. Present. Pimento the third. Bo. Ramirez Sato. Recto. Revilla Jr. Present. Villanueva. Villar. Present. Zamora. Present. Subiri. Mr. President, uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Senator Drillon. Yes, can, can, you, can the Secretary please record my presence? Thank you, Senator Drillon. Thank Good you, sir. Really sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. May I also speaking? presence be recorded? Oh, Ms. Mujipeko. Who is who is speaking? Sorry. Ms. Mujipeko, Mr. Chairman. Ah, uh, Congressman Chipeko. Thank you. Noted. Duly noted, Mr. Chairman. Co contact. Contact uh, Bongo. Yeah, Senator Go, duly noted. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Senator Go. Anybody else? Okay. With one member physically present uh, and 14 members present online with a total of 15 members present, the existence of quorum is hereby declared. The majority Leader. Mr. Chairman, I move to dispense with the reading of the minutes held on uh, our meeting held on March 24, 2021, and consider the same as approved. Is there any objection? There being none, the reading of the minutes of the meeting held on 24 March 2021 is dispensed with, and the same is considered approved. Before we proceed, the chair would like to acknowledge the presence of the good Secretary of Foreign Affairs, Teddy Boyloxin. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, today, the Committee on Foreign Affairs will deliberate on the two nominations and 13 at interim appointments of officials in the Department of Foreign Affairs. Of the 15 nominees and appointees, seven are present in person and eight are present online in today's deliberation. Please stand up as your name is called. Myla Grace Rajena Catalbas Makahilig. Chief of Mission Class 2, as Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary to the Holy See, with concurrent jurisdiction over the Sovereign Order of Malta. Ezidin Hamdi Tago, Chief of Mission Class 2, as Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary to the Arab Republic of Egypt, with concurrent jurisdiction over the Republic of Djibouti, 
the Federal Democratic of Ethiopia and State of Eritrea and the Republic of Sudan. The ad interim appointments, Charmaine Rowena Kawile Abikivil, Chief of Mission Plus Two, Roderico Caparas Atienza, Career Minister, Donna Celeste D. Feliciano Gatmaitan, Career Minister, Lili Ann Chen Cheng, Foreign Service Officer Class One, Shayna R. Escoto Tesorero, Foreign Service Officer Class One. The following are present online. Again, at interim appointments, Maria Teresita Cruz Daza, Chief of Vision Class One. Adrian Bernie Cabardo Candolada, Chief of Vision Class Two. Morning, sir. Lilibeth Velasco Pono, Chief of Mission Class 2. Josephine Magpantay Reynante, Chief of Mission Class 2. Elizabeth San Te, Chief of Mission Class 2. Emmanuel Donato Koch Guzman, Career Minister. Gonaranao Bantuas Musor, Career Minister. Erika Ana Tan Abad, Foreign Service Officer Class 1. Secretary Villacorta kindly report on the status of the jurisdictional requirements and the other relevant information relative to denominations and ad interim appointments of 15 officials in the Department of Foreign Affairs in compliance with the new rules of the Commission and the new rules of the Standing Committees. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, Your Honors, the two nominees and 13 appointees have complied with the submission of the necessary documentary requirements pursuant to Section 24, Chapter 6 of the new rules of the Commission. Their nominations and ad interim appointments were referred by the Commission Chairperson Senate President Vicente C. Soto III to the Committee on Foreign Affairs pursuant to Section 16, Chapter 5 of the new rules of the Commission. Likewise, their nominations and ad interim appointments were published in various dates in two newspapers of general circulation and broadcast over PTB4 pursuant to Section 2, Article 2 of the new rules of the Standing Committees. The Secretariat received a letter from HRMODFA signed by OIC Mersole J. Meliehor, dated 27 May 2021, addressed to the committee chairman, Senator Panfilo M. Lacson, requesting for the waiver of personal appearances of seven officials in the Department of Foreign Affairs, namely, Maria Teresita Cruz Daza, Chief of Mission Class 1, Adrian Bernie Cabardo Candolada, Chief of Mission Class 2, Elizabeth Tante, Chief of Mission Class 2, Lilibet Velasco Pono, Chief of Mission Class 2, Josephine Magpantay Reynante, Chief of Mission Class 2, Emmanuel Donato Koch Guzman, Career Minister, Erika Anatan Abad, Foreign Service Officer, Class 1. The aforementioned officials are currently assigned abroad and are needed in their respective posts to provide assistance to nationals and perform vital consular, political, economic, and cultural functions. The request for waiver of their physical appearance is also in line with the austerity and safety measures implemented in connection with the COVID-19 pandemic. HRMODFA likewise requested in the same letter for the waiver of personal appearance of Mr. Gunarano B. Mosor, career minister who tested positive for COVID-19, COVID-2. Commission the Commission Secretariat has not received any opposition against any of the nominees and appointees today. That is all, Mr. Chairman, your honors. Thank you. Uh, Secretary Villacorta. The Chair acknowledges the presence online 
of Senators Subiri and Bongrevilla. We just log in. Thank you, Majority Leader. Mr. Chairman, I move that the letter dated May 27, signed by OIC Melievor, requesting for waiver of personal appearances of eight officials for reasons stated therein and as reported by the CA Secretary be approved. I so move, Mr. Chair. Is there any objection? The Chair hears none. The motion is approved. Secretary Villacorta kindly admits her the oath to the nominees and appointees. Those in person and online, please stand up and raise your right hands. Before you proceed, may I just inquire from those who are present online, are you all under or uh, under Philippine jurisdiction, your locations? Thank you. Please proceed. Do you all swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in this proceeding? So help you, God. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, all the nominees and appointees are now under oath. Thank you, Secretary Villaporta. Now we call on kindly proceed to the front, uh, occupy the front seat, uh, Ambassador Makahili. Thank you, ma'am, and welcome to the Senate. Kindly, if you have any introductory statement, you may proceed. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Your Honor, um, the honorable members of the committee, colleagues in government, magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. I am very much privileged to come before you today in connection with my nomination as the Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary to the Holy See with concurrent jurisdiction over the Sovereign Order of Malta. My name is Myla Grace Rahenia Catalbas Makahilig. I have been with the Department of Foreign Affairs for 23 years. I am currently the Assistant Secretary for the Office of Financial Management Services. My previous Foreign Service postings were in the Philippine Embassy in Wellington, New Zealand from 2002 until 2008 and the Philippine Embassy in the United Kingdom from 2012 until 2018. If my nomination merits your favorable consideration today, Your Honors, this will be my first posting as ambassador. Um, this year is actually a very auspicious year for Philippines and um, the Holy See diplomatic relations. As everyone may remember, this is actually the 70th year of the establishment of diplomatic relations between the Philippines and the Holy See. In addition, the Catholic Church in the Philippines is actually commemorating the 500th year um, of the introduction of Christianity to the country. With these milestones in mind and building on the many um, of the wonderful and, and extraordinary work of the previous ambassadors, I would expect that more can be done to further the warm ties between the Philippines and the Holy See. And I count on the generous support of my colleagues in the department, other government agencies relevant to the relations, as well as the whole uh, Philippine government machinery to make that happen. Um, with your generous support, sir, I'm ready to take up the mandate as the Philippine ambassador to the Holy See. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. The, the chair likewise acknowledges the physical presence of uh, Congressman John John Ferrer, the chairman of the Committee on National Defense. The nominee as well, the, as, the, as well as the other nominees and appointees are now ready to respond to comments or questions from the members of the committee. Anyone? Yes, uh, Senator Rizan Deveros is recognized. Salamat po, Mr. Chairman. At uh, uh, magandang umaga po kay Ambassador Myla Grace Rehenya Catalbas Makahilig. Mr. Chair, meron lang po akong isang tanong kay Ambassador Makahilig. So, Mr. Chair, Ambassador, uh, on April 8th this year, 
the Holy See and the Philippines, as the ambassador uh, just said, marked uh, our 70 years of diplomatic relations. Former Philippine Ambassador Grace uh, Relucio Princesa made a remarkable statement that, quote, let the Philippine Embassy in the Vatican start this, diplomacy for humanity, diplomacy for the common good, and one of this is migration, close quote. On this note, Ambassador, how do you intend to further strengthen our bilateral relations with the Holy See and the Sovereign Order of Malta, Mr. Chairman? Madam Ambassador, there's a request here from our stenographers para daw po medyo malinaw yung inyong pag-record nila ng boses ninyo. Kindly remove your face mask. Thank you. You may now respond. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Um, one of the things that we do share with the Holy See is a common uh, appreciation and value and advocacy on um, interfaith dialogue and migration, among other um, things. I believe that the work of the embassy continues on in that we have to harness the wide diaspora of the Filipinos um, so that we are able to um, project the values that are um, inherently Filipino in that our concern for our fellow men. And um, counting on the statements of His Holiness um, Pope Francis, I think we can continue with the idea that each man should also be responsible for his fellow man. Um, it's not an individual um, activity that can be done, but a whole community of nations working together. And on that, the Philippine Embassy in the Holy See can take lead. Um, another point, um, especially in the point of migration, is that um, we can develop networks amongst the different Filipino communities throughout the, throughout the world. And um, as it is now, there are very good representations of not just the Philippines, but how strong the Catholic faith is within the Philippines and within that community. And um, those are great examples of how much um, the, the strong uh, relationship between the Philippines and the Holy See is. Thank you very much, Sir. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador. Salamat po, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I appreciate the... Uh, response uh, of the ambassador also in the light of yung uh, humilia na binigay ni uh, Pope Francis uh, sa misa nila nung para gunitain yung 500th anniversary uh, ng pananampalatayang kristyano dito sa Pilipinas dahil binigyan din ng pangunahing pansin ni Pope Francis ang mga Filipino migrants uh, at ang mga kababaihan sa hanay ng Filipino migrants. So thank you very much, Ambassador Advanced. Congratulations po, mabuhay kayo. Salamat, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Risa. Yes, uh, Senator Rizon Deveros again. You're good. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I do have uh, a question each for uh, at least two others of our ambassadors. Um, uh, if if no one else from the committee will ask, may I may I pose a question, Mr. Chairman, to Ambassador Ambassador Ezedin Tago? Thank you, ma'am. You're excused. In the, in the meantime, Ambassador uh, Tago, please uh, occupy the front seat. Magandang umaga po, uh, Ambassador Tago. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I actually have two but related questions uh, for the good Ambassador. Ambassador, in a virtual conference held in December 2020, the President reaffirmed diplomatic ties with India, Chile, Hungary, Russia, uh, Pakistan, Finland, and Egypt. Uh, Ambassador Shehabeldin of Egypt committed to explore all avenues for cooperation and to open a new chapter in Philippine-Egypt relations 
as the two countries mark our 75th anniversary of diplomatic relations this year. Could you, Ambassador, please give the committee an update uh, on our diplomatic relations with Egypt, Mr. Chairman? Uh, good morning. Uh, good morning, Honorable uh, Chair, Honorable uh, Member. Thank you for the question. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, the Philippines and Egypt uh, celebrated this year in March 3, 75 years of diplomatic relations with Egypt. Along uh, uh, During this time, we've signed 23 uh, agreements, and we have in the pipeline uh, at least 17 proposed agreements in different areas and different concerns in trade, culture, uh, uh, economy, political consultations, and uh, uh, many different uh, agreements. Uh, we had a wonderful celebration that I watched part of uh, in March, a joint one between the Ministry of Culture, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and the Philippine Embassy there, a cultural program that celebrated our 75 years. Uh, I am sure that uh, the President and uh, the new ambassador, when he had presented his credentials, Ambassador Ahmed Shahab Dean, were talking about the next 75 years uh, of our uh, relations and beyond. Uh, we have many commonalities in migra on migration issues. It's important to uh, coordinate in, in terms of political uh, issues. And we look forward to building upon the last 75 years to further develop our relations in the coming 75 years, especially when it comes to uh, economics, uh, culture, tourism. And I think there's a lot that we can learn from each other. Then, thank you, sir. Thank you, Ambassador. Um, and lastly, um, you mentioned uh, economics, culture, uh, tourism. So you've actually begun to answer my uh, last question on uh, what areas would you recommend us to focus on? Uh, would you like to share with the committee any uh, particular emphasis uh, you would like our two countries uh, to give uh, in terms of focusing on these three areas? Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, ma'am, for the question. Uh, Mr. Chair, when it comes to migration issues, we are both uh, uh, countries of origin. For example, uh, Egypt has a lot of migrants when it comes to uh, uh, the Middle East and uh, GCC countries. And I think uh, it would be important to share experiences and our vision forward. Uh, for tourism, before the, before the pandemic, and of course, about a decade before that, Egypt had a uh, great number of tourists uh, building on its culture and history. And I think it's, uh, it would be uh, uh, important for us to see how they integrate those elements into their tourism programs. And to also uh, cooperate and see how their tourism infrastructure uh, contributes to uh, the tourist arrivals. Uh, but uh, uh, for culture, I think everyone knows the, the uh, long 7,000 years of Egyptian uh, history, uh, unparalleled in the region. Uh, and uh, anyone who visits Egypt gets a s small uh, taste of uh, Egyptian history. Uh, but uh, it would be uh, important for us to, to see how we can uh, also uh, infuse our Philippine history our Philippine culture and uh, Philippine uh, uh, food into our uh, tourist programs. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much, um, Ambassador. Um, I think under your watch, uh, Philipp Filipinos' interest in all things Egyptian will be further sharpened. Just as a last, uh, it's, it's really just a point of curiosity on my part, Ambassador, Mr. Chairman. Your diction is very precise. Uh, may, could could you share if you care um, uh, with the committee where where is it that you grew up and studied and have worked? You have a very uh, distinctive enunciation, Ambassador. Uh, my, uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, actually, my mother is from Egypt. My mo my, uh -huh. my my father was on scholarship uh, studying at the University of Cairo, uh, oh. where he had married my mother, and I was born there. Uh, mm. And uh, 
but I did study in different countries because my father uh, was a professor for a while before joining also the Foreign Service. Uh, he's uh, been assigned to Saudi Arabia, to Kuwait. Uh, and then I studied uh, for my uh, undergraduate degree in the United States. Uh, but um, if I may, uh, uh, that's part also of my introductory, that during my, uh, during my uh, career in the Foreign Service, I joined in 95 as a casual employee, and I passed the Foreign Service exam in 96. My first mm -hmm. assignments uh, were uh, in uh, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, uh, as a junior officer, and also Jakarta. Uh, later on, I was assigned as Consul General in uh, Jeddah. Then my first uh, post as Ambassador was in uh, uh, Saudi Arabia from nine, 2011 to 2016. Currently, I'm uh, the Consul General, uh, Mr. Chair, in uh, Sydney, Australia. Mm -hmm. uh, but perhaps uh, there is a mixture of different accents and dialects there, sir. <laughs> and my father from, is from Lanao del Sur, so medio matigas <laughs> in Africa. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Ambassador, also for sharing that beautiful uh, family love story uh, of your parents. And I'm hopeful that, uh, again, as under your watch, that um, the love story or the positive relationship between the Philippines and Egypt will be further enhanced. Salamat po, shukran. Salamat po, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, from oh, and congratulations, of course, Ambassador. Mabuhay po kayo. Yes, Senator Sabiri is recognized. Yeah, thank you very much, Chairman. I'd just like to congratulate Ambassador Tago for his new posting. I've had an opportunity to visit uh, Egypt uh, 2019, and I must commend the men and women of the Embassy of uh, Egypt. They're a very dedicated and hardworking uh, group of uh, uh, public servants. And I'd like to put that on record and let Ambassador Tago know that uh, you have a good group of uh, Filipinos. They're really trying to work hard to assist our OFWs, and of course, the mutual bilateral agreements between our two countries. I have to commend uh, your uh, previous ambassador who was headed, who headed the Egypt, um, Egypt uh, Embassy, uh, Ambassador Confiado. And, um, and I really uh, have to say that he did an awesome, they did an awesome job in uh, making sure that we had good bilateral relations between the two countries. So you have a big shoe to fill, uh, Ambassador. May I just ask if you are related? We have several uh, uh, members in Bukidnon or family in Bukidnon that's Tago. Uh, that, is that from Lano? Uh, they're from Lano del Sur. Are you related to these uh, individuals, uh, Ambassador? Mr. Chair, I'm not uh, related I don't know of any in Bukidnon, but uh, our family tra uh, family members travel to all different places. And with your permission, sir, may I come and discover if I do have roots in uh, or family in Bukidnon? Yes, our former provincial election officer was uh, uh, Mr. Tago, uh, election officer Tago. So, yeah, probably you have roots because uh, they're all they're also your brother Muslims, and they're from, uh, uh, I believe. Uh, Lano del Sur. So, yes, you probably, hope, hopefully they're your relatives. But uh, if not, then, then don't, don't worry about it. I'm here to just support your appointment and uh, the appointments of all the members of the DFA. I, again, no, thank you, everyone from the DFA, for the support and service that you give to our country, uh, especially, ambassador, especially to our DFA secretary, uh, Tito Teddy Boy. It's great to see you, sir. Once again, congratulations to the men and women of the DFA. Thank you, Senator Subiri. Senator Villar is recognized. Yes, my support to the nomination of Ms. Makahilig as ambassador to the Holy See and Mr. Tago as ambassador to Egypt. I find them very competent for the post. Thank you very much. Thank you. Senator Drilon is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to have a few questions on Mr. Tago. Ambassador, yes. Just uh, for the record, Mr. Ambassador, how many Filipino, Filipi or OFWs do we have in Egypt, if any? I'm sorry, did you, 
uh, did I not come in clear? Can I ask a question to Ambassador Tago? The question is, how many overseas Filipino workers do we have in Egypt? Mr. Chair, uh, in response, uh, we have 5,717 Filipinos in Egypt, according to the last report from our embassy in Cairo. Again, 1,000? 5, 5,717 Filipinos in uh, Egypt. And uh, are they part of the service industry or are they in the manufacturing industry? Uh, would you have you, would you give us an idea of uh, the, the profile of our our countrymen in Egypt? Mr. Chair, they are in uh, different sectors in medical, in uh, manufacturing, unskilled, and there are some uh, household service workers as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, would you be aware of the uh, if there are welfare cases of our uh, Filipino workers and migrants in uh, Egypt? Are you... Uh, are uh, you... Certainly, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, during the pandemic, there were uh, some positive cases. And there were also some who uh, requested repatriation, at least two batches, back in 2020. The last flight was in August 2020. Uh, just from hearing from my colleagues and also from from uh, from uh, our embassy in Egypt, over the years there are occasionally uh, welfare cases. Those who are whose documents are uh, undocumented during the time, and uh, they are eventually resolved and uh, they come home. Thank you, sir. Yes, uh, Mr. Ambassador. Uh, you will be the head of the mission in uh, Egypt. Uh, would you spread on the record your views on the proposed Department of Overseas Filipinos? Thank you, sir, uh, for that question. I think it's very timely. Uh, as former ambassador in Saudi Arabia and also uh, in HR, and uh, as a member of the Department of Foreign Affairs, I think all of us want a uh, efficient, streamlined process, a system where we are assured that we can provide the best service to, to Filipinos, whether we are here in the Philippines or when we are uh, overseas. And uh, we appreciate the one country, two team approach that's been stated in the draft bill. I think my major concern personally is that I wouldn't, uh, uh, or uh, our, our hope is that uh, the numbers of personnel and the items given to us would not be reduced over time because we, when I was in HR and in every post, we always try to, we always feel that we have, uh, we don't have sufficient personnel to, uh, to extend services, even the uh, regular services, core, core services as well, whether, uh, the, and the, those services would be uh, outside of the purview of the Department of uh, Overseas uh, Filipinos. So we support uh, any uh, initiative that would improve the system and uh, provide better services, but we also hope that we will retain uh, this, the uh, personnel that we have and the items that we have, uh, items of personnel that we have. But we, we look forward to any improvements in the system. Thank you. Yes. All right. Mr. Ambassador, uh, as part of the measure creating the Department of Overseas Filipino Workers is a proposal that the uh, attaches of the, uh, that will be appointed by the new department will be consuls. Uh, uh, would this be uh, consistent with the Geneva Convention? Sir, I'd prefer to read the latest. I've, I've scanned quickly over the, the latest version, uh, but I'd have to, to look at the that before providing yeah. more. Thanks. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, assuming, okay, you have not seen the draft. 
So uh, I'll ask the question on a theoretical basis. Assuming that there is a provision which gives the rank of consul to the uh, attaches of the Department of OFWs, uh, would that be consistent with the Geneva Convention? Yes, sir. I don't think Senator Dillon heard your uh, respond, response. Kindly repeat. Yes, sir. Uh, it is yeah, yes, sir. That, I don't see any issue with that, uh, with uh, or difficulty with that designation. Uh, you don't see any issue with that, and therefore they can be uh, uh, called consuls. Uh, is that what you're saying, sir? Um, the, the trunk of the uh, uh, labor attaches? Because as far as I know, as far as I know, no labor attaché has been called a consul or given the uh, rank uh, of a consul uh, in, 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 uh, in the embassies. Uh, and I, I uh, assumed or thought that this is because of the Geneva Convention, which governs the uh, diplomatic ranks of the people in an embassy. So you are saying, uh, Ambassador, that uh, uh, the, the uh, grant of the title consul uh, will not violate uh, our commitments under the pertinent uh, conventions? Just for the record, I have no, I do not know the answer. Uh, so let me, uh, if Mr. Chair, if you allow me just to cite certain examples. Uh, for example, there is vice consul trade, uh, a practice done in uh, in uh, in Australia. Uh, but this, of course, depends on the host countries and if they allow such designations. Uh, so in some countries, it's allowed to have consul or vice consul trade, labor. Uh, I think it depends, sir, on the host country. Okay, so it depends on the host country, and uh, the host country would have the prerogative of whether or not to recognize an attaché as a consul and the rank of a consul. Yes. In my opinion, yes, sir. But I, I, if you allow me, I would like to to further study this. Okay, you know, I, I'm not in a hurry, so if you can just... Uh, for, for my benefit, uh, since you are a career uh, DFA official, if you can assist uh, me in uh, uh, analyzing the proposed uh, Department of OFWs, because if I recall correctly, and I'm not even sure, the first draft that I saw uh, considered uh, the attaches of the Department of uh, OFWs uh, as consuls of the uh, of the uh, foreign post. I, as I said, I'm not. I'm not certain if it's still there, uh, but nevertheless, uh, also for my education and for future reference, if you can submit to the committee uh, your views on this point, uh, that would be appreciated, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Did you hear the yep. comment? Yes. Okay. Uh, on another point, Egypt is a leader in the Arab world plays a critical role in uh, uh, issues relating to the Arab world. On the other hand, we maintain very close and friendly relations with Israel. Uh, recently, there was a very serious conflict between uh, the Arab world and Israel arising from uh, certain incidents in the, the Gaza Strip. Now, uh, also, there was a resolution uh, in the uh, in the UN Assembly uh, where we, which we voted for, and which uh, uh, came to the attention of uh, of Israel uh, in, in to the point that, according to media reports, our ambassador in Israel was summoned. Uh, by the uh, Israeli Foreign Ministry. 
Uh, may I know the position of the ambassador in case a such uh, incident would happen again uh, uh, while he is uh, the uh, chief of mission? How, what would be the policy of the government and the, particularly the Department of Foreign Affairs in issues concerning the conflict between um, Israel and the Arab world, which uh, I would like to think would be a recurring issue uh, until a permanent solution can be crafted and agreed upon. May I know uh, the, 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 the views of the good uh, ambassador uh, on, on this, uh, on this uh, potential conflict, given the fact that he will be posted in a uh, country which is considered as a leader of the Arab world, Mr. Ambassador? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, if I may uh, give a bit of uh, opinion. In my personal view, Egypt uh, uh, is one of the um, most important countries in the Middle East because it had entered into a peace agreement with uh, Israel back in 1977, uh, 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 the Camp David Peace Agreement. And uh, throughout uh, the past few decades, if there is a conflict always, uh, between uh, Israel and uh, other countries or even uh, actors in the region. Uh, Egypt is at the forefront of trying to reach a peaceful uh, uh, ceasefire. And uh, as we have seen recently in, uh, in the 11 days of, uh, of hostilities between Israel and, Hezbollah and, uh, and Hamas, uh, Egypt had an important role uh, together with the, the U.S. Uh, so Egypt uh, also is uh, a way for humanitarian aid to enter into uh, Gaza and uh, Palestinians uh, in, uh, through the Rafah border in Sinai. And Egypt also is very important because it is an exit for Filipinos who may uh, need or uh, wish to be repatriated from Palestine uh, to the Philippines or to, say, to, say, to seek self-haven. Uh, temporarily while the hostilities are happening. Uh, Philippines, uh, the, the Philippines always has supported for a, uh, a permanent uh, peaceful solution in, uh, uh, in the region through uh, the creation, through the establishment of a two-state two two solution. And um, I think it's uh, the role of the Philippines to support uh, that uh, that uh, goal of reaching uh, a two-state solution, and in the meantime, to uh, supporting any actions or uh, 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 positions that would uh, uh, create an environment uh, beneficial for peace. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador, uh, for those remarks. Um, and. Uh, we have no more questions, Mr. Chairman, and I, I we're ready to, uh, to endorse the, uh, in, the appointment of uh, the good Ambassador Tag as uh, Ambassador Extra, uh, as Ambassador to the Embassy in Egypt. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Dillon. The Chair acknowledges the presence of uh, Representative Josephine Nene Ramirez Sato. Welcome, ma'am. From the Chair, um, this is about citizenship, ano? Egypt is what? You sanguinis or you solid jurisdiction? For the longest, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. For the longest time, it would be uh, the uh, 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 just sanguinis. They follow the father, actually, not even uh, the mother. Until about five years ago, uh, they've allowed uh, for those who are uh, children of Egyptian women to also gain uh, citizenship. It's a mixture of blood and soil. Uh, is that confined or limited to uh, blood? As you said, your sanguinis, no? But it's primarily your sanguinis. Yes, sir. But you may also adopt Egyptian, Egyptian citizenship based on place of birth. Never. Never? Yes, sir. So you have not adopted Egyptian citizenship? Never. Don't worry, because we time dual, dual citizenship. Never, so sir, actually. You're not violating anything if you... Never actually, sorry, and I've never uh, applied for uh, uh, 
permanent or uh, temporary residence in Egypt. I also don't own any any uh, properties in Egypt. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, kindly educate us. You know, tell us tell us something about Djibouti. Uh, do we have Filipino Filipinos there in that country? Kindly tell us something about that country. It's in, uh, of course, East Africa. But uh, aside from that, we don't know anything. At least the chair doesn't know anything about uh, Djibouti. Thank you, sir. Uh, actually, my... I, I had to look up the pronunciation. It's not Djibouti, but Djibouti. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. It, uh, actually, my jurisdiction includes not only uh, the uh, Arab Republic of Egypt, but also uh, the Republic of the Sudan, the Republic of Djibouti, the state of Eritrea, and the Federal Republic of Ethiopia. Um, Djibouti uh, used to be uh, uh, a colony of France. Uh, they speak Arabic and uh, French. Uh, they uh, uh, gained independence in 1977, uh, but then uh, there were some uh, issues and uh, uh, we only uh, uh, established relations in 1998. Uh, it, uh, its economy is basically uh, uh, it's a port on the Red Sea uh, and uh, in the Horn of Africa. And uh, they, uh, its economy is basically uh, based on, uh, as an export, uh, re-export re uh, uh, economy. Um, and um, there are only about 389 Filipinos in, in Djibouti, population of less than 1 million. They have a both uh, a US and a Chinese uh, base in there. And, uh, GDP per capita is 3,600 uh, per annum. They are a member of the Organization of Islamic uh, Cooperation and also a member of the League of Arab States because they speak Arabic. And they also have the saltiest water. I've not tried, uh, <laughs> sir. <laughs> but I've seen only once. Only once. So is that the correct pronunciation? Because not eating the I think it's pronounced uh, Djibouti. So it's Djibouti. Yes. Sir. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay, Ambassador Teddy Boy. Is it a coincidence that Ambassador Bagat Singh is uh, posted in India and Ambassador Tago is going to Egypt? Yeah, are you asking me? Yes, um, sir. Um, well, um, I, I thought, that, no, of course, that's not a policy, but I, I, I have worked with. Um, with both, I, I know uh, Ambassador Bhagat Singh uh, personally, and um, he he ended up there. I, I don't think they asked me about it. But um, in the case of of um, Esedin Tago, I have been pushing for his uh, appointment to to be ambassador um, because I've worked with him. In fact, he um, he was, in a manner of speaking, my boss when I was in the UN. And I have found him very efficient, very fair. And for someone coming from the outside, I needed his guidance. Um, yes, I also sir, I know. Think you you, you uh, got my question. My question is, it is, it is is it a coincidence that Ambassador Bhagat Singh is in India and ah. Ambassador Tago is uh, reporting to uh, his post in Egypt? Uh, in the case of Ambassador Bhagat Singh, it must be a coincidence because I had, um, well, there, I, I don't think I was there yet. Uh, in SFA, as SFA when he was appointed, but in the case of uh, Esedin, it was, I pushed for it. Um, I wanted it because I knew that uh, his talents, while essential in Sydney, for example, where he was posted, in which was his desire, I knew that his talents required him to have no less than an ambassadorial post. And Egypt, the Arab states, especially Egypt, which is the most influential politically, would require someone with a special insight into the mindset of those uh, of that country. Um, it's, Thank you. Uh, it's, it's I, I was about to comment, Sana, that you that I admire your managerial skill. You know how to put a round peg in a round hole, but you know, Thank Ambassador Bagat Singh to India, Ambassador Tago to Egypt. So you lang ang gusto ng uh, Kaya itinatanong ko, it, it was a coincidence, no? Yung, uh, 
No, China is not a Chinese. Eh. <laughs> si <laughs> Santa Romana nandun. But uh, uh, if I may, if I may comment, uh, Chito Santa Romana, who I knew uh, from 1967 in China when I went there, um, I can tell you um, um, he is the perfect fit. Also, uh, he's lived in China through its worst times, and he's lived in China through its turnaround. Um, no, wait, I was ahead of him in China uh, in '67 during the Cultural Revolution. Um, good choice. Very good choice and very respected Thank you, too. Thank you, sir. Any you. other member? Yes, Senator Ray Santiveros is again recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, lastly, I would like to ask uh, a couple of questions to Career Minister Rodrigo Atienza, Mr. Chairman. Your excuse, Ambassador. Um, good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning, members of the committee. Good morning, Career Minister Atienza. Oh, I'm sorry. Before I ask my questions to Career Minister Atienza, uh, Mr. Chair, just as a last uh, point to uh, Ambassador Tago, uh, I remember uh, attending a meeting several years ago in France, and the the taxi driver who brought me to the venue was an Egyptian, although based now in France. And from him, I learned because the Ambassador Tago mentioned uh, economics as one of the areas he would recommend us to focus on in our diplomatic relations with Egypt. This young uh, Egyptian French man said, told me something I had never known. He said that sugar and uh, our majority leader uh, Sen Migs might be interested in this. Sugar is such a central part of the Egyptian economy. I mean, all the way back to the story of uh, uh, Joseph, Prince of Egypt, I don't know what his Egyptian name was, but, um, uh, or Moses rather, and then before that, Exodus. So maybe that is also an area that uh, with the partnership of Ambassador Tago and the Senate through Majority Leader Migs could be explored also between uh, our two countries, the matter of the sweet matter of sugar. In any case, po, uh, Career Minister Atienza, it says here in your profile that you were credited in your current post for playing a vital role in the execution of inter-office meetings for the Philippine team to the ASEAN-China Joint Working Group on the implementation of the declaration on a code of on oh, sorry on the conduct of parties in the south china sea so chief minister uh, i'm sorry career minister atienza based on these meetings could you say that china has been remiss in keeping her word in terms of dealing with our country because at this point, it's known to everyone that China's presence in our territorial waters for the past several months continues to pose a threat to our, to our national security, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Honorable Senator. Um, Mr. Chair, uh, before uh, answering the Honorable Senator's uh, question, I'd like to uh, say that I'm uh, greatly elated to uh, not only sit here before the committee, but also to address the committee as it's my first time until now. Uh, I've only been um, sitting in the um, uh, in the back, and uh, so it's my first time to address the committee. Um, in answer to uh, um, the good senator, um, I was present in the um, meetings, and of course, it's a huge team, um, um, and I was able to attend, had the privilege of sitting in the um, one of the working groups. And, uh, and that's the working group on maritime, uh, marine environmental protection and marine scientific research, as well as the uh, afternoon's plenary that involved, of course, um, uh, general, uh, the results from the uh, two other working groups, uh, political security and the fisheries. And I think, I believe uh, the conduct of the uh, working group I was in also reflected the uh, conduct of the uh, working, two other working groups where I was not present. That is uh, the Philippines uh, in um, meeting with uh, our Chinese counterparts for the sixth uh, bilateral uh, um, consultation mechanism. Um, 
the last having been, of course, in October, uh, in October uh, 2019, where I was also present in Beijing, um, we took this opportunity to, of course, uh, detail, um, a very detailed, give a very detailed list of what we felt were concerns from the Philippine side and that we felt uh, China um, should respond to. So in, in that respect, um, and perhaps also um, as, um, um, as I can see and of course read uh, pretty much on a regular basis in the news, uh, the hearings uh, that take place in this August chamber, um, the executive of course has, and the DFA in particular in um, our dealings with China, have not been remiss in pointing out to them where they have um, not exactly met our expectations. For example, in environmental uh, field, um, very easily uh, one can um, come up with, um, recall, for example, the illegal, illegal uh, harvests of giant clams, yes. the destruction of our coral reefs. So all of these actually were um, detailed um, point by point in each of the working groups. And there was also an opportunity by our undersecretary uh, Elizabeth Prince says so to follow up on some of these points during the plenary itself. However, of course, um, as is China's want, they um, denied that they were uh, in um, violation of any of uh, of, uh, of UNCLOS, for example, or any of they they, they always uh, stated that they were always in compliance. And thus, um, there was even a point where they uh, sought to um, uh, minimize the record uh, of our uh, mention ever mentioning those concerns to them. But yes, um, um, Honorable Senator, I, I agree with you that there are quite a number of points where, uh, of course, China um, is remiss in um, being a good partner, bilateral partner to the Philippines. Thank you, Career Minister Atienza. Um, you do not disappoint in your first uh, appearance before this committee. And I look forward uh, to Career Minister Atienza uh, continuing to um, compel China to be more of an honest broker uh, at the dialogue or negotiation um, table. Because I, I do believe that wielding all um, the political and diplomatic instruments that are at the disposal of our country uh, effectively and to greatest effect for our national interest must always begin with uh, an honest assessment of who it is we are talking with across the table and communicating clearly to her that we know what she is uh, at her best moments and also at her worst moments. And I'm confident in the continuing efforts of the Good Career Minister together with, um, uh, be because of uh, uh, the consistent actions, for example, of Yusef Wen Suceso calling the Chinese ambassador to the Philippines and expressing these concerns officially and formally, and most of all, the unceasing efforts of the good secretary himself uh, filing diplomatic protest upon diplomatic protest, um, leading the country in uh, expressing uh, the sense of the foreign affairs uh, department uh, on this matter to China. Maybe at, towards the end, Mr. Chair, I could also ask uh, the same question to Chief of Mission Elizabeth Te. But a last question first, Please to Career Minister Atienza. Sir, could you share with us the status of the draft operational guidelines on the enforcement of fisheries and marine conservation in the West Philippine Sea? Um, and will these guidelines be signed and implemented anytime soon, Mr. Chairman? Thank you very much, um, um, Mr. Chair. Um, in response, uh, I'd like to say that at this point, I believe that the work uh, in drafting these operational guidelines uh, for uh, mar marine law, maritime law enforcement and fisheries is already at, we have presented it uh, to the National Task Force on West Philippine Sea, and I believe um, through the leadership of uh, Deputy Executive Secretary uh, Bernardo, um, after presenting that, uh, it should be at the point of approval, I am not quite um, uh, knowledgeable on the steps that have to be taken on the way forward, but however, the different branches of the executive, uh, including the Department of Foreign Affairs, DOJ, uh, Philippine uh, Coast Guard, uh, BFAR, all work together. I think from last year, uh, I only sat uh, in, in the meetings uh, this year, but uh, looking at the record, 
they have been um, uh, working at this uh, uh, to craft uh, the most responsive and update the uh, uh, the guidelines so that uh, the different, uh, especially operational uh, agencies that are in the field would not have um, um, contradictions or, for example, uh, uh, procedures that uh, do not um, um, draw out the best results uh, for for our people in the field because they cannot um, actually be um, to have it, they cannot entertain or have any doubts, especially in moments of um, um, urgency or emergency uh, in dealing um, with um, incidents at sea. So I believe uh, the uh, the current um, draft as uh, has been presented um, through the cooperation of all the uh, concerned agencies present a, a very good and realistic uh, set of guidelines that would, uh, in effect, um, be something that uh, would be beneficial to our law enforcement officials and um, fisheries officials. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Career Minister Atienza. I'm more and more confident that the department and the National Task Force on the West Philippine Sea uh, make a strong partnership and together with the Coast Guard, the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources, plus of course the Philippine Navy and our own um, fisher folk uh, in addressing um, or in um, pushing uh, for the eventual implementation and the soonest, uh, it's to be hoped, soonest signing uh, of these guidelines. With uh, Mr. Chair, I really like uh, the combination of attributes that career minister uh, Atienza mentioned uh, doing this with a combination of both conviction and urgency so marami salamat po um career minister Atienza advanced congratulations at mabuhay po kayo salamat po Mr. Chair thank you Senator uh, Ontiveros Senator Bosch thank you Mr. Chair Mr. Chair, I don't have any questions to any of our appointees. I, uh, I would just uh, like to spread into the record and convey my uh, full support uh, of the uh, Foreign Service Officers, Career Ministers, and Chiefs of, of, of Missions of the Department of Foreign Affairs who are with us this morning, led by Ambassador Maria Teresita Cruz Daza, who uh, started her career as a researcher and now a well-respected diplomat in the foreign service community known for her professionalism and integrity. Uh, I would also like to commend our senior officers, Consul General Ezedin Tago, who is nominated as ambassador to the Arab uh, Republic of Egypt, who received multiple citations for his work assisting our OFWs, particularly in the repatriation of uh, Filipinos in Lebanon in 2006, and his efforts that saved the lives of two Filipinos, uh, two Filipino hostages from the Iraqi rebels in 2005. Assistant Secretary Myla Grace uh, Makahilig, who is nominated as Ambassador to the Holy See. Consul General Josephine Reynante from the Philippine Embassy in Switzerland. Uh, Lilibet Pono, currently Deputy Chief of Mission in Philippine Embassy in Germany. Elizabeth Tante, our Deputy Permanent Representative uh, permanent mission of the Philippines to ASEAN in Indonesia. Consul General uh, Adrian uh, Bernie Candolada in Philippine Embassy in Singapore. Executive Director Charmaine Rowena Abiquivil of, uh, of the Office of, the, of Policy Planning and Coordination. They have uh, all demonstrated their excellence in their respective assignments. And I take note of your hard work and diligent efforts in uh, helping our distressed kababayans abroad. Napakahalaga po 
para sa atin na bukod, na, uh, na bukod sa naisusulong at uh, napoprotektahan natin ang ating pambansang interes sa international community na paglilikuran natin ng maayos ang ating mga kapwa na nangangailangan ng tulong. As we uh, very well know, the protection of the rights and promotion of the welfare and interests of Filipinos overseas is one of the three pillars of the Philippine foreign policy. Lastly, I hope that your good examples be continued and even surpassed by the very promising accomplished young diplomats we also have today. Continue, continue uh, employing your gifts in assist, assisting our fellow Filipinos abroad, especially in this very difficult time, and give them the respect, excellent service, and treatment that uh, they truly deserve. Congratulations at mabuhay po kayong lahat. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Ervilla. No more? Yes, Senator Ontiveros is once again recognized. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, isa na lamang po, um, a single question to Chief of Mission Elizabeth Te, Mr. Chairman. And while um, Chief of Mission Te is coming forward, uh, may I just add that uh, about uh, Career Minister Atienza, I was surprised to be told that uh, he is in his 50s <laughs> earlier when he addressed the committee. I thought he was much younger. Uh, it's it's uh, uh, he reminded me of someone in the youth and student movement. <laughs> he still has that um, earnestness or zeal of youth. Uh, no wonder he can uh, talk about a sense of urgency, but at the same time, a uh, sense of conviction uh, from someone who uh, is more seasoned in the diplomatic service. So just uh, just that uh, observation, uh, which which continues to give me confidence, Mr. Chairman, that. Uh, on these issues vis-a-vis -vis China or any other nation, we may, when necessary, wage, as it were, quote-unquote, war, but through diplomatic means. So, Mr. Chair, may I uh, ask my sole question to Chief of Mission Te? Please go ahead. As she is present online. Ah, all right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chief of Mission... Elizabeth Te, ma'am, may I ask you the same uh, first question that I had asked uh, uh, Career Minister Atienza earlier. Based on um, those meetings uh, of the Philippine team to the ASEAN-China Joint Working Group on the implementation of the Declaration on the Code of Parties in the South China Sea, could you say that China has been remiss in keeping her word in terms of dealing with our country? Uh, because at this point, it's known to everyone that her presence in our territorial waters for the past months continues to pose a threat to our national security, Mr. Chairman. Kindly respond, uh, Chief Ambition. Uh, te. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, good morning, um, um, Honorable Senator. Um, um, yes. Uh, Good morning, and um, yes, um, in the Philippine mission to ASEAN, we continue to, um, uh, as country coordinator of the ASEAN-China dialogue relations, we continue to uh, impress upon China that, uh, yes, um, <clears throat> China has been, has not exactly been uh, abiding by its um, responsibilities because China is a state party to the United Nations Code, uh, United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, and China has not been, uh, um, exactly implementing its um, obligations under the <clears throat> obligations under the convention. In fact, last year we have just completed with China um, a plan of action, a new plan of action between ASEAN and China. <clears throat> and uh, when I arrived last year, um, the most contentious paragraphs of the plan of action were those pertaining to the those pertaining to the code of conduct as well as the law of the sea. Mm. But we managed to finalize the plan of action. Uh, in time for the ASEAN-China summit last last uh, November. So uh, yes, in response to your question, Madam Senator, uh, yes, uh, China has been remiss. And in fact, in our in my meetings with the Chinese mission here in ASEAN, we've also emphasized that um, that <clears throat> uh, we have also emphasized that uh, it is important to to uh, it is important that the situation on the ground be taken be um, that the situation on the ground in the South China Sea be taken into consideration. 
As everyone knows, China's, uh, China wanted an elevation of its dialogue partnership into a comprehensive strategic partnership right now. So um, this is under this is under this is under discussion between the ASEAN member states and uh, China. And uh, I have emphasized this um, very uh, I have emphasized this point to my Chi my Chinese counterparts that uh, it is uh, it is important to uh, consider the situation on the ground. But the Philippines has expressed support to to this confirmation of the di uh, of the dialogue partnership into a co comprehensive strategic partnership, owing to the reason that um, China has in fact um, China has in fact um, um, been very active in all ASEAN-led mechanisms. China has in fact been um, playing its part. It has uh, active cooperation between ASEAN and China. Uh, it has played its role, uh, for example, in the COVID-19 pandemic. In pandemic response, China has uh, actively supported all the ASEAN member states in terms of uh, vaccines and all the other support. And uh, we have also emphasized bilaterally that uh, the South China Sea, of course, is uh, one aspect of our relationship, and it's not the totality, it's not the entirety of our relationship with China. So we have, in the same way in ASEAN, uh, the South China Sea is an important aspect of our relationship, but there are also other aspects of our relationship. So we have economic, we have social cultural. So the, the broad spectrum of our relationship with China uh, merits, uh, merits uh, recognition of a comprehensive strategic partnership with China. But for the Philippines, it's not an elevation. It's just a mere recognition of uh, the status because China has, in fact, been very active in, the, in, the, um, in all aspects of our ASEAN-led mechanisms. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Chief of Mission uh, Te. I also note, ma'am, that uh, you are based in one of the countries that even um, longer than us has learned how to uh, constructively and effectively, while peacefully, constructively and effectively uh, engage China. Uh, we've seen the fantastic videos, for example, uh, on YouTube of the Indonesian Coast Guard uh, confronting uh, the Chinese Coast Guard uh, in various parts of, well, I suppose in Indonesia's territory in, in the whole South China uh, Sea. So, um, and together with Vietnam and Brunei, I believe these are other uh, countries in our region or even in ASEAN whom we can continue to learn from and work with in coming up with our own, both multilateral within ASEAN and bilateral peaceful, constructive, and effective ways to uh, to engage China. Um, thank you for uh, updating the committee uh, about the comprehensive strategic partnership. Uh, I hope that in all aspects of this partnership, not just the vaccines and the other uh, important aspects, but also the West Philippine Sea or the whole South China Sea, that ASEAN will indeed be an effective platform for us uh, to uh, resolve that uh, China question well uh, uh, at this time. Thank you. Marami salamat po, ma'am. Uh, advance congratulations at mabuhay po kayo. Salamat po, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Risa. Majority Leader. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, there being no other uh, members who wish to ask questions, I now move to recommend to the plenary for the Commission to give, give its consent to the nomination of Ambassador Myla Grace Rahenya Catalbas Makahilig as Chief of Mission Class 2 as Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary to the Holy See with concurrent jurisdiction over the sovereign order of Malta and as well as for the Commission to give its consent to the nomination of Ambassador Ezidine Hamdin Tago as Chief of Mission Class 2 as Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary to the Arab Republic of Egypt with concurrent jurisdiction over the Republic of Djibouti, the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia the state of Eritrea and the Republic of the Sudan. Uh, I so move, Mr. Chairman. Is there any objection? 
The chair hears none. The motion is approved. Congratulations. See you uh, in the plenary. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Majority Leader. May I now also move that the committee recommends to the plenary for the commission to confirm the ad interim appointments of the remaining 13 appointees in the Department of Foreign Affairs. Uh, I so move, Mr. Chair. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Before, yes, before the committee adjourns this meeting, the chair would like the body to also consider the ad interim appointment of Ms. Anna Marie Cano Santos, Foreign Service Officer 1. Secretary Villacorta kindly report on the status of the jurisdictional requirements and other relevant information relative to the ad interim appointment of Ms. Santos. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Anna Marie Cano Santos has submitted her documentary requirements pursuant to Section 24, Chapter 6 of the New Rules of the Commission on May 24, 2021. Her ad interim appointment was referred by the Commission Chairperson, Senate President Vicente Ciso to the third to the Committee on Foreign Affairs pursuant to Section 16, Chapter 5 of the New Rules of the Commission on April 12, 2021. Likewise, her ad interim appointment was published in two newspapers of general circulation and broadcast over PTB4 pursuant to Section 2, Article 2 of the New Rules of the Standing Committees on April 14, 2021. Upon evaluation of her submitted documentary requirements, it appeared that her ombudsman clearance already expired last April 2021. She committed to submit the said documentary deficiency immediately, but was only received by your secretariat yesterday, June 1. The subject appointee was not included in the agenda for today's meeting. Your secretariat, however, received a letter dated June 1 from DFA HRMO signed by OIC Mersoli J. Melihor, requesting for the waiver of appearance of Ms. Santos should she be included in today's committee deliberation. In view of her situation as the only child personally attending to a 74-year-old father having stage 5 chronic kidney disease and a 71-year-old mother who just underwent emergency colostomy. The subject appointee is joining these proceedings today online. That is all, Mr. Chairman, Your Honors. Thank you, Secretary Villaporta. Majority Leader. Mr. Chairman, I move that the letter dated June 1, 2021, signed by OIC Melihor, requesting for waiver of personal appearance of Ms. Ana Marie Cano Santos for reasons stated therein and as reported by the CA Secretary be approved. I so move, Mr. Chair. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Wala, wala naman siya rito eh. Question. Ah, are you present online, Ms. Santos? Yes, okay. Mr. Chair, I am present online. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Can you administer the oath to the uh, appointee? Please stand up and raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in this proceeding? So help you, God. Yes, sir. I do. Thank, thank you. you, Mr. Chairman. She is yeah. now under oath. Is there any member who wish? Wishes to uh, propound questions to Ms. Santos? None. Anyway, yes, we can only express. Yes, Senator Ray Santiveros. Thank you, um, Mr. Chair. Um, 
Ma'am uh, uh, Director Santos, uh, as I think the our good chair was uh, about to express, I, I really hope that your parents, ma'am, will be well soon. And uh, well, uh, as a as a fellow woman who's also taking care of my senior citizen mom, I can only uh, empathize with you. Po. However, Mr. Chair, I, I, I wish I could, but I cannot ask any questions because um, I don't have a copy yet of the committee's information about uh, Acting Director Santos. Uh, I wish, I really wish I could ask questions in order to um, um, flesh out my support for her confirmation. However, Mr. Chair, uh, I don't have any information about her, unfortunately. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Director Santos. Thank you, Madam Teresa. You you read my mind. So, Majority Leader. Well, uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend to the plenary for the commission to confirm the ad interim appointment of Ms. Ana Marie Cano Santos as Foreign Service uh, Foreign Service Officer One. So move. Is there any objection, Mr. Chair? Yes, Senator Antiveros. Uh, not an objection, Mr. Chair, just um, a manifestation for the record, uh, a request to the committee that um, though we will give way to, of course, um, communications from the respective department requesting waiver of personal appearance for very good reason, um, that we at least be furnished some information in writing uh, of the uh, official to be confirmed so that we can fully appreciate and also fully express our support for this confirmation. Um, just just that, Mr. Chairman, I, I don't know how uh, better to express uh, how strongly I feel about this because, of course, we in the Senate or the whole Congress, we want to give, uh, to express our full support to our counterparts in the executive when we are confirming them. And in order to do that, uh, we need some information about them in writing, not just in fairness to us, Mr. Chairman, but in fairness also uh, to our good officials. Uh, so for the record, Mr. Chairman, salamat po. Thank you. That's duly noted. For the information of everybody, the information was furnished online sa mga miembro. So uh, at any rate, we only decided the late or early evening yesterday because of the uh, condition you know, of the parent of the appointee. That's why medyo biglaan yung decision natin. You know? We just, you know. at the same time, we will adjourn CDDA tomorrow. So, uh, nag-extend lang tayo ng konting consideration kay Ms. Santos. But uh, at any rate, the information was furnished online to the members. Majority Leader. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman, uh, with your permission, I was also about to uh, suggest to prepare the Andrea Committee that uh, our uh, nominees bring with them a, a photo of the areas where they will be assigned. Uh, like you, Mr. Chairman, I was uh, curious where, uh, how Djibouti looks like. No? Of course, we can always Google that, pero iba na yung galing sa nominee mismo. Just to show us a simple photo of uh, the areas that they will be posted at. Uh, okay, Mr. Chairman, there being no other matters to discuss, I move to adjourn this meeting. Not yet. How about the motion oh. to recommend her to the plenary majority leader? Ako ba? I, I don't think I heard you uh i have your motion to recommend her to for consideration uh by the plenary um okay mr chairman i i will restate it because i said it earlier but i'll restate it i move to recommend to the plenary for the commission to confirm the ad interim appointment of miss anna maricano santos as foreign service one is there any objection yeah, hearing none, the motion is approved. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, there being no further matters to discuss, I move to adjourn the meeting.
There's a motion to adjourn this meeting. Any objection? Hearing none, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you all and congratulations. Good morning, everyone. Uh, the 15th meeting of the Commission on National Defense of the Commission on Appointments, the second regular session of the 18th Congress, is hereby. Della Rosa, go. Present, present. Luxon, Pimentel the third. 
Cagas. Cagas. Chepeco Jr. Present. Ponteveros. Noel. Present. Noel. O. Ramirez Sato. Recto. Present. Revilla Jr. Present. Villar. Subiri. Zamora. Almario. Present. Villa. Villanueva. Pancho. Trilón. Present. Advincula. Present. Heron. Present. Uh, Mr. President, graceful present. And uh, Mick Zubiri present as well. Duly noted. Mr. President, uh, Mr. Chairman, Risa Ontiveros, as my attendance noted. Duly noted. Senator Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Salamat po. And Senator Zubiri, duly noted. So with two members present in person, including the chair, and 17 members present online, the total of 19 members present, the existence of a quorum is hereby declared. Mr. Chairman, Leader. Mr. Chairman, I move that we dispense with the reading of the minutes of the previous meeting held on May 26, uh, 2021, and consider the same as approved. Is there an objection? Chair hears none. The reading of the minutes of the previous meeting held on May 26, 2021 is dispensed with, and the same is considered approved. Good morning, esteemed members of the Committee on National Defense of the Commission of Appointments, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Today, your committee is tasked to deliberate on the 25 ad interim appointments and three nominations of senior officers in the Armed Forces of the Philippines and to continue the deliberation or the ad interim appointment of Brigadier General Lowell Tan. Gentlemen, uh, ladies and gentlemen, kindly stand up as your name is called. Alvin G. Iog, the rank of Colonel, Philippine Army. Joe Anthony C. Obre, with the rank of Commodore. Mario Lito I. Retirva, with the rank of Colonel, Philippine Army. Pablito F. Melchor, to the rank of Captain, Service, Reserve. Jerry Boy P. Paminyal, to the rank of Colonel, Philippine Army. Ariel C. Halasan, to the rank of Captain, Philippine Navy. Dean B. Ramos, to the rank of Colonel, Philippine Army Reserve. Estado Carlos D. Pambid, to the rank of Colonel, Philippine Army. Constancio M. Espina II, to the rank of Colonel, Philippine Army. Silas D. Transmontero, to the rank of Colonel, Philippine Army. Gracioso D. Merioles, to the rank of Colonel, Philippine Army. Anne Marie P. Herodias, to the rank of Colonel, Philippine Air Force. Roselle B. Salvoza, to the rank of Colonel, Philippine Air Force. Ian Noel P. Ignes, to the rank of Colonel, Philippine Army. Suryo P. Makarandan Jr., the rank of Colonel, Philippine Army. Roderick L. 
Paralyag, sa Drag of Colonel, Philippine Army. Rimrad D. Ferrer, sa Drag of Colonel, Philippine Army. Eros James M. Uri, sa Drag of Colonel, Philippine Army. Manuel V. Sekitin, sa Drag of Major General. Vladimir Lenos T. Villanueva, sa Drag of Colonel, Philippine Army. Jesus C. Pagala, sa Drag of Colonel, Philippine Army. Tomas Dominic B. Baluga, sa Drag of Colonel, Philippine Army. Gremel B. Brual, sa Drag of Colonel, Philippine Army. Greg T. Almerol, sa Drag of Lieutenant General. Jonathan A. Salvilla, sa Drag of Captain, Philippine Navy. Alan E. Romero, the rank of Colonel, Medical Corps Reserve. Stephen P. Parreño, the rank of Major General. Frederick A. Ancheta, the rank of Colonel, Philippine Army. Lowell R. Tan, the rank of Brigadier General. Mr. Secretary, can you report on the jurisdictional requirements and other pertinent information? relative to the ad interim appointments and nominations of the 28 senior officers in the, in the Armed Forces of the Philippines in compliance with the new rules of the Commission and the new rules of the Standing Committees and also the parliamentary status on the ad interim appointment of Brigadier General Tan. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, Your Honours. The 25 ad interim appointments and three nominations dated December 17, 2020, January 1 and 17, May 3 and 21, 2021, under consideration today by the committee, were received by the Commission on January 7, February 11 and 17, March 1, May 4 and 24, 2021, and were referred on the same dates by the Senate President and CA Chairperson Vicente C. Soto III to the Committee on National Defense pursuant to Section 16, Chapter 5 of the New Rules of the Commission. The set of interim appointments and nominations were published on various dates in two newspapers of general circulation and broadcast over PT before pursuant to Section 2, Article 2 of the New Rules of the Standing Committees. All appointees and nominees complied with the submission of the documentary requirements as provided in Section 24, Chapter 6 of the New Rules of the Commission. There was no opposition filed against any of the ad interim appointments and nominations. Mr. Chair, Your Honors, last May 19, 2021, the Committee on National Defense commenced deliberations on the ad interim appointment of Brigadier General Lowell R. Tan, together with the opposition filed by Representative Lucy T. Gomez. But due to lack of material time, the deliberation on his appointment was suspended and rescheduled last May 26, 2021. The assumption of the committee's deliberation was suspended anew to give time for the members to review and study the documents submitted by the Armed Forces of the Philippines pertaining to, as well as the opposition filed on his appointment. That is all, Mr. Chairperson, Your Honors. Thank you very much, Mr. Secretary. General Lowell Tan, you are under the same oath. And please administer the oath to the new uh, to the 28 senior officers under consideration today. Kindly all stand up and raise your right hands. They all swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in this proceeding, so help you God. Mr. Chairman, they are now all under oath. The committee will not deliberate on the 28 at the appointments and nominations. May we call on Major General Greg Almerol, nominated to the rank of Lieutenant General, the most senior among the officers 
now under consideration. Good morning, sir. Uh, you may now give your opening statement if you have any. Mr. Chair, your honors, I am Major General Greg Talio Almiral. I am currently the commander of Eastern Mindanao Command based in Davao City, covering the area of whole of Eastern Mindanao. I have with me 28 other senior officers who are here to appear before this August body as mandated by the Constitution, Your Honor. Thank you, General. Uh, the floor is now open uh, for members if you have any questions or manifestations. Senator Bongo, you are recognized. Mr. Chairman, I would like to uh, express my uh, sincere and uh, utmost gratitude uh, to the 25 uh, senior military officers of the Armed Forces of the Philippines whose uh, ad interim appointments will be confirmed and three uh, nominations given consent to before us this morning for their outstanding uh, contributions and unwavering uh, service to the Filipino nation. Maraming salamat po sa inyo. Let me make of record my full support for the nomination of uh, Lieutenant General uh, Greg Almirol. Uh, matagal na po itong, matagal ko na kilala. He's also from Davao, dating Assistant Chief of Staff for Personnel. G310 uh, Infantry Division, Camp General Manuel Yan, Mawab, Davao de Oro, at kasalukuyang commander ng Eastern Mindanao uh, Command uh, sa Panakan, uh, Davao City. Isa siyang matapang at uh, masipag na sandalo at uh, kinakagalak kong uh, irekomenda sa plenaryo ang kanyang well, um, Major General Manuel uh, Sikitin dating brigade commander ng 701st uh, infantry brigade sa Mati Davao Oriental at ngayong commander ng civil relations uh, service sa Camp Aguinaldo as well as the nomination of Major General Stephen uh, Pareño further I would like to express my support for the ad interim appointments of Colonel Silas Tras Montero dating assistant chief of uh, unified command staff for operations U3 ng Eastern Mindanao Command sa Panakan Davao at kasalukuyang assistant chief of of staff for operations G3 ng 10th Infantry Division. Uh, also, uh, Colonel uh, Gras Grasioso uh, Merioles, Battalion Commander, 2nd Field Artillery Battalion, Army Artillery Regiment, Mawa, Davao. Colonel uh, Jerry Faminyal, dating Chief Management of Fiscal Office, Eastern Mindanao Command, Davao City. At ngayon, Chief ng Logistics Division, Intelligence Service, uh, Camp Paginaldo. Commodore uh, Joe Orbe, Colonel Mario Riterva, Colonel Pablito Melchor, Navy Captain Ariel Halasan, Colonel uh, Dean Ramos, Colonel Josdado Pambid, Colonel Constancio Espina II, Colonel Anne Marie uh, Herodias, and Colonel Rosella Salbosa, our brave and uh, inspiring women in uniform. Colonel uh, Ian uh, Ignes, Colonel Sergio Macaranda Jr., Colonel Roderick Parialag, Colonel Rimbag uh, uh, Faya Raer, and uh, Colonel Eros Uri, Colonel uh, Vladimir Villanueva, Colonel Jesus Pagala, Colonel Tomas Baluga, Colonel Grimel Brual, Captain uh, Jonathan uh, Salvilla, Philippine Navy, Colonel Alan uh, Romero, uh, Colonel Alvin Io, Colonel Frederick Ancheta. With that, once again, would like to extend my warmest of felicitations and support to each and every one of you for your valiant uh, efforts and uh, unparalleled service to the Filipino nation. Your uh, remarkable contributions to our country only deserve highest commendations and uh, uh, recognition. Congratulations uh, to all of you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Senator Bongo. Any other member? Hi, um, Senator Drillon, you're recognized. Yes. Um, I'd like to ask a few questions on the nominee. Uh, <clears throat> pending before the Senate is the proposal to postpone 
the ARM, uh, the BARM election, uh, which is scheduled for for um, May next year. Um, may I know the security implications of uh, postponing this election or not postponing this election purely from a secure security and, and 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 law and order issue i don't i am conscious that being a career military official you should not express your opinion on political matters but that is why uh we would like to, to solicit your opinion on uh, the effect of uh, the uh, postponement or the non-postponement of the election from a security and law order point of view. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, the area of barn is not part of my current uh, designation right now because uh, barn is under the the area of responsibility of Western Mindanao Command. Even though mm -hmm. it's not part, uh, I would like to answer your question, sir. That uh, as part as far as Eastern Mindanao Command, any decisions that will be made by higher ups, we at uh, Eastern Mindanao is ready to support if elections will be held uh, soon in barn area, sir. So, BARM is not in your uh, uh, part of your command, uh, Mr. General? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes, Your Honor. This part of the area of Western Mindanao Command, sir. Uh -oh. um, okay. Nevertheless, uh, being exposed to the developments in Mindanao, would you be willing to share with us your opinion on the point I raised, if you want to? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I think uh, it is, even though I, uh, it, is, it is beyond my competency, sir, right now, I think anything that uh, the, our lawmakers, our policymakers will do, we at the security sector is always prepared to secure if elections will be held soon, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I, I cannot insist on your expression and opinion on a matter. Uh, we just take note of your uh, assessment and your assurance that you're ready to assist. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. That's all. Thank you very much, Senator Franklin Devan. Any other member? Senator Lisa, you have a nice one. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have just uh, three questions for uh, the good Lieutenant General Almerol. Good umaga po sa inyo, General. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, sir. First of all, po, um, during the hearing held last week, I asked General Belieran of the Philippine Navy uh, his opinion on why 98,000 of uh, our armed forces consist of land forces and why the Philippine Marine Corps is getting a meager allocation uh, for its equipment. And uh, my this question of mine to General Belieran, sir, was premised on an opinion, a study by Dr. Clarita Carlos, uh, University of the Philippines professor and uh, former National Defense College of the Philippines president, uh, who, Dr. Carlos, who calls to alter the structure of our AFP to serve our national interests, especially in the maritime domain. Could we hear, uh, uh, General Almirol, from the perspective of the Philippine Army naman po, regarding this proposal to alter the structure of the AFP, Mr. Chairman? Yes, ma'am. Uh, thank you, ma'am. It is because right now, ma'am, uh, the current uh, situation in our country is we are still addressing the internal internal security threat posed by the CNTs and other lawless elements. That's why uh, the predominant force right now is the land forces, practically the Philippine Army and some other forces from the Philippine Marines. But 
if these insurgency powers will soon end. I think uh, the AP has a plan to go on territorial defense and then all preparations for modernization, especially to our Philippine Navy and Philippine Air Force will be pushed through. And then I think all of the modernization project for Philippine Air Force and Philippine Navy are on the pipeline. Mm -hmm. I think uh, if with surgency will end in 2022, I think we will be able to achieve yung sabi mo ma'am na ship from the land forces and then modernization in our Philippine Air Force and our Philippine Navy which precisely addresses yung ating RP logic uh, situation where in our countries are composed of islands that's all ma'am, thank you um, Salamat din po Lieutenant General Almirol um, I also look forward to um the success both of peace processes um, and um, the parallel uh, efforts uh, of government through the armed forces to resolve um, especially the roots uh, and also the effects of the long-standing internal uh, armed conflicts um, para nga uh, maka-move forward din uh, dito sa modernization ng ating armed forces especially uh, reflecting more yung sinabi nyo rin po general na archipelagic nature ng ating bansa. Um, my second question, uh, Lieutenant General Almerol, we'll be celebrating our Independence Day uh, this coming June 12th, commemorating our independence and achievement of our own national sovereignty. For the past months, this has actually been threatened by China's presence in Philippine waters. So ano po yung opinion nyo, uh, General, sa West Philippine Sea incursions ng China, Mr. Chairman? Yes, ma'am, uh, Your Honor. I think uh, uh, in my position right now, ma'am, uh, I could not answer really what is happening uh, in the West Philippine Sea because uh, I'm not privy to the every situation because my area of responsibility only falls within the Eastern Mindanao command AOR and then the maritime uh, domain of that area. Uh, I think um, uh, some other competent authorities beyond me um, could maybe answer your inquiries in as far as West Philippines is concerned. But in the part of the, in my area in Eastern Mindanao command, we are closely monitoring any incursions, especially within the maritime domain and the archipelago archipelagic sea lanes within the Surigao Strait coming from Pacific Ocean and going towards the West Philippines. We're closely monitoring those passages and then in the down south in uh, celibacy going towards West Philippines. That's all, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you to uh, Lieutenant General Almerol. Sapat na po sa akin iyan yung assurance ninyo na closely monitoring kayo at lahat ng mga uh, puwersa sa ilalim ninyo uh, kahit dun sa mga katubigan natin na papuntang West Philippine Sea. Dahil sigurado ko at naniniwala ako na sa mga puso ninyo uh, sa armed forces, ay uh, tumitibok yung damdami ng mga ninuno natin kasama na yung mga naunang sundalo natin at lahat ng mga ninuno natin na lumaban para sa ating kalayaan at kasarinlan at na hindi hindi nyo papayagan din gaya ng nakikita natin itong nakaraang mga araw sa pamamagitan ng Philippine Navy kasama ng Coast Guard, DFAR at mga manging isda natin na hindi hindi nyo papayagan na agawin ni mang bansa yung napakahirap na ipinanalo ng ating mga ninuno. So, uh, salamat po, Lieutenant General Almerol. Huling tanong ko na lang po sa inyo, sir. Uh, it says here in your profile that you were recognized for your efforts in leading the different localities within your unit's jurisdiction to establish and operationalize their respective uh, task force LCAC. As we all know, there are different people uh, different people who've criticized the creation of the NTFLCAC 
especially its um, previous profiling and uh, red tagging activities. In this regard, can you share with us, General, your experience in dealing with localities in establishing and operationalizing their respective task forces, LCAC? And could you please, General, give the committee reasons why the NTF should not be defunded, Mr. Chairman? Yes, ma'am. Uh, thank you very much for your, for that. Uh, actually, ma'am, uh, in my area of responsibility, especially in Eastern Mindanao Command, uh, our RPF LCACs, comprising with regions 10, 11, 12, and 13, I think, ma'am, the strategy of uh, NTF LCAC has been very effective. Uh, because I was able to assess that uh, we're in, uh, most of the insurgency problem really occurs in regions 10, in regions 13, and 11. Uh, but I'm happy to report that uh, in those areas, uh, with the strategy of LCAP we have, we were able to really uh, degrade the enemy's capability and then especially uh, help us uh, hasten our accomplishment of our mission, which is the dismantling of the different guerrilla fronts within the area of Eastern Binanao Command. Uh, yung sinasabi namin na uh, KBP funds, ma'am, uh, we have the biggest uh, allotment in Eastern Binanao Command. We have around 306 barangay who are beneficiary of the KBA. Uh, the funds, I think right now the funds are being uh, processed uh, by the L different LGUs because funds were being downloaded to the provincial governments. And then meetings are underway, undergoing right now and they are work closely monitoring and we're working with the different LGUs so as those funds will be realized because most of those projects that was listed are all are all uh, farm to market roads and opening up roads which we deem necessary because uh, as we all know uh, we believe that uh, insurgency really ends when roads begin when the construction of roads begin because uh, the guerrilla bases those gidas will no longer exist if the roads will be open to that area. And then I think that uh, the funds will be very helpful to the different LGOs, lalo na yung pinaka yung area, because they will now be rich. And then, uh, and then I think that yung problema ng insurgency na paulit-ulit, na kami rin paulit-ulit na ginagawa din namin yung conduct ng immersions is what to look at because of the presence of those roads. Most of those uh, KBP projects are all road infrastructure, opening up roads that will really help our communities. Uh, I think pa ma, pag nangyari yun, hindi na mababalikan and then services, the flow of uh, services, mas madali na doon sa mga powerful communities na nabibigyan ng mga karsan. Yun lang ma'am, thank you very much. Maraming salamat din po, uh, Lieutenant General uh, Almerol. Uh, I'm glad to hear yung update din na uh, binahagi nyo that the funds are being processed by the LGUs, uh, downloaded to the provinces or to, to the provincial governments, and the uh, biddings being uh, conducted. Uh, tingin ko po yung patuloy na development interventions ng gobyerno, lalo na dun sa mga geographically isolated and disadvantaged areas that the good general also pointed out, yung mga GIDA, ay talagang properly at effectively nagagawa under the leadership of the civilian government with the support uh, of the uh, armed services when and as necessary. So, mukang, ano, and hopefully uh, itong mga uh, local na programs are being done uh, better no ng mga 
uh, task force LCAC at the local level better and less controversially, uh, hindi, hindi sana nagpo-profiling at red tagging at hindi nang iinsulto ng kapwa institusyon sa gobyerno no, uh, better than the NTF LCAC. So, uh, and in this way also, Lieutenant General, uh, pinahahayag ko yung suporta, uh, hindi lamang ko, pero namin sa Senado, sa ating mga local government units na nagsusubok i-address yung mga ugat talaga ng internal armed conflict. So maraming salamat po sa inyo, Lieutenant General Almerol. Advanced congratulations. Yes, yeah. Mabuhay kayo and my snappy salute. Salamat po, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Salamat po, Senator Risa. Uh, Senator Lakson. Yes. What is the role of the security forces? Or I'll be specific. Ano, what, what is the role of the military establishment in the implementation of the development projects sa ntf -LCAP? Actually, sir, is the, the security sector, especially the armed forces and the Philippine National Police, uh, in the identification of uh, projects, uh, it is really a, a product of all the government agencies and LGOs talking and then addressing the issues, the insurgency issues that need to be addressed. But most of the issues, really, sir, uh, that we have assessed is more on the opening of roads, roads at construction, because some of those uh, guerrilla bases uh, have no roads. And then if there are no roads, we could not really sustain in our efforts. I know that, no. So first, your role is to identify the projects to be implemented under your AOR, you know, within your AOR. Yes, sir. Yes, Your Honor. But during the implementation of the projects, ano yung role ng armed forces and the security, including the PNP, for that matter? Sir, our only role really is to to monitor, and then once the project will commence, we will have to provide security so as the projects will be completed. How do you monitor? Possible. What will you monitor? The construction, sir, the start of the project. We are there. We have to make sure that the project will be realized. Do you have the technical capability to monitor the uh, progress of the, uh, the program of work and everything else? Sir, our concern really is just to for the project to be realized because these are projects uh, product as a product of our immersions, our community support programs in those targeted barangays, sir. And you stated earlier that East Mincom area uh, has received the biggest number of uh, uh, allocation. Yes, sir, for advance, this. No? Why, why is that? Sir, nabutan ko na lang to, sir, for in my, yung nandito sa amin, sir, we have currently right now 200, 306 projects, sir. For, yes, but what is the justification for your area of jurisdiction receiving the biggest uh, uh, allocation? Uh, because uh, Eastern Binanokuman area, sir, was designated as the priority front, sir by the national government, and then most of the insurgency situations are all... Does it follow that your uh, AOR has the most influenced barangays and the most number of cleared barangays? Yung ba yung logic don? Yes, sir. Yes, Your Honor. And it is a matter of record? Yes, sir. Yes, Your Honor. How many barangays have you cleared? Not during your time, huh? but uh, I suppose you have been briefed when you reported as the new Ismincom commander, di ba? Yes, sir. Right now, sir, I think the current uh, the running total is around more than 3,000 already cleared barangays. How 103 cleared barangays? 3,000 3, plus, sir. More, than, more or less 3,200 plus. 3,200. Yes, Out sir. of how many? Uh, I have to find out, sir, the total number of barangays. Yes, so how many barangays uh, have yet to be cleared? Actually, we have already uh, mga more or less one more than one thousand barangays left, na lang, sir, per clearing. More than one thousand barangays. Pa. Yes, sir. So, bagong report ka. What are your programs to clear those those barangays? 
copyright also uh, during the second semester when we have our assessment, uh, we will have to deploy the remaining those remaining barangays that have not yet been conducted with immersions. Or and you have a timeline? Yes, sir. We when have a timeline. When, sir. when will um, you clear the remaining 1,000 plus barangays? We have the timeline up to the end of this year, sir. Two years? Up to the end of this year, sir. Uh, up to the end of this year. Uh, how many are influenced? Di ba may mga categories yan? Yung degree ng uh, influence of uh, the NPAs? Kindly, yes, sir. Uh, we have. Kindly classify further. Out of the 1,000, ilan yung uh, controlled, ilan yung influenced, ilan yung infiltrated, and so forth and so on. Yes, sir. We have categorized that uh, into those three categories uh, you have mentioned. Uh, but we have termed that in our as KKRs barangay. Uh, the same classification is uh, yung sinabi nyo na tatlo. Uh, but we concentrated much on the influence barangay. And then all timelines we set uh, could be finished within the year because we have sufficient forces to be used in all those remaining barangays we have, sir. So, equivalent sa how many NPA regulars yung more than 1,000 barangays? Yung strength ng, uh, yung enemy strength? What is the current uh, enemy strength uh, in your area? Actually, sir, yung enemy, yung kalaban natin, sir, yung enemy module niya, we have the horizontal forces and the vertical forces. Yes, those, but yung arm lang, yung arm regulars. The arm regulars, sir, uh, mostly nasa more than 3,000 pa rin, both uh, huh? in the whole area. Of, in the whole 3,000? Arm uh, regulars? No, sir. More than 1,000 plus. 1,700. 1, 1, 1, yes, in the whole country, ano ba yung uh, strength ng arm regulars of the, uh, of the NPAs? The current uh, strength was placed at 3,700 plus. So more than half of that is in your area? Yes, sir. I see. So 1,000 barangays with 1,700 armed regulars. That's the situation now. Yes, sir. Yes, Your Honor. And you commit to clear all barangays uh, by year end. Yes, sir. That was our timeline and that is the objective. And you're uh, progressing uh, according to your timeline. Yes, sir. Uh, we are still on track, sir. We are still on time. time You're okay. still on track. How is the recruitment? Recruitment from the part of the CPP and PA, sir. They recruited mostly indigenous people. IPs. Yes, sir. Because there's no presence. In those areas, government presence, meaning? Yes, sir, you're right. Uh, so, because there's no existing also roads connecting to those uh, very, very powerful ancestral domains of the IPs. So what do you recommend that government should do in this regard? Uh, I highly recommend, sir, that we do more infrastructure, just like road openings to those areas. Ang problema kasi, magtatayo na eskwelahan yung DepEd, Ginagamit ang NPA for indoctrination, di ba? Because there's no government presence. Yes, sir. Hindi ba yes, dapat sir. you should increase uh, uh, yung visibility in those areas? More visibility, better. To drive away the NPAs uh, or uh, denying them to have control or influence over the IPs, di ba? Ganun dapat. Yes, sir. Yes, Your Honor. That's part of your uh, plan, strategic plan. Or yes, sir. Medium term plan. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, your honor. And by strength ng Ismincom. Total. Right now, sir, I have four brigades. Uh, each brigade has uh, more or less uh, four battalions. Sir. Full complement ito? Yes, sir. So, total number of personnel? Including I think I have Mr. more or less 10,000. Including administrative personnel? More or less 10,000, sir. Hindi pa more or less. You're the commander. You should do. You know, this is a... Laging problema ng amporsis ito. We don't know how to count. 
whenever we ask you to strength, you ang ansanggat nyo is more or less. The same is true with the PNP. So, ilan talaga yung strength ng uh, Isminkom? Maybe Senator De La Rosa would know. Donald. Never mind. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, da so, dapat lang alam ng gobernador yan. Maybe you would know yan. why the AFP and the PNP, PNP do not know how to count. <laughs> we are used to the word uh, more or less, sir. To be safe. Kasi kung susubra, mamalasin ka. Pag kulang, mamalasin ka rin. Kaya, more or less lang palagi yung sagot ng uh, polis at ng military. That's the reason. That's the reason. Para hindi malasin. More or less na lang. That's the safest answer. Ano ba yung force race nyo between administrative and uh, operational uh, troops? Sir, uh, in its Mekom area, I think we have 80 20 percent. 20 to 80. So 20 percent, ito yung administrative. Yes, sir. 80 percent, ito yung naka-deploy. Yes, sir, in the field. So, sige, we'll uh, hold on to your commitment. Uh, when, you, when we see you again, probably in December or January next year, we'll ask you if all the 1,000 plus barangays have been cleared by that time. Yes, sir. Uh, we'll comply, sir. And in case you get the uh, your last star, uh, the next star, we will not confirm you uh, if you if you fail in your uh, commitment. Is that a deal? Oh, but kilomunong ng laway. I will try my very very best, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Boss Senator Laxon. Any other member? Um, Senator Bato de la Rosa and after Senator Bato de la Rosa, Senator Revilla. Go ahead, po, Senator de la Rosa. Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, may tanong lang ako dito kay uh, General. Uh, uh, after, after dito sa ating uh, nakasalang M, Mr. Chairman, Dori kay General Manny Sikitin, meron din akong tanong, but uh. While nandiyan si General Almirol, uh, uh, my question is, uh, alam ko General Almirol, you've been there, dyan sa area na yan, kahit na bagong uh, upo ka lang na uh, East Mincom Commander, but you've been there since your uh, Lieutenant days, Captain days, Major uh, days, uh, Colonel, Lieutenant Colonel, Colonel, uh, dyan ka na palagi na, na, na deploy. Ang matanong ko lang, May napansin ka ba na malaking pagbabago in terms of peace and order sa region na yan? Uh, I-compare mo during your hard times and during your time now as a uh, uh, area commander. May pagbabago ba pagdating sa problema natin sa insurgency? Uh, please answer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Honor. Uh, marami, sir. Malaking pagbabago when I was still a second lieutenant in 1989 in that area. Uh, very big, sir. Marami. Uh, in fact, uh, yung unang panahon, sir, uh, during those times when you were still in the bow, medyo mahirap mag... Mahirap talaga sa Dabao, mahirap sa area ng Tago mag ikot, -ikot because of so many sparrow. And then... Uh, Tsaka yung economic development in those areas was not really that much compared right now. Uh, special roads, yung mga roads, sir, uh, it is all connecting. Uh, we have a very, very good roads and then business, uh, floris. And then uh, people, uh, dumami. And then most of the areas have been developed. And then little only lang 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 yung kinokontrol not control but uh, na influence nila sir. What I mean is those areas na hindi talaga naabot ng serbisyo, hindi naabot. Uh, that's why uh, kailangan talaga magawa ng uh, with the roads, connecting roads in those areas. So as hindi na talaga mabalikan. But I think kaunti na lang talaga sir. Very much improvement. Especially in regions 11 and regions 10. Uh, more have to be done in regions 13 and part of 12. But I think in general sir, Nag-improve economically, uh, 
uh, politically and uh, nag-improve yung security situations in the area of Eastern Mindanao Command. Yeah, Mr. kaya Mr. natanong... Mr. 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 Senator Bato? Yes, sir. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Thank you. So, in this previous slide, you worked together. You were able to work with Senator De La Rosa in his previous life? Yes, sir. When I was still uh, uh, as, a, as a lieutenant, sir, uh, I've been assigned in Davao City and Davao Din and then and Dabo, you said, we have worked. Uh, and you said earlier, much improved your peace and order situation. Yes, sir. How much did uh, Senator De La Rosa contribute to the improvement of the peace and order you be careful with your answer huh? either malasing ka sa akin o malasing ka kay senator de la rosa yes sir how much did you did he contribute i think sir uh, when he was uh, with uh, pro 11 and then when he was designated as the pd of double del sur then next as pd of uh, pen compostela bali province and the cpo i think sir lahat ng inu position in occupy niya doon, nagkataon na nandun din ako, sir. I have seen that all those areas nandun siya, sir. Nagtutulungan ang AFP and PNP in solving uh, insurgency problems, issues in those particular areas, sir. But you did not answer my question. How much did he contribute? How, sir, very much, sir. He have contributed very much because uh, we have How so many... How much is very much? Uh, in most... Uh, especially sir, lahat nagkakanta kami ng joint operations with the PNP uh, in areas na may, may mga targets kami sir. How many encounters did you have with uh, Senator De La Rosa? Encounters with the enemy ah? Uh? In joint operations? Sir, I could not remember the exact number but I could say so many sir, marami sir, uh, especially in the areas of uh, Compostela Bali, in the province of Compostela Bali. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Lacson. Yeah, yeah, if I may continue, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, kaya ko tinanong niya sa iyo, General Ar Almirol, dahil nga sinabi mo rin kanina na yung EOR mo ang na nakaka-receive ng mas pinakamalaki na porsyon ng uh, NTFL CAC na budget for a Barangay Development Program. Kaya sinabi mo rin na where uh, the road ends, insurgency begins. At uh, alam ko, you have a complete grasp of the situation sa pisan order ng lugar na yan. Kaya, i-remind lang kita, sinabi mo, ang papel ng AFP dyan sa implementation ng uh, Barangay Development Programs and Projects ay to monitor. So dapat, i-monitor mo properly yan dahil nga, alam mo, yung kalaban natin ngayon, they are... Uh, trying to mount uh, uh, a comeback. Gustong-gusto na bumalik. Lahat-lahat na lang ng uh, discarte ginagawa nila para makabalik sila. Pero nahihirapan sila. So, kapag makabalik sila, that will be a failure mark on your, uh, on your uh, career or, or on your, uh, on your uh, stand as commander of uh, uh, East Mincom. Kaya, Paano sila makabalik? Makakabalik sila kapag madisgruntled yung mga taga-barangay dyan na tatanggap ng Barangay Development Program kapag ito'y napasokan ng politika. Bantayan ninyo yan na walang politika makapasok dyan sa mga projects na yan, sa implementation ng projects, para satisfied talaga yung mga taga-barangay at hindi na babalik sa NPA. Kaya sabi ko sa'yo, bantayan ninyo talaga yung implementation ng mga projects na yan dahil uh, uh, in fairness, so far, uh, every time uuwi ako ng uh, Davao region, nakikita ko na yung mga lugar noon, yung mga tininti pa tayo na hindi natin mapasok na may daladala ka na at least one platoon o kaya one company of your soldiers. Hindi mo mapasok-pasok. Pero noon, noon, hindi mo mapasok. Ngayon, in fairness, Kahit solo na lang ako, pupunta doon magbisiklita, napapasok ko na yung mga area na yan. Dahil maganda na talaga ang uh, peace and order situation. Yung mga sinasakayan natin ng kabayo noon para mapasok yung lugar o kaya inaakyat natin ng bundok using our own combat boots lang, 
ngayon kayang kaya ko nang i-mountain bike dahil of the presence of the uh, infrastructures like kalsada. Kaya pag mayroon ng kalsada yung lugar, lumalayas talaga yung NPA dahil napapasok na sila ng police at military. So bantayan talaga niyo yung uh, implementation ng mga projects na yan. That's your moral obligation na uh, General Almirol na hindi na sila makakabalik diyan sa mga recovered barangays natin. That's all uh, Mr. Chairman for General Almirol and uh, later I will ask question to General Manny Sikitin. Thank you Mr. Chairman. Uh, salamat po Senator Dela Rosa. Senator Bong Revilla, sir. No, he still has uh, one last question for General Dela Rosa still has the floor, uh, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Good. Okay na po. Okay na po. Yung audio nyo, Senator Bong. Okay, is it my turn now? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. Yes, uh, this is to uh, convey my full support and commendation to the senior officer of the Armed Forces of the Philippines who are up for promotion this morning, led by Major General Greg Almerol who is nominated to the rank of Lieutenant General. Major General Almerol is admired in the military for his varied achievements, uh, professionalism, and utmost dedication to duty. I would like to uh, specifically commend him for his significant role in promoting and maintaining peace, security, and development in our home region of Southern Tagalog, which earned him a Distinguished Service Medal this year. Also, uh, I would like to express my support to the following officers. Brigadier General Manuel Sequetin, who is nominated to the rank of Major General. A uh, distinguished officer who is highly regarded for his uh, leadership and managerial skills. Brigadier General Stephen Pareño, who is nominated to the rank of Major General. Currently, the Air Force Inspector General who is recognized by colleagues for his industry and dedication to service. Commodore Joe Anthony Orbe, who was cited for his role as commanding officer, BRP Gregorio Del Pilar, for serving as a frontline unit protecting the national, security, uh, national territory and economic zones in the West Philippine Sea and Northern Luzon. Colonel Tomas Dominic Baluga, who was recognized uh, with the Philippine Legion of Honor and is recognized for his military experience and uh, competence in operations and training. Colonel Rosel Salvosa, who became one of the five first female uh, aviation cadets of the Philippine Air Force Flying School in 1993 to, to graduate as regular officers in 1995 and uh, and is a strong advocate of gender and development. Saludo po ko sa inyong tapang, dedikasyon sa tungkulin, at uh, sakripisyo para sa ating bansa. Nawa, nawa po ay magpatuloy kayo bilang inspirasyon para sa iba, para sa iba pa nating mga opisyal at sundalo ng ating sandatahong lakas. Maraming salamat po sa inyo. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much po, Senator Revilla. Any other member? Uh, Chair would like to recognize Senator Joel Villanueva. Um, Senator Risa. Uh, Chair, uh, uh, yes, Mr. Po. Chair. But uh, right. if the Chair has already recognized Senator Joel, I'm uh, willing to wait till after him, Mr. Chair. No, no ma'am. in acknowledge lang po natin. Ah, I see. All right. Okay. Salamat po, Mr. Chair. Salamat, Senator Joel. Just a brief manifestation, uh, Mr. Chair, tungkol po kay... Uh, Lieutenant General uh, Almerol, kaugnay po nung uh, karinyo brutal ni Sen Ping sa kanila kanina na uh, kapag ka hindi nila uh, or unless makamit nila yung objective na maklear yung iba pang mga barangay ay uh, hindi sila i-confirm ng uh, ating commission on appointments para sa susunod nilang Australia. Uh, just for the record, uh, Mr. Chair, I think uh, as much as or even more than yung mga opisyal natin sa armed forces 
uh, tayo pa rin mga civilian uh, government officials ang may pinakamalaking responsibilidad para i-address yung ugat ng internal armed conflict o ng insurgency uh, para kung magawa po natin yan and mas maka, mat, uh, magtagumpay yung mga peace processes uh, siguro secondary role na important though uh, a, a supporting role pero secondary na siguro yung responsibilidad ng uh, armed forces para ma-address talaga yung roots of the armed conflict ma-resolve na yung insurgency, magtagumpay yung mga peace processes na mas kaunti yung uh, pagdanak ng dugo at yung uh, risk na binabalikat ng ating mga opisyal at tauhan sa armed forces. So just for the record, Mr. Chairman, dahil I'm sure kasama ni Senping, I look forward na yung CA natin ay maikumpirma muli si Lieutenant General Almerol sa kanilang pangatlong Estrella. Salamat po, Mr. Chair. Salamat po, Sir Teresa. Sir Terping. Let me just uh, respond to, and uh, she would understand this, ano, kasi she used to be a cadet girl also. So, pinatakil ko lang si General Armelor actually. It was um, it was said in jest, uh, but I, I actually did not mean that. So, tackling lang, tackling lang yung tackling. Thank you. Thank you Understood, sir. sir. Kaya nga po, karinyo brutal at Mas karinyo kaysa brutal. <laughs> Salamat po, Senting. Salamat, Mr. Chair. Thank you po, Sen. Teresa. Um, General, um, if I may add lang po, aside po sa mga roads na uh, ang priority po, no? sabi nyo nga, new roads, new development, new opportunities para sa tao, may mga schools ba ho na ginagawa sa inyong mga areas na mas kailangan natin? Yes, sir. Some of the uh, projects under the Barangay Development Fund are next to road infrastructure are like youth projects uh, and uh, the other one is uh, basic services such as uh, water and electricity sir. Ah, so ginagawa po lahat yan sir. yes sir that, uh, that those areas na nangailangan sir some of those areas some of those barangays na tinatawag natin na influence barangays ah, salamat po any other Thank member you much, sir. was a question to our nominees uh, wala na po, can we invite Colonel Vladimir Villanueva? General Menor, you are now excused, sir. General Villanueva. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, this concerns, first, this concerns uh, uh, a, uh, the policy of the Commission on Appointments. You know? I'm looking at the summary of information. Kay, uh, ni Vladimir, Colonel Vladimir Lenos Tragura Villanueva. Ang records ng uh, commission, you were promoted at interim to your uh, present rank uh, uh, of Colonel on 17 January of 2020. This is more than one year ago, ah. Eh? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. But, ito, after a lapse of seven years and one month and 16 days from your last promotion to the grade of Lieutenant Colonel. Because your promotion to Lieutenant Colonel uh, was on December 1, 2012. This is correct, ano? Thank you, Honor. Presidential Decree 1638. Ito yung attrition, eh. Retirement sa separation. Ang time in grade or tenure in grade ng Lieutenant Colonel to be promoted, yung maximum ah, to, to Colonel is seven years. Yeah, seven years. And it took you more than seven years. So why were you not attrited or separated from the service? Uh, you, you were uh, lengthened. Yes. yes the President issued yes, a certification sir. lengthening yes, sir. your service. But that certification was only good up to December 1, 2020, correct? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Did you receive another certification for your lengthening, for the lengthening of your active service? Yes, sir. Uh, Do you yes. have it? Because we don't have it here. Uh, yes, sir. We, we, we were all 
uh, Lenten again, sir. Okay. So, meron kang uh, certification from, uh, uh, a memo from the President lengthening your active service? Yes, yes, sir. For another year? Kasi one year lang yata yung... Yes, sir. So, hanggang December of 2021? Up to... Uh, I will find out up to when... Anyway, anyway, I'll take your word for it. Huh? But my question is, what happened? It appears that you were bypassed by the uh, commission five times or four times. What's the reason for the four bypasses? Sir, uh, last year, Your Honor, when I was uh, gathering my uh, papers for the... I'll answer your question uh, because it's in here. You failed, and sabi pa nga rito, you refused to submit the documentary requirements each time. Ang nakalagay dito, eto, CIA records, Commission on Appointments records, disclosed that subject officer has been bypassed by the Commission four times, specifically on 21 March 2020, 23 March 2020, 5 June 2020, 16 December 2020. Ang reason, failure to submit his documentary requirements despite due notice from the AFP Office for Legislative Affairs, OLA. No. Natanggap po naman. No? You, uh, ito, You'll receive by OLA to June 23 July, 11 February. Now, Additional information, it was gathered that several of your mistas, no, your classmates, class 94, and other friends exerted diligent efforts to persuade you to undergo the confirmation process, but to no avail. Why deliberate by ito? Are you magan ka ba talaga? Uh, no, Your Honor, sir. Uh... Allow me to explain you the, yes, the, 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 the explain. circumstances that uh, led me to uh, having uh, not submitted the paper, sir. Uh, last year, sir, uh, well, uh, completing my paper, sir, uh, well, going to the process of getting the clearances, I was uh, hospitalized. I was hospitalized uh, around uh, May. Of last year, I was uh, diagnosed with uh, type 2 diabetes and uh, I even uh, lost uh, part of my thumb. I was operated on. And uh, after only coming out of the hospital, then I continued the process of uh, gathering the required uh, documents. Uh, however, when I was uh, supposed to submit it, by uh, third, uh, fourth quarter, sir, uh, we were, Typhoon uh, Ulysses uh, came and uh, flooded, uh, flooded parts of uh, Pasig City, where I reside. And uh, I was informed by uh, my sister, who was uh, the person uh, residing in our house, I was uh, in the at that time, that uh, the room that I was, that I stay in was included in the flood and uh, I, I did confirm that uh, all my papers were figuratively washed away, washed, washed up. Uh, it include the folders that I already prepared. So I asked the uh, Ola if uh, I asked J1 if uh, I could reconstruct these papers. Then uh, while reconstructing it, never mind. As far as this, Mr. Chairman, as far as this representation is concerned, I'm satisfied uh, with the explanation of the uh, uh, appointee or Colonel William Nueva. Thank you, Your Honor. Yeah. Now, on the policy side, the policy issue, Section 25 of our rules, ano, bypass nomination or appointment. And sabi rito, 
a nomination or appointment which has been bypassed three times shall be reported out by the standing committee concerned to the commission for its appropriate action in the next plenary session. So I think there's an oversight here because after he was bypassed uh, three times, the committee or the standing committee should or could have reported out for the consideration of the whole commission or the committee itself uh, preliminarily and then the commission to act on the ad interim appointment of the appointee of the subject officer. So maybe next time uh, the secretariat should be more uh, wary, wary of uh, this uh, kind of situation. Yes, Your Honor. There's no explanation from <laughs> the The staff told me they have requested uh, and waited for these documents, and they are already prepared on the third bypass to already declare the situation as needing already a decision. Yes, but the yeah, th that's my uh, that's my concern now because uh, I think we hope we overlook. Uh, compliance with uh, Section 25 of our rules. This is, the, mga new rules natin ito eh. Uh, wala nang Section 20, but the Commission must act appropriately uh, kung uh, after the three bypass uh, or in the invocation of the three bypass rule. Anyway, uh, what's done is done. I'm just saying this para uh, for future situations uh, like this one, uh, we should be conscious to uh, to act uh, appropriately. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, for Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senator Ping. Uh, Senator yes, Mr. Mr. Chairman, yes, we thank uh, our distinguished colleague, Senator Laxon, for pointing that out and listening to the reasons given by the uh, by the uh, nominee. Nakita naman po natin na uh, minalas lang talaga siya. Talagang malas, nagkasakit. Tapos, uh, nabaha pa yung tahanan niya which affected of course his documents kawawa naman and uh and, and this is this is acts of god beyond his control and uh i'm glad this was pointed out by the good uh, our good colleague senator Laxon, so that we can support his nomination um he deserves uh, to be nominated and to uh get his rank uh, one rank higher especially with all the service that he's done for our country uh, this is General, uh, what is the name of the uh, distinguished uh, soldier, uh, Mr. Chairman? I missed uh, it out. Colonel Vladimir Villanueva, sir. Boss. Yes. I fully support this nomination, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Senator Sibiri. Uh, Chair, would like to acknowledge the online presence of Senator Coco Pimentel. Good morning, Paul. Federe mag-sharing, Mr. Chairman. Yes, go ahead, Paul. Okay, thank, thank you. I can identify with the reason given by our nominee, uh, uh, Colonel Villanueva, Vladimir, is that the nominee? Yeah. Yung, yung baha po kasi, uh, ita, yung, yung mga once in a lifetime events happened to me in uh, Marikina twice in in 10 years. So, ganun na po kasama ang kondisyon uh, ng baha sa ating uh, bansa na mga once in a lifetime Ang tawag nila once in a lifetime, two times nangyayari. Hindi pa sa lifetime mo, sa sampung taon lang. Sampu, sampung taon lamang. So, alam ko po yan, ano, yung baha, sira ang mga papeles. Uh, kaya, na, na, kaya nakaka-identify. And uh, we also sympathize because uh, in addition to that, you know, he, he suffered an illness. May, may, may I ask uh, some factual background why Senator Laxon raised the... Uh, section 25 is it applicable to the case of uh, our nominee yes sir well, yes, mr sir. chairman uh, that rule applies because this is a three bypass rule we amended the rules the old rules yes. and it is now under section 25 that after three bypasses the standing committee should recommend or report out to the plenary or to the members the situation and the standing committee uh, and the plenary, the, the whole commission should act yes. whether to confirm or reject the nominee or appointee. And yes. uh, he had undergone 
four bypasses already. Ah, four Hindi already. Hard bypass sa confirmation. Oh, and and by and and, and uh, a bypass we define as uh, how do we define that, uh, sir? The bypass is the uh, no action taken by the committee. Yes, uh, uh, after adjournment or before adjournment, no action uh, is taken by the committee. Yes. We count three times. Oh, uh, so it, it, this is uh, Colonel Villanueva's fourth time to appear before the committee or to be to be placed this in the agenda of time. the committee. Ah, huh? fifth, 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 fifth time. time. Ah, okay, yes. so very so Thank so you for that. Actually, yeah. Thank you, sir, for that clarification. Thank you very much, That's Mr. Why Chairman. We acknowledge that this is an oversight on the part of the uh, commission on appointments because we did uh, take notice of the fourth bypass or after the three uh, bypasses, we could have acted on the ad interim appointment whether to confirm or to reject. But the reason given, uh, as disclosed by the Secretariat, hindi nagsasubmit ng docu documentary requirements. That's the reason why we asked for his explanation. And uh, which explanation, I, uh, I, uh, I already uh, uh, yes. uh, admitted na satisfactory as far as, as far as I'm concerned. Okay. So we, we find the reason uh, credible, understandable, and satisfactory. So okay reasonable. na po yun. Uh, reasonable. reasonable. Yes. Thank, you. thank you very much. Mr. Thank Chairman. you, sir. And thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Paul, Senator Coco Pimentel. Senator Joy Villanueva, you're nice. Sir. Yes. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to spread into the records uh, uh, that I join my uh, distinguished colleagues in uh, supporting uh, the explanation given to us by Colonel uh, Vladimir Villanueva. Mr. Chairman, again, uh, he is not my relative and uh, uh, not that I know of, Mr. Chairman. I don't. I, I really don't know, but... Uh, uh, listening to him, Mr. Chairman, just like uh, Senator Coco Pimentel, I, I, I experienced uh, twice, Mr. President, also in the province of Bulacan, itong uh, matinding baha na ito. And uh, in fact, Mr. President, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I lost all my uh, baby pictures nung time na yon. And uh, there, there was a time na, na may gagawa ng libro for our family and they were looking for uh, our baby pictures and uh, I, I couldn't produce a single one uh, Mr. Chairman so I, I commiserate with him siguro Mr. Chairman yung isang tatanong ko lang bakit bakit uh, Colonel uh, Vladimir Villanueva bakit wala ni, ni, ni isa or anything na yung narinig namin sa iyo ngayon na explanation na napaabot po sa mga miyembro or dito mismo sa uh, Commission on Appointments and, and, and I'm glad uh, Mr. Chair that uh, our colleagues and the members of the commission are are, are considerate enough to 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 look into this. I I see Senator Bato who who who, who uh, stood by us uh, last uh, hearing and to 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 give a chance to uh, our uh, nominee who's been uh, serving our uh, country and people wholeheartedly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I would just like to ask that question. That one question. Thank you. Salamat po, Senator Joel. I, sorry, um, go ahead, Colonel Villanueva. Uh, sir, uh, I thought that uh, having informed the J1 of my situations uh, sufficed. I also wrote a letter to, to explain why I could not yet submit the documents. Even early this year, uh, when I was uh, called to submit again, I explained that I was confined, I, I contracted COVID this year, uh, March. So, as you can see, sunod -sunod talaga yung unfortunate events ko. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, clearly, there was a, uh, a big miscommunication uh, na nangyari, Mr. Chairman. And uh, again, uh, I would just like to spread into the records my uh, full support to our nominee. Not only because he's a villain, Mr. Chairman, but uh, uh, because I believe uh, he deserves our uh, confirmation. Thank you, and uh, maraming salamat, Colonel Villan uh, Thank you, Senator Joel. Senator Lisa. Salamat, Mr. Chairman. Brief manifestation lang po uh, kasunod nung pinahayag na ni na 
um, Majority Leader Migs at uh, Sen Coco na uh, kasama nga ni na Sen Joel at Sen Doroy de la Rosa. Um, this representation really uh, empathizes with Colonel Villanueva at nung nakaraang hearing nga po ay hiniling namin sa J1 at sa OLA na nung malaman namin lalo na yung tungkol sa baha hiniling talaga namin sa kanila na tulungan si Colonel Villanueva na i-reconstruct yung kanilang mga nasirang dokumento. And for the record, uh, pumayag ang J1 at natutulong sila. So maraming salamat sa kanila. Ito kasi, Chair, uh, talagang sa ating komite at sa buong komisyon, ayaw nating magsayang ng kahit isang uh, mabuting officer and gentleman or gentlewoman as the case may be, na nagsisilbi sa ating armed forces at ating bayan at humaharap sa ating komisyon para sa kanilang confirmation. So marami salamat po, uh, Mr. Chair. And advanced congratulations at mabuhay at may snappy salute kay Colonel Villanueva. Salamat, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman. Salamat po, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. I'm Senator Sibiri po. Right, Inominate na natin siya. Baka may mangyari pa. <laughs> Baka may mangyari pa. Nominate na natin kagad. Opo, hindi. Um, na. Tama. Uh, alam ko naman po, uh, lahat ng members ng ating uh, committee ay may ginito ang puso at mawain. So sa series of his fortunes of buhay ni uh, Colonel Villanueva, bigyan naman natin siya ng konting reward at good news. No? Uh, ito nga po yung confirmation niya. So congratulations. No? You're not... Thank you, sir. Any other members who have, who have a question or... Manifestation. Kung wala na po, Majority Leader. Mr. Chairman, I have a short manifestation for another officer, General uh, Major General Manny Sipitin. Uh, you are now excused, Colonel Villanueva. Thank you, Arnold. Go ahead. Um, Kong Mayo, Majority Leader. Yes. Yes, uh, may I know if uh, General Secretary is uh, among us today? General, can we take a seat in front? Okay na po, boss. Ah, uh, medyo. Hindi ko makita. Okay. Uh, sir, good morning, sir. Sir Chairman, um, a call on General Secretary so that everybody will see a person who I admire so much and he was assigned to be the Brigade Commander of the 701st Brigade in, uh, located in Mati, Davao Oriental. Among his other accomplishments, I'm um, Chair, is that, uh, which I would like to emphasize now, is that uh, he was my body my companion in campaigning among the uh, students to take the PMA exams, which was held in Mati during the uh, uh, exam week of PMA. No? And we gathered more than 250 uh, applicants in uh, the PMA exam. And I'd like to thank uh, the general money secretary because that would not have been made possible without his uh, active support and coordination with my office in campaigning for our students to take that PMA exam. So, General Secretary, I again would like to thank you and to congratulate you in advance for your uh, confirmation. Thank you. Thank you very much, likewise, sir. Mr. Okay. Chairman. Oh, um, Senator Lisa, you raise your hand. Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, I have one question also for Major General Sekitin. Go ahead, Pop. Salamat, Mr. Chair. At uh, magandang umaga po sa inyo, uh, Major General Sekitin. Good morning, ma'am. Yes, sir. Um, the AFP's implementation of Development Support and Security Plan, or DSSP, Kapayapaan, as envisioned by the administration of the president, aims to win peace through a whole-of-nation approach and involvement of all stakeholders. 
as the new commander of the Civil Relations Service of the AFP, uh, General, what policies or plans do you intend to implement uh, in order to push through this DSSP kapayapaan during and also after the pandemic, Mr. Chairman? Uh, thank you very much for your question, ma'am. Ma'am, actually, the DSSP kapayapaan is uh, a campaign of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, not only uh, with the Civil Relations Service as its uh, uh, front unit, Actually, all units of the Armed Forces of the Philippines are involved in the DSSP Kapayapaan. And the involvement of the Armed Forces in the Whole of Nation initiative and the Whole of Nation approach requires us to be involved in uh, uh, stakeholder, stakeholder engagement with the uh, local population leaders. And uh, NTFL CAC is one of the venues and platforms where we engage our stakeholders and also we have the uh, regional provincial and municipal uh, uh, peace and order councils where we attend on a regular basis usually on a monthly basis uh, uh, actually the concept of uh, winning the peace is uh, focused on not only engaging the enemy in wars or battles to to win the peace but in also identifying government programs that we could collaborate on and uh, bring into the far-flung barangays. Uh, the recent uh, BDP program of 20 million per barangay is a manifestation of the uh, Whole of Nation initiative, ma'am. Uh, the involvement of the AFP there is to initially deploy community support program teams in far-flung barangays, mostly in the hinterland areas. and. Uh, as we try to clear the areas of NPA influence, we also try to identify the needs of the area of the barangays and the different areas. And we collaborate with the local leaders of the different barangays through the Barangay Development Program and ident in identifying programs, projects, and initi initiatives that can be brought to the national government. And then when we're done with the Barangay Development Program, yeah, po natin ito sa municipal, provincial, <clears throat> and then regional level. I was involved in this uh, process when I was brigade commander, and we were able to identify the different barang barangay requirements for development. And then we elevated that at meetings at the municipal level through our battalion commanders. And then we attended the provincial meetings where we consolidated the different uh, projects and infrastructure needed by the influence barangays. And when, when we have cleared that, the consolidation has been made at the regional level and brought to the national government through the attendance of the courts or the cabinet oversight uh, committee head. Um, and then I, I think I would surmise, ma'am, that uh, the 20 million per barangay project of the BDP is a, a uh, final manifestation of what was collaborated on by the Armed Forces of the Philippines and the local government heads so, the, the, so that we can uh, uh, bring these uh, projects into the different barangays as far as probably 50 kilometers from, from, us, from the government centers so that we can finally make the people feel that the government is there and the government is supporting uh, barangays even in Jida areas. And uh, this will also prevent in the end the re-influencing of the different formerly influenced barangays, ma'am, so that we can continue with the peace and development projects and uh, eradicate uh, finally the influence of the communist terrorist group, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, uh, Major General Sekitin. Um, uh, I, I really appreciate yung earnestness nyo, General, in what you have expressed to us. It's, uh, it is truly a, a whole-of-nation approach. Um, Maybe, but kung hindi nyo man alam general, maybe some of your colleagues know na uh, part of my thinking and even feeling about this uh, is that at least assignment of roles, may pagka 
sobrang throwback sa 1980s. Um, what you have uh, described in the whole of nation approach should properly be led by civilian authority. Pero syempre, di ba, may kasabihang nature abhors a vacuum. And syempre, kung sa may ilang mga area na kami sa civilian authority, kulang sa pag-assert, then uh, halos hindi ko na masisi pag kayo mga military officials will step in to fill that vacuum or to fill that gap. So ang siguro higit sa lahat ang nararamdaman ko ngayon, General, hearing yung whole of nation approach as you have described it, and feeling yung earnestness po ninyo, yung, uh, for lack of a better word, yung sinceridad nyo and the way you are expressing it. Siguro ang, ang resolution ko na lang po, General, ay dapat kaming mga sibilyang uh, otoridad ay talagang dapat mag-step up no, sa, sa pag-address talaga ng mga ugat uh, ng internal armed uh, conflict uh, para ma-resolve ito properly at ma-assist ma uh, din ang armed forces moving forward sa modernization program nyo at higit na pag-emphasize sa uh, external defense lalo na sa ngayon sa West Philippine Sea. Again, together with the things I've expressed earlier about peace processes and resolving the armed conflict, the, the insurgency challenge once and for all with less or least uh, loss of lives. Pero ng ngayon, sa inyo, General, Mr. Chair, maraming salamat. Uh, advanced congratulations. Mabuhay po kayo. And my snappy salute. Salamat, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Salamat po, Senator Risa. Senator Bato de la Rosa. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning, sir. Uh, yeah, General Sikitin, uh, for the record, anong present assignment mo kayo? Sir, I'm the Commander sir. of the Civil Relations Service in Campa de Aguinaldo, sir. Ah. Oh. Yes, sir. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, tatanong, itatanong ko lang dito kay General Sikitin. Although medyo malayo na ito ngayon from, from uh, tactical uh, na sa... Uh, Kung ka na, uh, civil relations, uh, community relations, uh, tatanong ko lang kung uh, ginagamit pa rin ba ng, ng uh, armed forces or particularly ng Philippine Army yung uh, concept of, of operations na ginagamit mo noon na walang, uh, hindi kayo nag-establish ng uh, detachments, wala kayong mga company headquarters, uh, batalyo headquarters lang meron kayo then uh, you move around the uh, area uh, batalyon maneuvers uh, ganun pa rin bang concept na ginagamit niyo although alam ko nagbabago nagbabari yung yung mga approaches depende sa demands of the AOR and the demands of the times pero matanong ko na sana kung yun pa rin ba ginagamit niyo uh, thank you very much for the question sir uh, magandang umaga po sir uh, at the time when I was battalion commander, sir, you were provincial commander of uh, Compostela Valley, now the Val de Oro, sir. And we were together in going up to the mountains of uh, Mount de Walwal. And you were together with us during the uh, final peace rally in uh, New Bataan, Compostela Valley province, sir. Uh, and you had a uh, very, very big help for us, sir especially with the Philippine National Police supporting our operations in the area, sir. Uh, with your question, sir, uh, when I was battalion commander and you were PD, sir, our deployment policy was not to establish company command posts, but instead deploy by squads the entire battalion in the influence municipality then of, uh, of uh, New Bataan, sir. And that has been proven effective because when we deploy at the same time, we can conduct checkpoints at the same time or or uh, gather together and form platoons and companies uh, immediately and conduct operations at any time, sir. Uh, as of now, there are from time to time established uh, small company command posts in other areas of the different brigades and battalions, sir. However, what remains is the consistent and constant deployment of uh, uh, community support program teams these are squads of the army deployed in the different uh, influence barangay, sir. And this has been proven effective because we don't normally just look for the enemy and uh, fight battles, but also immerse with the people, get to know them, 
and uh, get to know their problems and then solve problems uh, in most cases not through the barrel of the gun sir so i think that has been proven and uh, most important sir is uh, not to just uh, militarily solve the problem but uh, collaborate with the local leaders in the, the barangay municipal and the provincial level sir thank you uh, general sikitin uh, mr chairman natanong ko yan kay uh, General Sikitin, because uh, during the time when I was the provincial director of uh, Compostela Valley Province, now Dabo de Oro, uh, my, my province was uh, occupied by no less than two uh, infantry brigades of the Philippine Army and uh, six uh, infantry battalions plus one uh, special forces battalion. So you can just imagine yung isang probinsya lang ng Kumbal anim na batalyon uh, pito actually pito na batalyon ang uh, nag-occupy plus uh, uh, compose yan ang dalawang brigades uh, kasi nung the time uh, i must admit uh, itong si Manny Sikite na yung aking pinakapaboritong uh, batalyon commander dahil sa kanyang uh, napakagaling na uh, concept of operation na uh, ginawa doon sa Kumbal, particularly sa New Bataan Municipality, wherein uh, the locals uh, consider that as uh, the Malacanang of the NPA doon sa Mindanao, yung uh, New Bataan. And the, the, the military consider that really as uh, the center of gravity sa kalihukan ng uh, uh, NPA doon sa region. Uh, but uh, during his time, Mr. Chairman, I would like I would like really to commend uh, General Sikitin. Uh, na decimate niya yung uh, around the, from seven uh, seven uh, front committees covering the area of uh, Kumbal. Na decimate niya na decimate niya up to siguro wala isa o dalawang uh, existing guerrilla fronts lang. Dahil sa kanyang approach na uh, talagang combat maneuvers yung buong batalyon walang detachment walang company headquarters yung nagbo-move sa tactically around the area as one battalion at yung uh, isang concept na uh, inapply niya yung base squad na doon sa mga barangay nag-infiltrate ay napakagandang epekto po in fact uh, ngayon if you go back to that area uh, general sikitin makita mo talagang uh, kukunti na lang ang NPA ang NPA ay tumawid na doon sa bandang Bukidnon at or uh, bandang Dabo Oriental sa lugar ni ni Congressman Mayo pero wala na rin doon tahimik na rin doon sa Oriental so i, I, I would like to suggest uh, alam ko nagbabago yung concept ninyo pero for the leadership of the armed forces na sana uh, i-adapt nila yung uh, ginagawa ni Manny Sikitin ni Kernet ni General Sikitin noon yung ganong concept, napaka-efektibo talaga. Very effective. Very effective yung concept na ginagawa niya. And uh, ipabaya na niyo yung mga detachment-detachment dyan sa, kwan, sa, sa mga lugar niyan, sa PNP para mag-hold sa area. Yung mga checkpoint-checkpoint sa highway, ipabaya na niyo dyan sa kapulisan. You, you concentrate on the hinterlands at uh, to, to strike hard to the enemy. Uh, both militarily and the uh, Uh, socially para para talagang uh, patuloy na uh, matatamasa ng taong bayan yung uh, yung uh, presensya ng ating gobyerno sa kanilang barangay ayun lang Mr. Uh, uh, Chairman uh, with that I would like to strongly recommend for the endorsement of the appointment of uh, uh, General Sikitin and uh, General Almirol and the uh, sa lahat na andyan ngayon sa hall, uh, kasama na yung uh, aking kababayan na si Colonel Iyog na taga Digos, Dabo del Sur. Kung siya man yung taga Digos, aking kababayan, Colonel Iyog. And the rest, uh, for their uh, exemplary performance, I would like to uh, recommend for their, uh, uh, for, uh, their appointment to be uh, uh, confirmed by Mr. Chairman doon sa plenary. Maraming salamat Mr. Chairman and General Sekitin, uh, good luck sa iyo sa iyong bagong field of uh, assignment. Thank you. Yes sir. Thank you very yes, much sir. sir. Salamat po Sir Tor de la Rosa.
Any other member? Chairman. Senator Pimentel. Thank you. Uh, narinig ko kasi yung <coughs> sinabi ni uh, General Sikitin na uh, uh, this battle uh, cannot be won solely or merely through the barrel of the gun. So, meron akong question na hindi naman kailangan sagutin ngayon at hindi to address to the nominee but address to the institution, to the armed forces of the Philippines. Lalo na yung mga uh, na-deploy sa tinatawag ninyong Malacanang of the NPA movement, of the communist ideology at nakahalubilo ang mga tao doon at na-lessen ng influence. That is, the, that is what has been reported to us. Pwede bang... Uh, I report niyo sa mga legislators uh, ninyo sulatan niyo kami bigyan niyo kami ng report on uh, what makes this uh, movement which is supposed to be already a discredited uh, ideology still attractive to some of our countrymen para hindi tuloy-tuloy na Filipino versus Filipino ang nagpapatayan so uh, kung pwede po namin malaman from your point of view what you got from the ground, what attracts uh, some of our countrymen into joining uh, a supposed to be discredited ideology and uh, to the extent of taking arms against the government. So, yun po, feedback from the ground po yun. <clears throat> some of us may be able to find them uh, uh, practical, you know, uh, practical information. So, I have a feeling that... Uh, Justice uh, uh, is, is somehow, somehow involved, eh, the sense of justice. But I shall await the uh, communication from uh, not only our nominee uh, and the uh, leading officials of the armed forces, but from the institution itself. Yun lang po request po, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Okay. Noted po, uh, Senator Coco Pimentel. Um, Sir Teresa? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I'd um, like to seek the advice of the chair because I actually have questions for four more officers. Uh, though I wish to cooperate with the chair and be conscious also of the time. May I, chair, at least ask just my first question uh, of each of those four uh, officers or at least place on the record with them my questions and uh, they reply to whichever of those they, they, they can comment on, Mr. Chair. Okay, po. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so I have a question, a set of questions, both for uh, Commodore Joe Orbe and uh, Captain Ariel Halasan. Right, good, ma'am. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Magandang tanghali po kay Commodore Orbe at kay uh, Captain Halasan. Um, Captain Halasan, by the way, Mr. Chair, whom I hear is a good man and an excellent naval aviator. Um, my question, Mr. Chair, for uh, the two officers, um, the Philippines has nine occupied islands, islets, and shoals in the West Philippine Sea, which have no facilities yet for a credible defense posture in case of any attempt from foreign intruders. Of course, there are our Marines and sailors deployed in the area, but we could argue that their presence is, as of now, um, possibly a mere token of having uniformed personnel and not yet as a credible uh, defense force. Uh, to the good Commodore um, and the good Captain, uh, why do you think, sirs, that we have neglected to develop a credible or to develop credible defense facilities in that area despite decades of our actual occupancy. And maybe, Mr. Chair, just to add at this point my other questions in case the good officers would like to comment on them. Uh, one of the feasible ways to strengthen our foothold in the West Philippine Sea is to increase human traffic of Filipinos in the area. However, lack of support system and facilities for temporary shelter and resupply points for watercraft in transit prevent such activity. And uh, last question, Mr. Chair, for the good uh, officials. Um, 
there's an idea, sirs, that the ideal staging area of Navy warships is in the vicinity of Oyster Bay in Macarascas, Palawan. Uh, how long is the average steaming from Oyster Bay to, say, Pag-asa Island, which is the largest of the nine islands, islets, and shoals? Uh, uh, and the warship can continuously patrol the West Philippine Sea for about how many days or weeks, as the case may be, uh, after which the ship has to return to port for resupply uh, or refuel. I asked that last question, Mr. Chair, in relation to the Navy's doctrines of fleet in being and defense in depth, um, and also in relation to the defined responsibilities of the Navy uh, and Coast Guard there at. I apologize, Mr. Chair, and to the good officers for the so many questions. I'm just trying to present them in one go, given the time, and uh, I would appreciate any responses they care to make to the committee, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you may respond, Governor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Ma'am, uh, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Um, before I uh, answer the questions, as far as I can remember them, uh, I may <laughs> Sorry, not be sir. able to give you um, information that might have uh, national security implications. But as for the others, I understand, sir. Give a, a general general statements. Thank First you. is that um, the Navy is uh, continually developing our our uh, facilities in those nine occupied islands. But this is not for any offensive uh, purposes. This is just to protect our uh, personnel who are stationed there. Uh, I, I, for one, have been assigned uh, or have patrolled the West Philippine Sea way back in 2014 mm -hmm. and 2013. So they have mm -hmm. uh, basic needs. Uh, but right now, uh, as far as I know, uh, we've been continually developing it, equipping it with uh, harder, uh, sturdier structures and uh, most importantly, uh, solar power and uh, desalination plants for the living conditions, improved living conditions of our of our personnel. Um, uh, you have mentioned about Oyster Bay or Ulugan Bay. Yes. Uh, it's included in the Navy uh, strategic uh, basing plan. Mm -hmm. um, yes, ma'am. We have uh, we have uh, plans for that. We have uh, plans for that. Uh, the steaming time between it depends actually because uh, yes. uh different ships have different um different uh, capabilities uh, on the average if i remember right because that's i was assigned there seven years ago more six to seven years ago around uh, less than 72 hours i think will be safe a safe <laughs> for, for for that one mom um how how long are our ships uh, uh, capable to patrol. I, I'm the commander of the offshore combat force. Uh, we have frigates under that force, and uh, it's out in the open, uh, open source. They can continue uh, operations for at least 25 days, the endurance. Uh, I myself has experienced uh, out at sea with a full complement of my men aboard BRP, one the ships that I have commanded. Yes. Uh, I was out there for around 25 days. So, yeah, we were able to sustain that both in fuel uh, provisions and uh, billeting uh, capacity. Ma Thank, Thank you. you very much, Commodore. And uh, as uh, the AFP, particularly the Philippine Navy, proceeds with your modernization program, uh, I look forward with our committee and with the Senate to continue to support um that uh that development not just on those nine occupied islands islets and shoals in the west philippine sea but everywhere um of the philippine maritime domain so salamat sir um advanced congratulations mabuhay po kayo and my snappy salute thank you ma'am uh, your honor salamat po um uh, commodore ogre um we need to hear the response of captain harasan ma'am if he has something to add to what the Commodore uh, has said, Mr. Chair, I would appreciate hearing his comments. Ma'am, thank you for your answer. Uh, I think it's uh, already well explained by uh, Commodore Arbe. But uh, 
uh, Kalayan Island Group is part of our territory. It's part of Palawan, and it's not really a matter of neglect, but it's a, a matter of competing priorities and uh -huh. considering the geopolitics and U.S.-China strategic competition. I think uh, mm -hmm. it's about time to develop uh, Pagas Island, not only in terms of defense, but also uh, other development. So I think uh, uh, that's all. And uh, uh, the 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 uh, Lugan Bay is uh, uh, one of our strategic basing, and mm -hmm. I think the Navy and the Armed Forces is uh, developing that area. Thank you, ma'am, and uh, that's all. Thank you. Um... Captain Halasan, I'm glad to hear from you uh, because of the good things I ever heard about you as an officer and a gentleman. And thank you for um, uh, enlightening the committee, especially about the competing priorities. I hope that moving forward, I patuloy namin sa Senado pwede kayong suportahan uh, sa pag-assert ng prioridad din ng pag-empower sa Philippine Navy to uphold our national interests uh, in our oceans. At salamat din sa observation nyo sa geopolitics, sa uh, pagitan ng China, ng uh, Estados Unidos, at iba pa tayo naman, especially as we approach once again commemorating our Independence Day. We are all committed, kaming mga civilian, kayong mga militar, to always uphold the independence we have won from any former colonial master and always to resist uh, with every political and diplomatic means that we have at our disposal, backed up with our credible defense posture, any other imperial ambitions by a regional power or a rising global power, just on the basis of the mutual respect that should obtain between our two countries. So marami salamat po, um, Captain Halasan, advanced congratulations, mabuhay po kayo, and my snappy salute as well, sir. Salamat po, Sen. Teresa. Thank you, Commodore. Thank you, Captain. Okay. Meron po po, ma'am? Yes, sir. For two more uh, officials, just one question each, if I may, Mr. Chairman. Um, yes, ma'am. Kanina po. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Second to the last po, kay Captain Jonathan Salvilia, Mr. Chairman. Great, Papa. Salamat, Mr. Chairman, at uh, magandang tanghali po, Captain Salvilia. Good noon, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Um, I know that this is a sensitive topic, but I need to ask this question, uh, also as the chair of the Senate Committee on Women. Uh, it says here that there is a current investigation by the Philippine Navy Committee on Decorum and Investigation pursuant to a complaint for sexual harassment filed by a certain SN2 Jaina or Jaina C. Simpas. It was likewise gathered that um, the good uh, captain was previously reprimanded under Article of War 105 on 11th April 2019, uh, also for sexual harassment. Captain, what can you say about this investigation and what is its current status, Mr. Chairman? Um, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Your Honor, uh, currently I'm under investigation under the uh, Code of the Philippine Navy, ma'am, and uh, I cannot uh, say the details of the case, ma'am, not to, in order not to preempt the current investigation, ma'am. I see. Well, thank you for uh, your response, um, Captain Salvilia. Um, I hope that um, the investigation will uh, be concluded with the findings and recommendations uh, that will bring justice uh, both to you and, of course, speaking as her fellow woman um, to the complainant. Thank you for um, uh, responding uh, to my question, Captain Salviria. Salamat po, Mr. Chairman. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Salamat po.
um, Captain Sevilla. Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Lastly, po, one question for Colonel Roselle Salvosa. Go ahead, ma'am. Salamat, Mr. Chair. Um, for my one and only question for Colonel Salvosa at magandang tanghali po sa inyo, ma'am. Magandang tanghali po, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. I just like to commend you for your unwavering service to our country. Despite you being a solo mom for 18 years, magkapareho po tayong solo parents, ma'am. It says here that you were one of the first five female aviation cadets of the Philippine Air Force Flying School in 1993 to graduate as regular officers in 1995, and the first and only female international course participant out of 44 international participants in the Malaysian Armed Forces Defense College's Master of Arts in Defense Studies degree. You are known, ma'am, in the Philippine Air Force and the Armed Forces as a strong advocate of gender and development. Magkasama din po tayo dyan, ma'am. And you are noted as a subject matter expert on gender, peace, and security and women, peace, and security, and also as an anti-violence against women and children advocate and counselor. As you may know, uh, ma'am, I am your fellow strong advocate for women's rights. Uh, my one question to you, ma'am, is... Could you please share with our committee your advocacy and your plans to further your noble cause, Mr. Chairman? Thank you very much, Your Honor, um, Madam um, Andevairosman. Um, I am Colonel Roselle Baldivino Salvoza, a member of the Philippine Air Force Flying School Class 1995. Actually, I am a product of an experiment of the government and the armed forces of the Philippines. We came to a point that um, we are addressing already the issue of women being equal partners in nation building, and that was the year 1993. I had to resign my commission ship as a registered nurse. I was already a second lieutenant when I entered the aviation cadet program of the Philippine Air Force Flying School. Could I have been accepted by the Philippine Military Academy? I could have graduated class of 1997. However, by uh, virtue of my commissionship as already a second lieutenant then, and I think I was um, applying for something that is I'm overqualified for, I opted to join the first batch of the Philippine Air Force Flying School Aviation Cadet Program when under um, Republic Act 7292, um, the women were already welcome to enter the armed forces, mm -hmm. Philippine National Police, and all other agencies in training. The reason why I um, claim to be a strong advocate of gender and development and gender peace and security is because of the experiences that I have undergone mm -hmm. when I entered an all-male dominated institution. I have no nothing against um, men, ma'am, because I was once married. Um, I am a solo parent for circumstances that I um, was not able to foresee. I am married to an ex-PM mayor. However, my experiences have made me stronger, have made me um, realize that there is so much that I can offer uh, if I will continue with my military service. In, for instance, mom, I have experiences all forms of harassment. And if I tell you all forms of harassment, physical, mm, sexual parts, and I was married, um, verbal, but then again, I chose to be not a victim. When I was flying on my first solo flight, oh, first three solo flight, mom, in our, the flying school, um, Major General Pareño uh, was one of my instructor pilots uh, in the Philippine Air Force. Um, there was one controller, male controller, who said that 
um, in the vernacular. So, hindi po natin siya pwedeng paliparin kasi malakas ang hangin. Babae pa naman. So, it was a time that babae pa naman, hindi siya pwedeng lumipad dahil babae pa naman. Uh, we were only five then at that time, ma'am. So, I had to battle all the 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 discrimination that I'm a female and I will not be able to make it to fly at that time. Yes, indeed, the wind was gusting and I had to wait for it for I will I will be able to fly again. But then when I made it and I graduated from the flying school, the first task that I did was to climb up the control tower and meet the control tower himself. Sarge, babae po ako. Ako po si second lieutenant Rosel B. Salbosa. Nakalipad naman po ako. That was my first time, ma'am. When it comes Bravo, to my development, um, it started when I was a young lieutenant. Mm -hmm. I have experienced um, some sort of uh, indecent proposals from many other senior officers. In the vernacular again, ma'am, and no offense to all males in the plenary, napagsabihan ko na po ba ng anak Pwede ba kitang anakan? Oh my God. I was a young lieutenant then. I would take it as a joke, but then he's a senior officer. He was not he was not drunk at the time. So I accepted that if I enter into the military, I will not always be wearing heels. I will be wearing boots. I will not be wearing a skirt most of the time. I will be wearing um, my fatigue uniform, and I always have to prove my worth. So in these experiences and so many other experiences, I made it a point that gender and development, it should not be gender and development now, these days, Your Honor. It should be gender awareness development. Okay. Um, men are admittedly um, cannot be compared to women. That is my advocacy also. It is not about gender inequality or gender equality i have already made a thesis on that in a research paper on that it's about gender equal opportunities and in my gender discussions i have always men made mention that i will never compare to a female uh, to a male because um if i can do 50 push-ups the male would also do 100 push-ups and i am a weak link on that case but then if i would ask Sir, or Sarge, sa isang lalaking sundalo, kailan ka po huling nagkaroon? Alam mo po ba yung pain <laughs> sa menstruation every, na, every month? Na masakit ang puson mo at halos mamamatay ka parang zombie. Ilan na po ang naipanganak mo? At pwede ka po bang mag-breastfeeding? Yes. <laughs> I remember one time I was as already an instructor pilot, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. uh, on my uh, second month after my post delivery, I was kicking the pedals of my aircraft because I am an instructor pilot. Mm -hmm. But in my flight suit, uh, something was stuck in the side railings of the plane. It was a feeding battle, the feeding battle <laughs> of my daughter. So I was feeding at the time and um, all, I was also breastfeeding after every flight. I could feel that my uh, daughter needed to be fed because my breasts were so full. But that 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 did that, that stop from there. I am a strong advocate of also solo parenting, Your Honor. Because solo parents are blessed. Solo parenting is a blessing because not everybody is called for the calling. This year, I will mark my 19th year of being a solo parent to three intelligent, smart, and of course, beautiful children. Thank you to my genes and half of the genes of their father. Uh, Mina Venice, my eldest, is already turning 24. She's working. Um, my son, Khalil David, whom I named uh, as the precious, precious one, is turning 19 because it was during the time my second child that I had um, marital problems. It's too personal, but then again, my correlation is like this in the vernacular. Ang pag-aasawa po ay parang isang kutsara. Ayaw mong isinusubo ng iba yung kutsara ang ginagamit mo. Tama po. Or, 
ang pag-aasawa din po ay parang isang bubuyog. Yung asawa mo ay isang bubuyog. Gusto mo po ba na dumada po siya sa bawat bulaklak na makikita niya at babalik sa iyo? So, I took it positively because if I succumb to that, I will not be able to have a third child. My Victoria Pauline Antonia, who is a product of reconciliation for the second time, whom I thought would heal all wounds of um, relationship. But then again, it took me greater um, opportunity to prove that no man can fulfill my destiny to be a mother, a good mother to my children, fulfill my responsibilities, for it has been always my uh, dictum for the past 19 years of solo parenting, I have been known as a super mom. And I have always answered, I am a super mom because I have a super God. Uh, when it comes to gender and development, I have always been an advocate because I have always told them not to be victims. I have investigated harassment cases, sexual harassment cases. I have been sent to Colombia and Ivory Coast to teach other armed forces about gender, peace, and security. And until the time that um, I will be serving the Philippine Air Force and the Armed Forces of the Philippines, I will still carry on with my advocacy of gender and development, gender, peace, and security, and the anti-violence law against women and children, and also of solo parenting and the bill which is being passed on right now, which I am a very strong advocate of. That would be all, Your Honor. Thank you. Oh my God, that would be all, pero that was so much. Um, hindi ko madadagdagan at hindi ko susubukang dagdagan yung sinabi nyo, um, Colonel Roselle Salvosa. Uh, salamat. Ito, ko, ito po kasi, Colonel at uh, Mr. Chair, ang uh, huling pag-attend ko sa pagdinig ng uh, ating uh, uh, komisyon. And uh, I am so happy that uh, I was around to hear yung inyong uh, pananalita. Uh, Colonel Roselle Salvosa, from the bottom of my heart, as your fellow woman, uh, proud of you in the armed forces, and as your fellow solo parent, and nagpapasalamat sa suporta nyo sa ating solo parents sa uh, welfare bill. Uh, maraming maraming salamat. No? Ang daming beses kung natawa sa tuwa kanina at kinilabutan din sa mga binahagi nyo uh, sa amin. Advanced congratulations. Mabuhay po kayo talaga. Mabuhay ang mga kababaihan sa armed forces. And my snappiest salute and also if it is proper to embrace a fellow woman though she is in uniform, my warm embrace. Mabuhay po kayo at marami salamat Mr. Chairman. Maraming maraming salamat po Sir Teresa. Before we proceed, Mr. Chair, would you like to recognize sure. the physical presence of Senator Bongo? Sir. Um, Senator Mr. Grace, Chair. would you recognize Yes, ma'am. Yes. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I would also like to manifest my support and thanks to Colonel Salvosa. Um, admittedly, sometimes when we go through a committee on appointments hearing, uh, well, as women, we find it more interesting, of course, uh, to listen also to the points of view of other women like us. And I'd like to thank Colonel Salvosa for being very open and for sharing with us how she rose above adversity and for mentioning that aside from gender awareness, what we really strive for is gender uh, equal opportunity. Um, nakakabilib ang pinagdaanan mo dahil natupad mo ang iyong mga pangarap sa iyong karera pero bilang isang solo parent na palaki mo pa rin ang anak mo at hindi yan madali. At yung sinasabi mong pinagdadaanan ng mga kababaihan, um, buwan-buwan. Kung <laughs> alam mo na ibig ko sabihin, hindi talaga madali yan, lalong-lalo na sa isang karera na mas maraming mga kalalakihan. So sa pagkakataong ito, napakagandang oportunidad na magkaroon ng isang katulad mo sa isang mundo na na mamayagpag siyempre ang mga lalaki pero 
marami naman sa kanila ay sinusuportahan ang mga kababaihan. So, sa tulong mo, mas lalawak pa ang kaalaman ng military pagdating sa papano masusuportahan ang mga kababaihan at papano uh, mapapalakas pa ng mga kababaihan. Ang ating bansa uh, pagdating sa uh, pagprotekta natin sa ating kasarinlan. So, yun lamang po at maraming salamat at kagaya nga ng sinabi ni Senator Lisa, advance congratulations. Good job. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Salamat po, Senator Grace po. Um, so, since wala nang question up, uh, may riso pa tayong committee hearing. Um, just would like to, uh, one question lang po. Uh, kita naman namin, kayo highly qualified, no? So, ang competent niyo po. Uh, Saan kayo naka-assign po ngayon? Sir, currently I'm still attached and assigned sa Philippine Air Force Human Resource Management Center awaiting my um, final disposition and unit assignment. Um, so, what was that was your last assignment po? Uh, no, sir. I was assigned with the uh, Air Force a reserve command as the assistant command staff for operations. When was that, sir? That was on until January 1, 2020, sir. Last year? Yes, sir. So from January 1, 2020, and up to now, wala pa po kayong uh, parang assignment po? Yes, sir. I'm complying with the orders and the disposition of the Philippine Air Force since... Um, the eligibility and uh, position for lieutenant colonels and all six positions are decided by the Philippine Air Force um, Board of Senior Officers with the approval of the highest authority. Yeah. Okay. So, we wish you good luck, ma'am. Uh, I hope ma magigyan kayo ng magandang pwesto. And I congratulate you as a single mom. No? Kaya kami, uh, advocate din ako ng mga single parents po sa amin. Eh. Although hindi ako, pero... Yung mother ko kasi, uh, we were raised, uh, numata yung father ko nung maaga. So, tatlo rin kaming ni-raise Mas mahirap daw talaga mawala ng ina kaya sa ama. So, yun lang. Kaya, congratulations po, advance. Thank so, you very much, sir. Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, Senator Joel po. Yes, Mr. Chairman. This is just a short manifestation of support to our uh, nominee. I would just like to spread into the records that I'm joining my colleagues and the members of... Uh, this uh, commission in uh, confirming our uh, uh, nominee at uh, saludo po kami sa inyo. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Joel. Any other member? There being no other member who wish to question our appointees. Uh, Majority Leader. Mr. Chairman, uh, we have discussed the merits of the 28 officers before us. I now move that the committee recommends to the plenary for the commission to confirm the 25 ad interim appointments and to give its consent to three nominations of senior officers in the armed forces of the Philippines. I so move, Mr. Chair. Is there an objection? The motion. Okay. We, duly seconded and no objection. The motion is hereby approved. Mr. Mr. Chairman. We will... Uh, go ahead, um, Majority Leader. Yes, uh, may I request for a suspension, Mr. Chair? Okay, our uh, meeting is suspended.
Resume na tayo, resume. Ay, sorry. Uh, we will now proceed. Sorry, sorry. We will now proceed with the continuation of the deliberation on the ad interim appointment of Brigadier General Lowell Tan. Uh, General Tan, you may now take the seat in front. Are there any other uh, questions? Are there any inquiries from our members? Uh, there being none, okay. Majority Leader. Mr. Chairman, one minute, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Okay, one minute suspension. Mr. Chairman, it seems that uh, nobody among the members would like to raise any more questions for our nominee today, uh, General Noel Tan. Just and one question, uh, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Mr. Oh. Chair. Okay. Sorry, uh, Chair recognizes uh, Senator Bong Revilla. Yes, uh, General Tan, were you able to answer the allegations of... Uh, Congresswoman uh, Lucy Torres, nasagot nyo ba ng maayos yung allegation niya sa, sa inyo? Just for the record? Oh, good morning, sir. Y yes, sir. Oh, oh, sir. Nakausap na ba kayo ni uh, Congresswoman Lucy Torres? Um, not yet, sir. Not yet? Yes, Just to put it on record, ano po ba yung sagot nyo sa allegation niya? Uh, the allegation that I uh, was involved in a plot to assassinate her, sir. So is it true or not? It is not true, sir. It's not true. Okay. <laughs> That's all, General. Thank you. Ako naman may question, Mr. Chairman. Okay, um, Senator Coco. Yes, uh, to uh, to the General. Uh, uh, I th I think you you uh, you informed the committee that you have been cleared by your uh, investigators in the armed forces about the allegations of uh, corruption by a certain yes, retired sir. general. Tama po ba yon? Yes, sir. Cleared na yon. So tapos na yung usapan na yon. Yes, sir. Tapos na. It's clear, Pero, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, cleared. Uh, what body cleared you? The Office of the Ethical Standard and Public Accountability of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. Office of the Ethical Standard, Public Accountability. So how about this allegation of Congressman Torres? Anybody, any person or collegial body which cleared you within the Armed Forces organization? Uh, there's no such complaint on the matters of the Armed Forces. Okay, so uh, as far as you know, nag, dito, dito mo lang na-encounter yung uh, allegation at reklamo? Dito na sa CA level na? Yes, sir. Okay, so... And then, so we, we just have your... So, your uh, your answer to the opposition against you by uh, an incumbent uh, member of Congress is that it is not true. Ganun, yun lang, ganun lang. Yes, sir. Okay, so... Did you, did you did you have a high profile uh, involvement in uh, some political activities in 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 that district in uh, so much, in late in late were you were you were you ever assigned there in that area I was assigned there sir, but uh, in 2016 2019 yun nga yun nga so I've not been so. high profile involvement with any political person sir and uh, 
in your honest assessment, you were never <clears throat> involved in partisan politics in that uh, district, in that area, during during the time that you were assigned there? Never, sir. So, wala kang kilos na pwedeng, pwedeng masabing kumakampi ka sa isang politiko doon no, habang nandun ka sa lugar na yon? Oh, wala po, sir. Wala. Oh, kasi, well, um, kasi mabigat po kasi yung allegation, ha? Mab ma ma mabigat po yun. It's not Actually, it's beyond uh, engaging in partisan uh, political activity, uh, Mr. Chairman. So, at any rate, so we, the nominee is right in front of us and he's uh, denying categorically and in person uh, the said allegations. So, thank you for that, uh, General. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> One last question, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Coco. Um, Senator Bongrevilla, po. Yes, uh, Bali is just an advice, no? Uh, General Tan, siguro, uh, for, for the peace of mind of, of Congresswoman Lucy Torres, it's maganda siguro kung uh, reach, mag-reach out ka rin sa kanya and just to inform her na walang katotohanan yung lahat ng mga allegations about, about her, no? Yung sayo. Is that possible, General? Your, your response, General Tan. Yes, sir. It's possible, sir. Can you do it? Yes, sir. Pangawakan namin yan, ha, General? Yes, sir. Sige, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, po, Senator Revilla. So, General, can we have your assurance na once, I hope you get confirmed that you will reach out to Congressman Ducey personally. Thank you very much, po. Any other member? Oh, there being one, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, just two points, Mr. Chairman. I was listening to the question of Senator Coco Pimentel and uh, in their uh, question and answer with General Tan, ang dumalabas doon na according to General Tan, wala naman siyang naririnig na gantong reklamo from Congresswoman Lucy and only at the level ng commission appointment hearing, niya narinig. Uh, the records will bear me out, Mr. Chairman. But also, in the previous hearing, it was pointed out that a certain bishop tried to talk to Congresswoman Lucy at the request of General Lowell Tan. Now, on that note lang, I'd like to find out kung... Uh, because if that is true that General Tan requested the bishop, then he, he knew something was, you know, he knew about the allegations of Congressman Puma Lucy even before appearing before us uh, as a commission. May he get the reply of General Tan, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir, indeed, sir. Uh, through the help of the Bishop Palma of Cebu, sir. Uh, so, so you had knowledge of the accusation by Congresswoman Lucy Torres against you even before you appeared before the Commission uh, General, correct? No? That's why you, you, uh, you requested the help of, bishop, of that bishop. I only heard it when, during my first appearance uh, in the CA. That's why some of my friends asked the intercession of the Bishop of Bishop Palma, sir. But uh, I think the statement of uh, Congresswoman Lucy uh, was given during the first hearing. Nasabi niya, meron pa nga daw Bishop lumapit sa kanya. And wala pa tayong hearing noon. Uh, Naguguluhan na ako, General. No? Naguguluhan na sa timetable. Hindi pa tayo nag-hearing noon. Allegedly, that the bishop uh, uh, intervention upon your request already happened. So, um, I don't know. I first appeared here, sir. I was told that there is such thing, sir. But I was not, uh, I was deferred, sir, during the first uh, hearing, sir. Uh, according to uh, according to General Tan, 
yung first time yung narinig yung may ganong allegation against him. Coming from uh, uh, Kong Lucy. So, after nun po, uh, after nung, nung uh, first uh, hearing natin, way back, um, May 19 yata po yun. So, ay, before May 19, sorry. So, yun po, yun lang yung nangalaman lang niya. So, parang, uh, if I'm not mistaken, humanap kayo ng mga Uh, pwede ko mausap kay Kong Lucy para explain your side. Pero never personally po. Yes. Okay. Uh, you know. Uh, okay, Mr. Chairman, in first hearing natin, May 19, tama ba? And then, uh, May 26, and then today, June 2. And the first time that uh, Kong Lucy um, uh, uh, spoke before the commission was that sinabi niya mayroong pangadang bishop lumapit sa kanya. And she was referring to prior to May 19. So, ibig sabihin, wala pa tayong hearing. What, what, hindi pa natin tinatawag si General Dan. May bishop nang lumapit sa kanya to, sure. to, at the request of uh, General Dan. Ngayon yeah. naman, si General Dan confirms that uh, mayroong ang bishop. Yung date lang ang pinag-uusapan. But Lucy says it was before 19. Uh, alam ko, uh, if I'm not mistaken po again, before tayo invite sa committee si Kong Lucy, doon yata may kumausap sa kanya na bishop po. Okay. Uh, okay, Mr. Chair. Uh, May, mahirap lang paniwalaan yung yung pecha no yung yung uh, timetable na sinasabi ni General Tanan but that beside the matter one last question kay General Tan so yung uh, accusation sa kanya against uh, uh, against him by General Dagoy about conversion of uh, fuel into cash eh, wala namang sumuporta dun sa accusation ni General Dagoy. This is a theoretical question, if you may say, Mr. Chairman. General Tan, yung mga C2C, convert to cash na mga fuel, nangyayari ba yun? Not, not, not that ginawa mo ba? Wala yun. That's not the question. Pero nangyayari ba yun sa mga batalyon, sa mga brigade, sa mga kumpanya? Can you can tell us? Uh, I cannot say that it's happening. I cannot say it's not happening. Sir. So I have no personal knowledge on that one, sir. It's hard to prove, sir. Big Seven, mas alam pa ng sargento kesa isa yung... Ah, hindi naman po to, sir. You don't have to answer. You don't have to answer. Ah... <laughs> Ah, uh, okay, Mr. Chairman. Dahil pa bang ibang gusto magtanong? Um, any member po ho? Uh, may question kay Gerald Tan? Wala na. Okay, wala na po. Majority. Mr. Chairman, on the last day of our uh, commission on appointments hearing before Congress adjourned CND, I move that the committee recommends to the plenary for the commission to confirm the ad interim appointment of Brigadier General Lowell R. Tan. Mm -hmm. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Second. Okay. There's a motion, duly seconded, to recommend to the plenary for the commission to confirm the ad interim appointment of Brigadier General Lowell Tan. Okay. Any objection? Okay. None? Motion to be approved. Majority leader. Thank you. Objection. Here, here, meetings here by adjourn. Na approve na ba yung Lowell Tan? Na approve na. Na approve na. Miguel Mario eh.
The first meeting of the Committee on Tourism and Economic Development of the Commission Appointments for the second regular session, 18th Congress, is hereby called to order. The Secretary of the Commission is directed to call the roll. Thank you very much. The, the mentioned chairperson for this Committee on Tourism and Economic Development, Honorable Mercedes DDC Cagas. Presiding officer for this hearing is the Honorable Senator Ralph Recto. The other officers and members of this committee are Alvarez Jr. Present. Arbison. Tepeco Jr. Present. De La Rosa. Ferrer de Fourth, Go, Ontiveros, Present, Laxon, Noel, Pimentel the Third, Fo, Present, Ramirez Sato, Revilla Jr. Present. Villar. Present. Dina Kubobot. Subiri. Present. Som Present. Present. Samora. Present. Almario. Present. Villanueva. Present. Pancho. Present. Drilon. Present. Advincula. Present. Heron. Present, present. Present to present. And we refer to the attendance. With three members present in person and 19 members present online, including the chair, with a total of 22 members present, the existence of a quorum is hereby declared. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes, may Senator I, Yes. May I inquire if I'm present? <laughs> yes, you are. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, today, the Committee on Tourism and Economic Development will deliberate on the nomination of Mr. Carl Kendrick Chu Chua as Secretary of National Economic and Development Authority. Uh, Secretary Hector A. Villacorta kindly report on the status of the jurisdictional requirements and other relevant information on the nomination of the nominee in compliance with the new rules of the Commission and the new rules of the Standing Committee. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, Your Honors, Mr. Carl Kendrick Chua has complied with the submission of the necessary documentary requirements pursuant to Chapter 6, Section 24 of the new rules of the Commission. His nomination was received on April 21, 2021, and was referred on the same day by the Commission Chairperson, Senate President Vicente C. Soto III, to the Committee on Tourism and Economic Development, pursuant to Chapter 5, Section 16 of the New Rules of the Commission. His nomination was also published on April 22, 2021, into newspapers of general circulation, the Manila Times and the Manila Standard, pursuant to Article 2, Section 3 of the New Rules of the CA Standing Committees. The Commission Secretariat did not receive any opposition against the nominee. That is all, Mr. Chairman, Your Honors. Thank you. Uh, Secretary Villacorta, please administer the oath to the nominee. Can you take the seat in front? And you raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings? So help you God, I do. Mr. Chairman, he is now under oath. 
Thank you, Mr. Chua. You may now deliver your in introductory statement. Good afternoon, Honorable Senate President Soto, Honorable Congressman Zamora, Chairperson, Honorable Congressman Cagas, Presiding Chair, Honorable Senator Recto, and all Honorable Members of the Commission on Appointment. I am honored this day to appear before the distinguished members of the Commission on Appointment for the opportunity to humbly subject myself to the process of confirmation as of my ad interim appointment as NEDA Secretary. My appointment as Acting Secretary and then as ad interim Secretary of Socio-Economic Planning comes at a very difficult time in our history. I am very much aware of the scale of this unprecedented challenge. I believe there are others with more years of experience and wisdom to help steer our country's recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. Nonetheless, I assure you that as I have done in the past and throughout my tenure as Acting Secretary, I will offer my best effort and to contribute effective solutions to the challenges that we are all facing as a nation and to consult frequently with various stakeholders. I have been a development economist by profession for the past 18 years, and I have accepted this invitation to serve my country in government, first as undersecretary in the Department of Finance, where I led the technical team on the tax reform and other reforms in the 10-point socioeconomic agenda of the Duterte administration, and now as the NEDA ad interim secretary. My priority is to help the country recover from this pandemic through our recovery programs, the infrastructure program, and the national ID. In this last year, I also aim to improve the NEDA organization so that we can give the next administration a better foundation for sound socioeconomic planning with stronger focus on responsive infrastructure, innovation, regional equity, and sustainable development. I offer my experience and track record, my passion for development, and my personal dream of seeing my five-year-old son and his generation have a better future as motivation for working hard in this job in this crucial time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carl, for your statement. The nominee is now ready to respond to any comment or question from the members of this committee. Uh, does anyone want yes, to vote? Uh, Mr. Chairman, Senator Zubiri. Uh, yeah, Senator Zubiri, uh, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, on the onset, I would just like to say and give my full support to the nomination of the ad interim appointment of Secretary Carl. Secretary Carl is the kind of leader that we need. He's young. He's well-educated. He is, uh, has a vast experience prior to public service with World Bank and IMF. And I just found out today by reading his papers that as part of his mission, when he was with, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the World Bank or was it uh, ADB, he had immersed himself in Marawi City and Tawi-Tawi. And because of his immersions, he had contracted tuberculosis for six months being exposed to the elements in these areas. I didn't know that. I'm pleasantly surprised when I read this uh, background. He's a product of savior. Uh, I believe he's a um, uh, top of his class. At the same time, uh, Mr. President, he has endured, and I think I want to put this on record. The gentleman has endured a barrage of questions and sometimes harassment from members of the Senate, myself included, together with Senator Villar, the minority floor leader, and other members of the Senate during budget deliberations as undersecretary of the Department of Finance. We've asked him all sorts of questions from the field health problem to issues of hospitalization, to issues of livelihood, uh, to issues of development and uh, even infrastructure programs. And he has satisfactorily, satisfactorily answered them all, Mr. Chairman. 
without getting picon. He's one of the few resource persons that we have that is so amiable. And um, and I rarely see him uh, raise his voice or get angry with the line of questionings that sometimes we senators uh, throw at him. And uh, out of sheer frustration, uh, he becomes the punching bag of uh, many of the senators, including myself. And sometimes I apologize to him for that. But he's the kind of leader that we have so much. So I even, during the height of the field health fiasco, publicly I said, someone like Carl Chua would be perfect to head the field health because he's a straight shooter. He's straight and honest. At the same time, a numbers expert. And he will look at the... Uh, uh, the numbers of the agency and be able to help it uh, get out of its present uh, rut. But I'm happy that instead of being appointed to the field health, Mr. President and uh, Mr. Chairman, he was appointed to the NEDA, which I think fits him like a glove. So, Mr. President, I fully support the nomination of this distinguished gentleman. I think he should be really made a secretary. I've said this even before when he was undersecretary of the Department of Finance, that one day this, uh, this gentleman will become a good secretary um, of the department. He became very close to us, Mr. President, because of several bills like uh, the train law and create. And as a matter of fact, he became the subject of dreams of one of our colleagues. Pero hindi ko nababanggitin kung sino po yung nananaginip na sa kanya. Dahil araw-araw po nasa Senado siya at kaming kausap. But uh, because of that, Mr. President, I move to, to support the nomination of his ad interim appointment. This is a well-deserved appointment, and I wish we have more cabinet secretaries like him. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the time. Thank you, Senator Sabiri. At this juncture, I'd like to recognize first uh, Senator Bongo, then Senator Villar. Uh, please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to extend my... Uh will support uh, for the nomination of uh, uh, Secretary Carl uh, Kedrick Chu as uh, Secretary of the National Economic and uh, Development Authority. Secretary Chu began his career as a system analyst in the private sector and later be became a lecturer at his uh, alma mater, Teneo de Manila University. He also served as a consultant for several local and development partner-funded research projects in the areas of economic and uh, fiscal policy, particularly the United States Agency for International Development, USAID. His career began to blossom when he joined the World Bank Group, occupying significant positions, then later became the World Bank Senior Economist for the Philippines. Secretary uh, Carl joined the government service in 2016 as Undersecretary for the Strategy, Economics and Results Group. Department of Finance, he served as a strategic advisor to Secretary Carlos Dominguez and President Duterte's uh, cabinet economic cluster. As DOF undersecretary, he was credited for leading the passage of the comprehensive uh, tax reform uh, program. Mr. Chair, Secretary Carl Chua has the capability to take on new challenges assigned to him. I'm very confident that he will be able to carry out his mandated uh, duties and responsibilities. As we are tested in these trying times, I believe that this post should be headed by a highly competent and capable figure to rebuild the country's economy. With uh, Secretary Carl as our chief economic architect, we will definitely be able to steer the country forward and revive our economy. Given the valuable uh, experience he has gained throughout the years as an economist, he is without a doubt more than qualified for his post of uh, Secretary of uh, NEDA. And in fact, uh, after his uh, uh, term expired as uh, acting uh, NEDA, he even uh, approached me uh, telling me, uh, sabi niya, kung, kung may mahanap ko kayong mas uh, tingin ninyong mas uh, magaling, uh, uh, okay lang naman daw sa kanya na hindi siya ang, uh, Point. I'm, I'm sure pagod na pagod na rin ito si Secretary uh, Carl. Nakikita niyo sa buhok niya uh, at uh, haras pero still uh, tinanggap niya pa rin yung uh, uh, challenge. Uh, maraming salamat at uh, for the last uh, ano na lang po, uh, 
13 months of uh, sa administration ni Presidente. Salamat sa iyong uh, tulong. Alam kong haras ka rin kay Secretary Dominguez. So, marami nag-aharas sa iyo. Totoo po yun. So, salamat sa iyong serbisyo sa ating uh, uh, bayan. Huwag uh, mong pabayaan ang ating mga kababayan, lalong-lalo na yung mga mali. Salamat again, Secretary Carl. You have my full trust and confidence. Thank you for your hard work, uh, dedication, and service to the Filipino people. Buhay kayo. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Bongo. Uh, with the permission of our colleagues, we will have Senator Villar, then uh, Congressman Ferrer, Mr. then Chair, Senator Jackson. Please proceed, Senator Chairman, Villar. Please, uh, may I may be uh, also included in the list, Mr. Yes. Chairman? Yes. After Senator Laxon, then we will have Senator Joel Villanueva. Uh, please, Mr. Uh, Chair, also, also, also Senator uh, Villar. Yes, yeah, Senator Grace Poe, thereafter, <laughs> and <laughs> Senator Villar. Senator Villa. Okay. Okay. Uh, please proceed, Senator Villa. Okay. Yeah, I will recognize the others at the appropriate time. Please proceed, Senator Villa. I support the confirmation of Mr. Carl Kendrick Chua, okay, as Secretary of NEDA. He has help, helped us a lot as a resource person, especially of yours truly, in the many legislation we pass in the Senate. We appreciate that very much. Thank you. Secretary Carl, and thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Villar. Uh, Congressman Ferrer. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I would just like to manifest uh, our support you know, to the confirmation of our good Secretary, Carl Chua. Actually, hindi tatanong ni Mr. Secretary po, during the last Congress, naging fine niya kami ng ilang Congressman kasi nung um, Yusek pa lang kayo ng DOF, no? Uh, Kitang-kita namin yung dedication nyo, yung uh, efforts nyo, sagutin lahat. Kung sa, sa senators, na 24, sa Congress, almost 300 ho kami makukulit doon. No? Never kayo napik on. And um, in terms of qualification, you're very, quali you're very qualified. In competency, walang question. Sana nga, sabi nga ako ni Senator Sibiri, sana nga maraya pong maging tulad ni uh, Secretary Chua sa ibang mga departments. No? Uh, I know, uh, this is a very challenging time no? para sa ating bansa. Extraordinary po ang nangyayari po sa atin and we, we need an extraordinary person like you to lead the NEDA. And uh, congratulations po. That's Thank you. Chair. Thank you, Congressman Ferrer. Uh, to my idol, happy birthday, Senator Ping Lakson, the birthday boy, is recognized. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Chairman Lodi. <laughs> well, uh, there's no doubt in my mind that the nominee is eminently qualified and fit for the position which this uh, body uh, is uh, deliberating on uh, today. You know. Uh, that said, my questions will be limited to my continuing education and also for the information of the members of this committee. No, so with the total national debt of 10.77 trillion as of March, end of March, no, 2021, uh, from 9 trillion as of December 2020, 3.44 million jobless Filipinos, revenue shortfall that is 2. 84 trillion you know, uh, that already includes non-revenue or non-tax uh, revenue such as collections, dividends, and so forth and so on. Uh, before the target was adjusted twice, and you would know this, you know, one in May of 2020, the second one in July of 2020, as set by the DBCC as of December 2019, because you know, in 2019, 2.4 trillion, 2.433 trillion target but after the adjustment so PIR and customs bureau of customs are claiming that they exceeded the target even but if we base the collection revenue collections from of, of both uh, customs uh, the customs bureau and the BIR actually short sila ng collection all right so i only have two questions you know very briefly what is the outlook of the country's uh, economy under two possible scenarios post-pandemic and still with the pandemic. And as a follow-up question, aside from what are already in place, what other courses of action 
are being studied and considered by the economic team, the economic managers, to cope with the lingering health protocols, including occasional lockdowns. Para lang sa education namin mga miyembro. Thank you, Carl. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair and Senator Laxon. Um, if I may share four key points. No? Uh, first of all, as an economist, I observed that prior to COVID-19, we entered 2020 with one of the strongest economic foundations. We achieved the lowest ever poverty rate, unemployment rate, and underemployment rate. And because of the reforms that the Congress has uh, approved, we were able to also improve significantly our fiscal position. Uh, with your honors uh, sponsorship and support, we have the national ID. And I'm happy to report that as of uh, last month, no, May, uh, 35 million were already registered to step one, 10 million registered to step two, which is the biometrics. That is my first point. My second point, Mr. Chair, is uh, the economic performance we are seeing now is not because our productive assets were destroyed. The infrastructure is there. The human resources are there. The problem uh, I see, Mr. Chair, uh, Senator, is we were too afraid and risk averse, so we shut down the entire economy last year. Now we are learning. And my third point is, uh, you know, the only way to move uh, forward, in my uh, humble opinion, is number one, we manage the risk. Uh, and we have learned to do that. Instead of imposing ECQ, we impose an, I will say, ECQ star. Uh, we allow workers to go to work. Uh, we allow minimum uh, gatherings. We allow the transportation to function and so on. And we, uh, and we focus our quarantine on the highest risk areas. And my fourth point, Mr. Chair, is unlike last year, we have the vaccination program. 5 million already uh, doses administered, 27 million doses coming this month and next month. So I think uh, to answer your question, Mr. Chair, uh, we are starting to see uh, the recovery. And I have no doubt that if we do three things, number one, do not uh, be too risk averse. Number two, implement the recovery program. And number three, accelerate vaccination. It is possible to achieve a 6% growth and even higher next year. Now, um, my concern lang, Mr. Chair, is uh, there are some actions that uh, we are doing now that have future long-term effect, which we should correct soon, as soon as possible. Uh, for one is, uh, uh, you know, schooling that we have uh, not restarted face-to-face is going to have long-term effect on learning and productivity. So I think we are still early. Uh, we can do corrective action, but at the same time manage the health crisis. Uh, so that we minimize the long-term effect or scaling. So uh, in summary, I think uh, with COVID in the next two or three years, we can uh, continue to see strong uh, positive growth. Uh, but to be sustainable and achieve our, you know, our 2040 ambition, natin, uh, we really have to uh, do much more to recover lost grounds and to restore the productivity of the people. Thank you very much. Bob. Thank you. I understand that this is a continuing tug of war between health officials and the economic team. Ganyan na nangyayari. Maski hindi ko nakikita yung nangyayari sa cabinet meeting, I could all, uh, only imagine kung paano yung bakbakan dyan. No? Family activities. How much could it contribute to the economy? Uh, well, I heard before that you got the approval of the president already to let go and allow family activities because when children go out, they go out with their parents, mm -hmm. and it's the parents who spend for the children and for themselves. Mm -hmm. And that could contribute greatly to the economy. How much could it uh, do for the economy? Uh, well, Mr. Chair, uh, to premise it, no, let me just say that uh, when I make a recommendation to the president or ITF, I only look at the data. And the data is changing. That is why my recommendation changes also. Uh, the second one is uh, in the ITF, we do debate a lot. Uh, but uh, sometimes uh, when there is a deadlock, uh, we have to compromise. If there is no compromise, we defer to the president. Having said that, uh, you know, our median age, uh, Mr. Chair, Senator Lawson, is 24 years old. And 40% are 18 and below. So if you keep them at home for one year, the families do not go out. And based on our computation in net, 50% of non-essential spending is driven by family. And that is why the economy is as you see it performed. Uh, my recommendation, uh, Mr. Chair, is to, uh, going forward, manage the risk. 
uh, once more and more people are vaccinated, this is an opportunity for the children to go back to school uh, slowly. No? We will pilot it slowly. The families can have activities together. Uh, they don't have to be in the mall. They can have a picnic in the open space. Okay lang yan eh. Because of the, you know, there's also effect on children. And I look at my own family and my son. So I would like to propose that. And I think there is an opening because uh, we are coming down from a spike in this NCR plus area. And we are ramping up our vaccination. As you know, Mr. Chair, Senator Laxon, we have proposed a new uh, strategy for vaccination. Vaccinate all workers in A4. Uh, but giving priority pa rin to senior comorbid and health if they show up but we cannot wait kasi for everyone to show up eh. uh 20 less than 20 percent of seniors but if they see their children uh, sorry if they see their older children and uh their uh, uh and grandchildren uh, get vaccinated maybe the grandparents will follow so yan po yung aming proposal to allow the families uh, to have some uh, normal life as soon as possible uh, while managing the risk Thank you, Secretary Card. 50%, that's a lot. Huh? And uh, based on what I read, the president initially approved but withdrew the, the approval to allow families to go out. What happened? Uh, well, uh, if I may explain the background. No? As we've already searched. Huh? Yes, Paul. Uh, okay. Well, uh, if I may explain the background, uh, starting September, di ba galing po tayo sa isang spike sa August, we went back to ECQ, MECQ rather. I was looking at the data, August, September, October, pababa yung case. So that's why we proposed a partial opening. Tapos sa uh, Christmas season, we also did not see a spike. So that is why we recommended. In fact, the cabinet deliberated and uh, as announced by a spokesperson, uh, we have lowered the age group. And we have also allowed the pilot opening of school face-to-face. -face. Unfortunately, at that time, kasi, uh, the UK variant and then the Indian variant surfaced. And uh, that is why, uh, based on the prevailing data, uh, there was a, a, a change in position, which I support, uh, actually. And uh, in hindsight, it was the right decision. Because for the things of March, you see the spike uh, more, uh, uh, much higher. Now we are going back, so we are making that recommendation again. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any chance that the president would uh, reconsider and approve it this time? Uh, I'm, I, of course, I cannot read uh, his uh, personal uh, mind and decision, but uh, he has been very much listening to the members of cabinet and ITF. Maybe one advice that I would give you is be less kind <laughs> when you debate with the with the other uh, side of the aisle, you know, your health officials, be less kind. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Thank you, Secretary Khan. Thank you, Senator Lakson. At this juncture, the chair would like to recognize uh, Senator Poth, then Senator Revilla. Boss. Uh, Boss. Uh, and Senator Joel, <laughs> yes. I'm supposed to be next, oh, sorry. Ah, yes, I'm sorry. Senator Joel, then Senator Poth, then Senator Revilla. Uh, Senator Risa, and maybe a member of the House. Is there anyone interested from the House? I uh, will take that up later. So, Senator Joel, please. Thank Continue. you very much, uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, my senior Brad. Uh, first of all, at the onset, I'd like to join my uh, distinguished colleagues, uh, Senator Lacson, Senator Go, Senator Villar, Senator Subiri, and the majority of the members of this honorable committee uh, in supporting the nomination of and confirmation of our uh, uh, nominee, Secretary Carl Chua, I have known him for uh, quite some time. He has an excellent uh, track record, highly competent, um, passionate uh, public servant with integrity and ability to impact our uh, economic uh, policies. Perhaps the only uh, chance that I will change my mind if he believes he can be a better uh, NEDA secretary than uh, a senator, uh, secret then Secretary Ralph Recto. But uh, Mr. Chairman, let me just uh, uh, point and uh, ask one question to the uh, to the uh, to the nominee. And uh, first of all, I would I, I would like to congratulate him and the uh, recommendation of NEDA to uh, vaccinate right away our not only our essential workers but uh, our economic uh, uh, workers, and I think uh, this June uh, they will start uh, 
entertaining the list of our economic workers, whether you work for the informal or uh, formal sector, I think that's uh, very important. I, I would just like to ask one question to uh, Secretary Carl, because uh, last year, if I uh, recall it right, uh, during our uh, budget hearing, I remember him uh, representing uh, NEDA with that position that the creation of uh, the Department of uh, Migrant Workers and Overseas Filipinos is not actually uh, an urgent uh, matter. Uh, but this time, just for the record, uh, I, 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 I would like to, to ask him now because we received a position paper coming from NEDA, uh, him being at the helm of uh, uh, NEDA, uh, who is now uh, supporting or fully supporting the uh, creation of the Department of uh, OFWs and uh, uh, Overseas uh, Filipinos. Uh, Secretary, how, how, how do you think the new the new department uh, uh, help address the concerns of our migrant workers and overseas uh, Filipinos. Um, and what made you change your uh, your, your your position, uh, Secretary? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair and Senator Joel. Uh, if I may uh, first mention that uh, any policy change, uh, there are trade-offs. And as I communicated to the committee uh, and to you last year, uh, there are many trade-offs. On the one hand, uh, we have a major crisis, the COVID-19 pandemic, and there are concerns also about creating new departments. But I have already communicated my support and some recommendations to make the bill and proposal stronger, as you have uh, seen. Uh, I think there are three that uh, we have recommended finally after seeing the committee report. Number one is the evaluation and the, and the any sunset because we don't want to uh, be uh, uh, having a department that will be uh, existing for a very long time when our priority is to of course uh, offer opportunities to the people here not abroad the second is i think you have also uh, agreed that uh, the focus is uh, should also be reintegration uh, while we also help the uh, our OFWs in their plight abroad we also have to give them better opportunities to come back and reintegrate and to bring the learnings they have because uh, uh, senator the filipino worker is a global brand as you know and uh, why can't we also benefit from their uh, fantastic services uh, here especially now that the country is growing uh, hopefully after the pandemic uh, and finally is also to have a proper transition period because uh, any major change of course uh, we have to do it properly to ensure that the uh, services are not hampered. Uh, that, that those are the comments that uh, we uh, most recently sent. And uh, as you know, this is a priority in the LEDAC Execom. And we are committed to uh, moving as many of these bills as uh, we can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for that answer, uh, Secretary Carl. Uh, again, uh, thank you for reiterating that uh, it is not a state policy for us to uh, force our uh, human resources, our laborers to, to work abroad. And that's why it is important to note that uh, we both agree that uh, uh, it is very important that we create opportunities here because uh, even before the pandemic, 6,092 uh, Filipinos would leave the country every single day. And then you made mention about reintegration, which is very important. It was uh, brought up by our majority leader during our first uh, plenary debates. Um, there's no such thing as one fits all uh, reintegration program and we're working on it. But one last question that I'd like to raise, you, you talk about transition and the importance of uh, transition. No? Conversely, what are, um, uh, what are the other, uh, what are the policy gaps and uh, implementation challenges uh, 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 the current government agencies catering to OFWs and uh, uh, overseas Filipinos in the provision of uh, services. Uh, do you do you have any studies uh, regarding uh, this particular issue, uh, Mr. Uh, Senator? I am not an expert in this matter, no. But uh, if you may allow me to check if there are certain yes. gaps, I, I'm sure uh, there are experts that we can consult uh, in PITS or in my work colleagues in Meda. Yes, uh, thank you. I uh, will work with you and uh, let me uh, again spread into the records my uh, sincerest thanks and gratitude for your service. And uh, I'm one of the 
perhaps uh, many, if not all, uh, members of this uh, uh, honorable commission that would like to uh, see you thrive and uh, uh, be successful in your uh, public service career. Again, advance congratulations and God bless you. Thank well, you. Thank you very much, Senator. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Joel. Uh, the Senator, Secretary. Uh, the best Tesla Secretary we ever had, Senator Joel. Uh, the Chair would like to recognize at this point uh, Senator Po, and as I mentioned earlier, thereafter it be Senator Bong Revilla, uh, Senator Risa, then Congressman Advincula. Yes. Senator Po, you're recognized. You may take Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm quite confident that our nominee today will get the unanimous approval of the body. I, for one, will not just give a rote support for his confirmation, but a very enthusiastic one. Um, Secretary Carl has worked very hard with the Senate to approve many important bills. But having said that, um, as we know, the NEDA is crucial in rolling out many different projects that will help the economy. And part of those projects are infrastructure projects. So I'd like to ask Secretary um, Carl what he has now in the pipeline. What are the top 10 or top five infrastructure projects that are being vetted by NEDA? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair and Senator Poe. Uh, as you know, the NEDA, together with the flagship infrastructure flagship advisor and the Infracom committee of the NEDA, uh, we continuously review our infrastructure flagship projects. And in the latest approval by the NEDA board, 112 were identified. Uh, of the 112, uh, of course, I cannot mention each and every project, but uh, 51 are in the construction stage, uh, 31 in pre-construction. If it's a vehicle, they are just uh, waiting for the shovel uh, ready, the procurement, and so on. Uh, we have uh, 17 that we are processing in the ICC. And, so can you give uh, me an example, uh, Mr. Secretary, what those top three projects are, at least, that are already um, moving? Uh, moving. Uh, well, uh, we have the Metro Manila subway in pre-construction stage. Uh, we have, of course, uh, several LRT extension, the Line 1 South extension, the Line 2 East extension. The, even in the countryside, we have the bus uh, rail uh, transit, BRT. We have uh, expressways that we are doing in Davao. The Mindanao Railway is... Uh, in pre-construction. So there are uh, several of these projects, uh, Madam uh, Senator. And, Actually, uh, Secretary, prior to your tenure at the NEDA, uh, there were concerns being voiced that actually the bottleneck is in NEDA when it comes to the approval of certain projects. Now, can you tell me uh, the composition of the NEDA board just to refresh our memory and what possible obstacles do you encounter uh, that causes the delay of an approval of a, a crucial infrastructure or any economic uh, policy? Well, uh, Madam Senator, the NEDA board is chaired by the president. I am the vice chair. Uh, there are, I think, uh, 13 members, uh, 14 members. Uh, NEDA, the OP, uh, DOTR, DPWH, uh, Finance, DPM. And, and, and so how on. often do you meet? Well, uh, we have done a lot of uh, ad referendum approvals uh, in the last year. Uh, in the time that I was in NEDA, uh, there were, I think, uh, 31 approvals done ad referendum. In other words, these have been vetted by the technical board, the ICC, and then elevated to the NEDA board. So that is my recollection. Now, uh, if I um, may respond, Madam Chair, uh, Madam Senator, yes, yes. to uh, supposed delays. No? Um, of the 112, 80% uh, actually have already been approved by the NEDA board. Uh, we are just down to uh, 17 that we are processing in the ICC. 
and uh, four that are waiting for feasibility study and nine in the agency. So um, we are moving fast. However, uh, for approval of projects, we of course have to be mindful of the mandate of the Investment Coordination Committee, and that is to ensure that uh, all the projects are uh, well designed, are the proponents are financially capable, and that uh, they will not add to burden, future burden, uh, to the people in terms of payments or contingent liability. So that is why the ICC NEDO process is a very rigorous one. And if there are incomplete submission, unfortunately, according to the law and IRR, we have to return those submissions until they are complete so that we can see the whole picture when we approve such projects. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So, Secretary, the 112 that you said you approved, um, you were able to approve 30 plus during your short stint? Uh, not not in my short stint. This is the, uh, the entire five years of the Duterte administration. But during my stint, uh, there were 31 projects that went through the ICC and uh, the board. Uh, if I recall correctly, um, around uh, 14 were uh, new projects of, of various projects, uh, mostly the health and COVID-related ones. And 17 came back because they, there were changes in scope or cost or uh, something uh, that has to be noted. So that's no, no, that, that's why I'm trying to clarify. 112 were approved, 30 of which was during your tenure. Uh, may, may I clarify, ma'am? The 112 is the total infrastructure flagship project. Okay. Uh, total. Uh, there are 17 in the ICC process right now. Uh, but, Madam Chair uh, and Madam Senator, uh, if I may clarify, we approve both projects in the flagship and the regular ones. So uh, I, I suppose we cannot add them up. But if we, you look at the entire picture, the ones that went through uh, NEDA and the ICC during my term is a total of 31. Po. Okay. Um, now, of course, the leader is only as good as uh, the support given by his uh, um, staff and his employees. And there are others that have been in NEDA for, for quite a while. Um, my, my experience, actually, uh, personally, for the PSA, uh, we, we, have, uh, we have your assurance that you will support us. But I guess maybe uh, the staff have been, had been really busy. Uh, but we need more data uh, to be able to justify passing this bill. So I hope that um, we will be able to get that from your office as we request because uh, sometimes uh, our colleagues ask us for data that, of course, with, with our limited scope of uh, understanding and research, we might not be able to provide. Now, moving on to the next question, how do you prevent um, yeah, Secretary. Jane, basta yung mga DPWS, hindi mo nagagawa. Um, Mr. Secretary, uh, Secretary Carl? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, may I request the question again? No, no, no. It, it's just a manifestation that um, we hope to get more data uh, to uh, yes, justify the passage of the Public Service Act from your office. Yes, ma'am. We will. Um, okay. And then next is, how do you prevent political interests from affecting your decision because yours should be based on technical data as well as uh, well the vetting and research but of course there will always be political pressure because admittedly the composition of the NEDA is not purely uh, composed of technocrats you have politicians there so would you assert your voice uh, louder when it comes to certain issues? Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, Madam Senator, uh, that is really my policy. Uh, in fact, uh, before NEDA, when I was in DOF, uh, I have only used data to justify all the reforms that I have been proposing. But I, uh, but I continue to listen, of course, to the congressmen, senators, and other officials if they have a better suggestion. And we have incorporated that. Now, in NEDA, uh, my style, um, as uh, people already know, 
is that I do not recommend to the NEDA board any project that is not uh, fully vetted or complete yung requirements. And I, kind, and I kindly inform those who have uh, been pushing or requesting that ito po yung kulang, ito yung sabi ng batas or IRR, ito yung requirements, uh, but we only got so and so. So, uh, and uh, I have also requested my staff to reach out to the implementing agencies to even uh, reorient them on what, for instance, the BOT law says, so that uh, uh, people can comply better. Uh, that, that is how I work in NEDA right now, ma'am. Well, you know, that, that's very reassuring to hear that from you. And although, of course, I belong to uh, the political side, as a Filipino, I would like our technocrats to remain unbiased because that's really important. Uh, administrations come and go, but your policies will have a lasting effect on the growth of the country, which is, as you mentioned earlier, will affect the kind of life your five-year-old child will have in the future. And I think that's also the reason why we strive to do what, believe, what we believe is right, um, either us in legislation and you, of course, in, in policy. Now, last question. There was this... Um, proposal, a mega consortium proposal for the NAIA uh, rehabilitation. And apparently, from uh, what I gathered, that did not push through because it took a longer time vetting with NEDA. Can you tell me what the obstacles were? Uh, why that, you know, because when you, when you look at it, you have all of the um, big investors pool their resources and then they have the track record and the capability, but it did not go through the approval of NEDA in a timely manner. Naabuta na ng COVID. So actually, I'm sure they breathed a sigh, sigh of relief for not getting that, considering now uh, there's such a downturn in the travel industry. But, but can you, uh, if you're privy to that, uh, can you tell me what happened? Uh, Mr. Chair, Madam Senator, in my recollection, when I came in as acting secretary, uh, the original proponent uh, and the government were, I think, in negotiation stage. Uh, that did not uh, uh, come to some uh, conclusion. That is why the DOTR submitted a new proposal, uh, which we vetted, and uh, we did not find uh, to be qualified. That is why we returned the project uh, to the DOTR. And so that is, uh, I guess, uh, what happened in a nutshell to the NAIA project. So, so tell me, what was the second project submitted by the DOTR, which you vetted and did not find um, uh, well, uh, satisfactory? It is, well, it is the same um, uh, project to expand and modernize the NAIA. Uh, in but the who is the proponent? The, uh, I believe it was the uh, mega wide, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, there, there, there's a new one now, right? Uh, there's we another. Not we, we have you, not you're seen not... it in the NEDA board. Uh, in the NEDA secretariat. But it will not. Uh, it will not push through without the proper approval of the NEDA board. Correct. Uh, well, it has to be first uh, vetted by the uh, grantor, in this case, uh, the DOTR. Uh, DOTR and MIAA. We have not yet even seen any from them for any new proposal. Then okay. it will have to go through the NEDA, Secretariat, ICC, and the NEDA board. Okay. Well, that's all, uh, Secretary Carl. Uh, first of all, thank you for your service. I'm sure that you would prob probably be compensated more if you were in the private sector and you would probably be less stressed. But again, you're doing this again for your child and for our country. And for that, we thank you. I guess the best way you can assure uh, the success in your tenure is to make sure that your decisions are based on what you believe is right uh, and not because of certain political pressures. So that's all. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very Thank much, you. Thank you, Senator Po. Uh, Senator Revilla is recognized. And I did mention earlier, after Senator Revilla, it will be Senator Risa, uh, then Advincula, Congressman Advincula, 
Uh, then I'd also like to recognize the presence, the physical presence of Senator uh, Bato, who will be asking questions after Congressman Advincula. Thank you very much. Uh, Senator Bong, please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is to uh, express my uh, full support for the young, accomplished, and learned NEDA Secretary Carl Chua, who has proven his dedication and uh, competence in his things in government service. We only uh, hear good things about his leadership. The many late nights of studying he spent in the office and the hard work and diligence he has put into crafting many of our tax laws and economic recovery measures. Kung meron man pong uh, miyembro ng gabinete ngayon na may pinakamabigat na responsibilidad sa panahon na ito ng pandemya, isa na dyan si Secretary Chua. Marami po sa ating mga kababayan ang uh, umaasa sa kanyang sipag, talino at direksyon para makaahon ng ating pambansang ekonomiya mula sa hagupit ng COVID. I'm confident that with this, uh, with uh, someone as hardworking, as dedicated and as capable as Secretary Chua at the helm uh, of NEDA, we have a good fighting chance of attaining recovery sooner rather than later. Kaya, Secretary, I just have one question bago ako magtapos. You have served as a senior country economist for the Philippines in the World Bank, where you worked for more than 10 years. The, dis the, the decision to leave the World Bank to join the government service was characterized in your profile as the most stupid decision you, you ever made. Uh, for the record, what made you choose and enter public service? Thank, thank okay. you, Mr. Chair, Senator Bong. Uh, actually, I did not say that, uh, but my mother thought it was the uh, stupid decision. But of course, uh, mothers are mothers. Uh, you know, <laughs> I have been a development economist uh, for more than 10 years in 2016. You know, it is uh, inevitable, I think, uh, that uh, instead of just advising government, which I have done in the World Bank, that uh, I have to also experience government uh, sooner or later. But I did not expect it in 2016, uh, you know, because I just had a, a baby and we were settling down and there were other dreams that, uh, you know, as you build a family, you build also your other uh, um, expect expectations, uh, like you want a car or a house, for instance. Um, but uh, it came sooner uh, than later. And I was uh, not close to it. Uh, and I uh, thought I would stay for a few years, but I stayed longer. And now I am uh, appointed as an interim to NEDA. So I look at the last five years as a great opportunity to learn a lot more and to contribute and to convert some of my advice uh, into actual policy. So um, that, that is, I think, how the past years uh, went. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Secretary. Sana dumami pa yung lahi mo. And keep up the very good work. Congratulations. Huh? Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Bong. Uh, Senator Risa? Salamat, Salamat, Mr. Chair. At uh, magandang hapon po sa iyo, Sec. Uh, Carl. Magandang hapon po, Senator. Following from um, the last exchange between the good secretary and Sen Bong Revilla, para dumami ang lahi ni Sec. Carl. So, dumami sa, sa iyong generation and at the same time, well, mas maraming anak. I've always been... Um, Touched to hear you refer uh, to your son, Sec. Carl. He's younger than my kids, pero nasa iisang generasyon sila. And I guess uh, if you haven't guessed it yet, I could make it of record in this hearing that you're arguably uh, one of the nicest uh, government officials that I've had to agree with only half of the time and disagree with the other half of the time. But in any case, um, also to make of record that... Uh, you are well spoken of by um, many of our fellow alumni in our alma mater. 
And I'm glad to read in the information about you that you're described by your colleagues as a good leader with a moral compass, something very important to us. So, say, Carl, I just have um, four sets of questions uh, to call your attention and, and solicit your responses uh, on some very important poli policy decisions. Na arguably, baka hindi directly parte ng trabaho niyo, pero since no one else seems to be paying um, enough attention to these. So una po, tungkol sa uh, still dismal public transport, the biking option at saka transport inflation. Based on your profile, Sec. Carl, you enjoy riding a bike going to and from your office. In fact, uh, may letrato nga ninyo a few months ago on a bike with the NEDA building in the background. If everybody, sana lang, no, could bike, maganda yan. Biking certainly beats using up hours of one's precious day waiting at horribly crowded bus stations and jeepney stops, praying that airborne viruses won't latch onto you or that it won't be late for work or that the family will still be awake, uh, not yet asleep when you get home. Uh, okay talaga magbike dahil dyan, pero dapat all, Mr. Secretary. So could I ask first, may I ask what NEDA has done so that those who can't bear the crowded transport stations can actually also bike to work to the market or to school eventually as we reopen uh, and back home safely uh, in the coming months, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Senator. Uh, NETA fully supports all the initiatives for active transport, including the following. Number one, bike lanes. I think the safety of bikers uh, should be prioritized and there's budget in Bayanihan too. And uh, there are bills in Congress uh, proposing to further uh, the biking uh, behavior or practice. So uh, we support that. Uh, second, you know, we are in a hot, humid country. Uh, temperature outside yesterday was 41 degrees because uh, I measured it. Yes. No? Uh, we have proposed that offices uh, have the end of mile service, like a shower mm -hmm. room, a changing room, because you cannot bike the man wearing uh, your office attire, no? mm -hmm. and so on. So th those are some of the initiatives. In NEDA, particularly, uh, we were able to receive a donation. Uh, we have 10 bikes, uh, which we actively promote that any NEDANS can use. Mm -hmm. So and I continue to advocate for that. I think uh, uh, it is uh, all positive. You know, you reduce pollution, you reduce mm -hmm. congestion, you improve your health, and you make yourself feel better or mm -hmm. feel good when you get to the Healthy. office after going through that, uh, you know, uh, experience. So I hope there will be more support for that. Thank you. Thank you, Sec. Carl, and uh, count on us in the Senate uh, for one to uh, continue giving that and, and more support. Nakakatuwa. Did I hear you refer to your colleagues as Nedans? Nedans po. That okay. is what, uh, when I came in, that is how they call themselves. Nedans. Ah, already. Okay po. Parang Bedans kasi. Okay. Right. Thank you, Sir Carl. Okay. Um, transport, transportation inflation naman po. That was at nearly 20% in February. So, ano po ba yung mga dahilan nito? Uh, dahil ba to sa paggamit ng kotse, taxi, at special trips sa tricycles nating mga Pilipino? Kasama na ba sa transport inflation yung uh, oras sa paghihintay ng public transportation? And what can NEDA do about uh, transport inflation? I, I do hope you can um, share your thoughts on this question, Sec. Carl. Kahit ito ay mas DOTR concern, kasi syempre umaapekto din naman ito sa uh, economic productivity natin, okay. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Thank you Madam uh, Senator. Uh, NEDA, of course, is concerned about inflation and the effect on the people. So we do look at itong transport. Uh, nakikita po namin uh, maybe two major reasons. No? Uh, the first one is uh, oil prices are going back to normal levels. Uh, that is being reflected. Uh, but the second one is we have a policy kasi po of one seat apart or 50% capacity. For some transportation, hindi talaga siya, uh, you know, break even. Uh, that is why uh, we see in some segments uh, an increase in the price. So instead of uh, you pay for uh, two people, you have to pay for yourself the same price. So nakikita po namin. That is why in the Bayanihan 2, uh, we have proposed that a certain part of the budget uh, be allocated for service contracting 
So yes. that, uh, we can augment, you know, the transportation is key because last year we fully closed public transport. Uh, mm -hmm. But now, at least uh, during even ECQ, we opened it 50%. But not all public transport kasi, can survive. Mm -hmm. uh, that is why uh, this policy, I think, would be uh, good until such a time that uh, we can adjust back to normal levels. Um, Thank you. Mr. Mr. Chair, may I just interject on, on a, a brief point on service contracting? Um, I would like to let the Secretary know that based on the reports that we received of the service contracting amount of about $4 billion, um, there's only less than 1% was disbursed and given to our drivers. So perhaps, uh, Neda, I don't know if it, this is within your purview after you've approved it, but perhaps with your colleagues in the board, you can ask them uh, what's happened to this? Why is there a slow disbursement when uh, that, that funding will expire soon? That's less than 1% that was okay. given to our drivers. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. I will uh, take it up with DOTR, ma'am. Thank you, Sec Cora. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And thank you, Sen Grace. Um, I had been advocating for um, service contracting since the Bayanihan 1 uh, debates. At ito talaga matagal ng advocacy ng transport sector natin. So thank you to Sen Grace and then to Sec Carl for uh, committing to follow up on why less than 1% has been given out of this really transport sector life-saving fund lalo na sa katapusan ng buwan mag expire na ito um, and also Sir Carl uh, thank you for responding to my uh, question about uh, transportation inflation you might recall Sec that um, nirisko itong issue ito in connection with uh, hindi pagbaba sa taripa sa imported pork the time we were first uh, debating about this between the legislature and the executive and i pointed to in fact transport inflation as a, a real uh, a culprit in the whole problem of supply and prices of uh, pork in the market and as an area where i thought no more properly our government economic managers could make corrections rather than yung yung tinahak no with the eo and all at pagbaba ng taripa na talagang naging masama yung epekto sa mga local na magbababoy natin but anyway just for the record uh mr uh, chair since uh sec carl uh, probably recalls uh, those points from that debate Going to my second topic, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Secretary Carl, that the 2022 recovery would be at risk if NEDA's pipeline of investment projects is empty, actually. Um, I remember reading news articles before 2020 that uh, the president uh, instructed his cabinet not to work on large projects that will not produce major milestones during his term. Uh, I don't know. Maybe the cabinet followed those instructions. That's why during an online forum just a few months ago, uh, another former NEDA secretary, Felipe Medalia, sounded the alarm that the 2022 economic recovery is imperiled because the UMANO, the administration, is not developing a portfolio of projects that the next administration can use to pump prime the economic recovery. So, kanina sa card binanggit nyo yung paglatag nyo ng foundation for that recovery. Ang concern ni former Sec Medalia ay yung portfolio of projects uh, on which, uh, which, which would be implemented on that foundation. So, it doesn't help, of course, that even the unsolicited PPP projects that may have seemed so viable but before the pandemic, no, halimbawa nga yung mga airport projects, may na have to be withdrawn and recalibrated. Tapos balik na naman sa bagong cycle ng review and approvals. So in line with this, Sec. Carl, what is your work plan for NEDA to ensure that there would be a diverse portfolio of projects that can be reviewed and then launched quickly and at scale by the successor administration? How will you correct the situation so that we can avoid two years of project preparation and economic slowdown during the first two years of the next administration, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Madam uh, Senator. Uh, there are three things that we are doing. No? Number one, the flagship projects numbering 112, uh, 30 of them are for the 
pipeline are proposed to be in the pipeline for the next admin but uh, we do not have as you mentioned uh, one or two years of waiting uh, so that is the first number two uh the the budget that we have right now has 1.12 trillion peso worth of infrastructure and i understand the one that uh, we are proposing to congress will continue that level uh, number three, I noticed uh, when I came into NEDA that there is some regional inequity in the mm -hmm. infrastructure. That is why I have requested my NEDA regional offices to be more proactive to determine ano po ba yung needs ng various regions in terms of projects so that they can be adequately considered uh, by the DPM uh, once uh, we go through that preparation of the National Expenditure Plan. But uh, as you know, ma'am, uh, the projects, because many big projects, they really take many years, uh, sometimes yes. beyond administration. But mm -hmm. what we have done in the infrastructure projects is not to propose a super big one. We propose it by stages. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, the subway, the Mindanao Rail, by stages, yeah, eh? so that we can uh, focus on a particular segment, deliver it, show result, then we move to the next. So, yan po yung isa sa mga strategy na ginagawa po natin. Thank you. Thank you, Sec. Carl. Uh, naririnig ko yung, I'm sure naririnig namin lahat on the eve of um, the, the beginning of our budget deliberations this year for next year's budget. The point you made about the more than one trillion for infrastructure, and then para sa akin, Sekar, importante yung sinabi niyo about the regional inequity. Kasi kung maalala niyo mula sa simula ng uh, budget debates na magkakasama tayong lahat since almost half a decade ago, uh, talagang isa ako sa naglalabi na bigyan ng mas matimbang na bigat yung say nung in yung mga local development councils all the way to the regional development councils na oo nga ma-prioritize ito ng DBM uh, sa NEP. And I guess that's also significant, Sec. Carl, uh, in the context of uh, the the uh, Mandanas funds, uh, you know, uh, tectonic shift uh, next year. Uh, proposing by stages, that reminds me of one budget instrument early on proposed by DBM that I really welcomed also, the, the Mayowa. Hindi ko lang kung ano na nangyari dyan at kung na, na ma-maximize yung uh, paggamit niyan. Um, and lastly, on this topic, uh, Sec. Carl, uh, how should projects be financed by the next administration? Uh, given that public indebtedness has been rising despite the economic team's, well, extremely conservative attitude towards spending, I think. Huh? So is it is it time kaya to bring the private sector back in? to sustain infrastructure spending, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Madam Senator, uh, you know, we are open to different modes of financing. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, uh, we have a mix of financing. Uh, meron tayong locally funded, uh, both by national or the local. We have uh, those funded by development uh, partners, the ODA, and also those funded by uh, PPPs. So we are open, mm -hmm. in fact, uh, in the flagship list, 27 projects, or maybe 20, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry, 27 are PPPs. Uh, what we want to make sure is that uh, all the projects uh, being financed by option A or B or C give us value for money mm -hmm. so that we know which one is the best option. Uh, number two, we want to make sure that the financing will be sustainable. Uh, mm -hmm. There are no hidden charges or hidden payments or liabilities that will suddenly blow up in the future. So those are the things that uh, we are very uh, cognizant and that's why we have to vet all these projects to find uh, which mode is the best, will give us the best value. Thank you. Thank you, Sec. Carl, and I, I hope that the successor administration will have uh, an even stronger um, fiscal policy to catch up with the monetary policy. So moving to my next uh, topic, Sec. Carl, it's, uh, the, my question here is, isn't immediately expanding DSWD, poverty reduction spending, a no-brainer? Ang, ang sense ko lang po, isa itong no-brainer na uh, pwedeng kaagad kawin ng administrasyon no, to fully fund the 4Ps program this year 
so that the 1.5 million families that PIDS estimates to have descended into poverty as the recession took hold last year uh, can avoid falling into poverty traps. Uh, and I suppose, eh, Carl, na ang, PS, ang PIDS in update yung estimates nila and this might easily exceed 2 million uh, families today. Uh, I'm guessing for 2022, an, addition, an additional 2 million four-piece families will require an additional also 20 billion pesos for the second semester of 2021 and an additional 40 billion pesos in 2022. Wouldn't you agree, Sec. Carl, na dapat gawin na natin ito ngayon and uh, there's no reason we should hesitate? Speaking of value for money na binanggit nyo kanina, the benefit cost ratios for this program are well known, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Madam Senator, uh, first of all, uh, let me say that I support the conditional cash transfer program, which is yes. now into the and in fact, if I may just simplify the matter, no, my understanding of the data is uh, one in three children are malnourished. Yes. And if they are uh, not taken care of, uh, they are unable to finish school and get a good job. And that passes to their children and grandchildren. Mm -hmm. So I support the program. Uh, the law actually, I think, uh, asks PIDS to do an evaluation. I'm eager actually to read the evaluation so that mm -hmm. it can uh, advise us how to proceed forward. And finally, we have been implementing this uh, program since 2008, no? when it was piloted. I'd also yes. like to understand also the exit strategy, because of course mm -hmm. we don't want to continuously providing subsidies uh, and not achieve our outcome. So I would look at all this first, ma'am, before we make a major recommendation uh, to increase or not, because uh, the CCT is not the only way to address the problems that the poor face. Uh, there are, I think, many other ways that we can also look at as a package. Thank you. Fair enough, Sec. Carl. Pero I'm sure you know better than me na kahit sa ibang mga bansa na gumamit ng CCT at uh, pinagbasihan natin in, in designing our own four piece, whether uh, labol sa familia sa Brazil or yung Narendra Bayon or Narega program sa India, uh, it, isa itong epektibo. At uh, palagay ko, um, I can't remember kung the earlier assessment was also by uh, PIDS, pero naalala ko po na earlier batches ng mga four-piece families ay talagang naipakita na natulungan nito sila iahon sarili nila sa kahirapan. And we've seen other success indicators like yung mga uh, anak ng four-piece families na nagtapos sa high school as valedictorians, salutatorians, at in fact, naging uh, studyante na scholar sa mga state uh, universities and colleges. But I, I also would be interested, I'm sure all of us here, SECA, would be interested to see the latest um, assessment. And confident ako na it will bear out uh, earlier findings na isa ito sa effective sa package of uh, poverty alleviation and sustainable development interventions na pwedeng gamitin ng gobyerno. Uh, lastly, on this uh, topic, uh, SECA, uh, could you explain why uh, you and our other economic managers might might disagree with the proposal to expand the roster of these four piece beneficiaries by say two million families? Uh, gamit po yung ranked listing ng lista and three. I'm sure that uh, you understand the notion of poverty traps that I mentioned earlier mula po sa development economics. So dito po kung saan yung mga bata tumitigil sa pag-aaral, baka dumami yung one in three children out of school na sinabi nyo kanina. Tapos di sila makabalik kasi kailangan nilang tulungang i-reduce yung mga gastos, make ends meet. Kung, uh, poverty trap kung saan yung pamilya uh, ibebenta na lang yung kalabaw nila o kaya yung maliit na lupa kung saan sila dati nagsasaka. Tapos yung binanggit nyo rin about malnutrition, um, stunting and wasting, no? Poverty trap kung saan yung mga bata hindi napapakain ng mabuti. Tapos binanggit nyo rin, tuloy nagkakaroon sila ng lifelong learning difficulties bilang resulta ng uh, trauma ngayon, Mr. Chair. So why might not you agree with expanding the four-piece list batay sa listahan ng three? Uh, well, ma'am, uh, first of all, I actually would like to see the evaluation. You know, my, 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 my sense is that uh, uh, many people would benefit from this program. Uh, but I also would like to see, uh, finally, after a decade or long implementation, what has this actually bring to us? 
Uh, my second uh, concern lang that uh, why I cannot, uh, you know, jump to a sudden, uh, you know, uh, agreement to expand is uh, I'm also would like to understand the exit strategy because as you know, there are many people who are claiming this is a dole out or so on, no? uh, which really is not because there are conditions. Yes. You have to go to the health center, attend class and so on. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm very interested to know after spending billions, uh, what is really the impact on these uh, people we serve before we expand and uh, help other people. So that is my position now. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Sec. Carl. And again, fair enough. Uh, baka parang ano na to, isang generational study. And again, I, I affirm, Mr. Chair, I'm confident in the results. Baka yung exit strategy is uh, the, the actual outcomes of yung mga pamilyang dumaan sa Four Peace Program uh, as have been documented, at least in earlier studies. So abangan po natin itong latest uh, na assessment na ginagawa nyo. So to my last uh, topic, uh, Mr. Chair Sec. Carl, yung tanong din, huling tanong na, is the narrative of the economic team still the same? Uh, naalala ko po, Sec. Carl, last year, Sec. Dominguez said that uh, our, econ our economy's productive, ca ca our economic, uh, one last time, one more, once more with feeling, our economy's productive capabilities remain intact. Yon, yon ang sinabi ni Sec. Dominguez. Despite the recession, ergo, jobs will return as soon as we can safely reopen the economy. Ito pa rin po ba, Sec. Carl, yung narrative uh, kung papaano yung economy ay magre-recover? Kasi para pong there are so many ifs in this scenario, moving parts, and I wonder kung anong uh, ebidensya, anong simulations ay pwedeng i-present para ma-check natin kung yung core thesis ng economic team still holds uh, plausibility. Uh, for example, on three points, uh, and this this rounds off my last question to you, Sir Carl. Uh, do you see firms expanding production and sales just because, for example, there's been a reduction in the corporate taxes that they paid to the BIR? Do you see people going back to malls and planning vacations despite the high vaccine hesitancy? and the rapidly rising hospital capacity utilization rates outside NCR. And lastly, do you see or do you have the numbers on how the assets and liabilities of small and micro and medium firms have evolved over the past year so that one can be confident that, say, X percent of them will still be able to raise the cash so they can operate when demand uh, begins to recover. So ganito pa rin po ba yung... Uh, narrative at ano po yung mga ebidensya at simulations natin para dito, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Senator Risa, I believe the narrative is still the same. In fact, uh, stronger okay. now that we are seeing uh, the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, you know, when I look at the economy uh, last year and this year, uh, our macro fiscal management remains uh, very prudent and responsible. In fact, the credit raters have not downgraded us in a sea of downgrades. Number two, the reforms that Congress passed are still in being implemented. Number three, the infrastructure that uh, we have proposed continues to grow. And in the first quarter of 2021, it was, I think, 26% growth. So that is why I think yung productive assets natin nandyan. Uh, the people are still entrepreneurial, uh, they are still uh, skillful, the vast majority are not sick of COVID. However, our policy has been to uh, shut down a big part of the economy, and that is why there is no demand. That is why the firms are not generating sales. Uh, yes, uh, by Nihan 1, 2, and the budget, and the CREATE, and the FIST, and the GUIDE, and uh, all the support, uh, can temporarily alleviate uh, some of the concerns. But yung pinaka-permanent, uh, I suppose, uh, intervention really is to allow the firms to operate again, uh, res uh, remove the uh, very uh, restrictive quarantines at the appropriate time so that uh, people can regain their jobs. Once they have jobs, they regain their income. Once they have income, they will consume and consumer demand will follow. And that is what I think, ma'am, is the uh, more uh, potent uh, intervention. And this is now more possible because of the vaccination. Uh, and as we vaccinate more workers, and as I mentioned po kanina, A4 is now all workers who go out. 
private, government, or informal workers, then I think uh, it will be more uh, safer and the consumer confidence will return. And that, I think, will fuel the recovery faster, rather than what we did last year, which was to uh, you know, shut down a big part of the economy, put them at home, uh, wala pang vaccine. Uh, this year is totally different. So I'm, I'm very optimistic, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, just a reminder Thank to our Carl. Yes, Mr. We Chairman. We only have until a few more minutes, then we have plenary, then we have a session at 3 o'clock. Uh, so are you done, uh, Santa Risa? Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. That was my last question for Sec Carl. Maraming salamat, Sec Carl. Uh, as you know, I don't share your narrative or your optimism yet, but uh, I know that uh, you have uh, you have been advocating reopening the economy while supporting uh, stricter quarantine measures to bring down the infections. I know you've been trying to search for some kind of balance between that uh, hammer and dance, you know, flattening the curve and uh, reviving um, the economy. So uh, I will be supporting. Uh, the confirmation, your confirmation as Secretary of NEDA, even if I'll probably have to agree with you only half the time and disagree with you the other half. But I wish you all the best, Sec Carl, in your personal, family, and professional life as well. Salamat sa iyo. Marami salamat po, Mr. Chairman. Thank, Thank you, Senator Lisa, Congressman Advincula, then Senator Bato. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ang maganda hapon po sa ating uh, kagalang-galang na Secretary na nakasalang. Um, Secretary, congratulations. Uh, uno sa lahat, kung wala yung train law na ginawa mo, maaaring sad-sad yung ating ekonomiya ngayon. Kaya congratulations sa tax reform law mo na naipasa naman natin sa Kongreso. Kala mo magkasama tayo dito naman. No? But uh, sa tingin ko, dapat talaga i-boost natin yung economy ngayon. No? Uh, meron lang akong isang request or consideration na hinihingi sa China mo, no? Which regards dito sa Citibex. Citibex, yung Cavite, Tagaytay, Batangas, Expressway. Na kung saan nga ay uh, nakapending pa sa NEDA yung approval. Uh, Kamusta na yung status dun sa opisina mo? Mr. Secretary. Uh, th thank you very much. Uh, as you know, uh, there are several projects po uh, that have been experiencing uh, some issues brought about by the pandemic. My understanding po is uh, wala pa yung right-of-way plan for this uh, project. Na, na commit naman po yung uh, DPWH uh, to submit it in June. So we are waiting for that uh, to, before we can proceed. Yan po yung uh, parang because of the pandemic and the CQ, hindi talaga magawa yung ibang mga preparatory work po. Thank you. Yes, okay. Uh, napakalaking tulong sa ekonomiya ng dalawang probinsya, Batangas at Cavite, pag naturito. Dahil nakita ko na ito yung mga, kami lang ang nagdadala sa Metro Manila ngayon dahil uh, very productive at uh, very uh, aggressive yung aming dalawang, dalawang probinsya. Kaya sana matulungan kami dito. At uh, yun lang naman at uh, congratulations at nakita ko na sa tinatahak ng iyong uh, career ay napakaganda. Salamat sa patuloy na suporta sa ating bansa. And uh, Mr. Chair, I would like to express my sincere gratitude and support for the appointment of the new Secretary of NEDA, Secretary Carl Chua. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank, Thank you, you Congressman Advincula. Uh, the Chair would like to recognize our Senator Bato. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I, I just would sorry, like to... Sorry for the delay, Senator Bato, but uh, please continue. Hindi kita marinig, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, you're recognized, Senator Bato. Please continue. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just would like to inform the good chairman and uh, our nominee, uh, uh, Secretary Carl Chua, that uh, dito sa buong Pilipinas, pagdating sa economics, dalawang tao lang ang hinangaan ko. Dalawa lang idulo ko pagdating sa economics. Sa Malacanang, si Secretary Carl Chua, dito na mo sa Senado, yung chairman namin na napakagaling na si Senator Ralph Ricto. Kaya, kaya masasabi ko kay Secretary Carl Chua na uh, yung sinabi ni, ni Senator Bung uh, Rebilla that uh, some members of your family 
uh, told you that uh, your transfer from your decision to transfer from World Bank to this government is the most uh, ano ba yung term yun? is the most uh, uh, stupid, stupid decision, decision. Uh, disastrous in your life. Uh, I would like to counter that uh, statement that uh, your transfer from uh, World Bank to this government is the most patriotic uh, decision of your life. So, in behalf of the many Filipinos na nakikinabang sa iyong otak na pinahiram mo sa ating gobyerno, I would like to thank you. Thank you for lending your brains to this government. Magpapasalamat ka na hindi ako maging presidente kasi kung ako maging presidente, I will make, make you the NIDA secretary, the budget secretary, at the same time, the finance secretary. Kaya magdasal ka dahil uh, kawawa ka sa trabaho mo pag ako maging presidente. <laughs> Biro lang yun, ha? Biro lang yun, Carl, ha? Uh, Secretary Carl Tsua. But uh, again, thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, I would like to uh, manifest my support for the confirmation of the appointment of uh, Secretary Carl Tsua doon sa plenary mamaya. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Secretary Carl. Thank you very much, Senator Bato. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Bato, my other idol. So, uh, Secretary, is there any other member of the committee uh, wishing to ask a few more questions to, to Secretary Carl? There being none, Majority Leader? Uh, Mr. Chairman, before I make a motion, can I have a few questions with Secretary Carl, Mr. Chairman? Um, Please proceed, Majority Leader. Secretary, what was the role of uh, NEDA in drafting the measure, uh, the latest Bayanihan measure, Mr. Secretary? Uh, the Bayanihan 3, uh, you're referring to Bayanihan 3, Mr. Majority? Yes, where, where, where there is an allocation of uh, 2,000 to be given to all, all Filipinos. Uh, in my recollection, we had no role, but we participated several times and sent our position on the Bayanihan 3 proposal. And we had had several meetings, actually, with the Speaker uh, and the other uh, congressmen and secretaries to discuss how to fund it. Thank you. Yeah, uh, can I have your opinion? And please tell me if I understood it wrongly, that uh, when it was stated that all Filipinos will have a yuda of 2,000 pesos. That includes the president, that includes the senators, the congressmen, and yourself. Is that correct, Mr. Secretary? Uh, I have not read, uh, apologies, uh, Mr. Majority Leader, the details, uh, but I read there is a 2,000 per person. But I, I do not know the details for if there is uh, uh, some targeting or uh, prioritization. Yes, uh, it, it says 2,000 per person for all Filipinos. Uh, you know, I cannot uh, understand why such would be the language that everybody will be covered, even those who are receiving, uh, you know, 100,000 above. And if I love it my way, Mr. Secretary, uh, na siguro yung... Uh, those receiving 20,000 below would be given such an amount or even higher. But uh, for someone receiving 20,000 above monthly in a salary, and then to fall in line, kung saan man yung distribution, uh, I, I cannot understand it. I'd like to have your thoughts on that, uh, Mr. Secretary. Uh, our comments, uh, sir, that we sent is to target better uh, we we did not send a comment in my recollection to give everyone because in the country a big part of the country is not in heightened quarantine uh, it is in mgcq uh, and not in ecq so i recall our comments was to be more targeted to serve where the uh, real pressing uh, concerns are Rather than okay. to, for instance, uh, provide everyone a similar amount when the situation is different per person, per region. Thank you. 
Okay, I brought that up uh, today so that you will put on notice because uh, if I will quote newspaper accounts, it says that based on the uh, on the Bayanian 3 that we have the oh, and I quote, we have the main feature of Bayanian 3 where we will give 1,000 pesos each to every Filipino ayuda for all that is what we call Kalinga no? so and uh, there will be two rounds that's 2,000 pesos mm -hmm. yes um, having said that Mr. Secretary uh, join my colleagues in congratulating you in advance and uh, Mr. Chairman I don't think there is anybody else who manifested their, his interest in uh, questioning or manifesting I therefore now move to recommend to the plenary for the commission to give its consent on the nomination of Mr. Carl Kendrick Chiu Chua as Secretary National Economic and Development Authority. So move, Mr. Chair. There is a motion to favorably recommend to the plenary the nomination of Mr. Carl Kendrick Chiu Chua as Secretary National Economic Development Authority. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the same is hereby approved. Congratulations, Secretary Chua. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Majority. Uh, Mr. Chairman, there being no other matters to, to be discussed, I move to adjourn this meeting. Upon motion of the majority floor leader, Representative Almario and Julie seconded, there being no objection, the meeting is hereby adjourned. Carl. Congratulations, Carl. Congratulations, Carl. of the Commission on Appointments in the second regular session of the 18th Congress is hereby called to order. There is also a for silent prayer.
Amen. Thank you. Uh, please remain standing for the singing of the Philippine National Anthem. <laughs> Secretary will call her on. The Honorable Members of the Commission on Appointments. Advincola. Present. Palmario. Present. Alvarez Jr. Present. Arbison. Cagas. Chepeco Jr. Present. De La Rosa. Present. Grilon. Ferrer de Fourth. Peron. Present. Go. Present. Pontiveros. Present. Lapson. Noel. Present. Pancho. Present. Pimental the third. Po. Present. Ramirez Sato. Rento. Present. Revilla Jr. Present. Villanueva. Villar. Present. Zamora. Subiri. The chairperson is present. With uh, six members physically present and 16 online for a total of 22, the chair declares the existence of a quorum. Uh, Majority Leader. Mr. Chairman, I move to dispense with the reading of the journal of the plenary session held on May 26, 2021 and consider the same as approved. Any objection? Chair, here's none. The journal is approved. May I proceed? Majority Leader. Mr. Chairman, may we now proceed to consider the recommendation of the Committee on Tourism and Economic Development on the nomination of Mr. Carl Kendrick Chuchua as Secretary, National Economic and Development Authority. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the consideration of the recommendation of the Committee on Tourism and Economic Development is in order. Go ahead, Majority Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman, I move that the acting chairperson of the Committee on Tourism and economic development, Senator Ralph Recto, be recognized. Senator Ralph Recto is uh, hereby recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Majority Leader, my dear colleagues. The nominee is a nerd, but with K-pop looks. By nerd, I mean our national economist for recovery and development. In the cabinet, he is the youngest in years but one of the wisest in experience. But it is not only his youthfulness which makes him stand out in a cabinet of DOMs. Davao Connection, all these but goodies and military. But his intellect too. His CV is a fine print of academic and professional achievements. 
Taken together, they are the social and economic reforms writ large. He has logged 18 years of experience in each of the following disciplines. Economic policy, fiscal policy, tax administration, political economy, and tax policy. Speaking of tax, he is the architect of the biggest tax hike, or make that plural, tax hikes in history, without having to be punished by the voters at the ballot box like the fate of another Neda head. Add 16 years of work in statistical development, plus 15 in public expenditure management, 13 in labor and social protection policy, and 11 in poverty studies, the sum, which is more than 100 years in multiple career tracks, is twice and realist professional record, but achieved at half his age. Every leader, Mr. President, is dependent on some form of AI or artificial intelligence. And the president should be lucky to have this nominee who is walking with the terabytes of knowledge in his official family. It is good that he has top-notch qualifications because the cabinet portfolio he holds is one of the most important today. The reason is that the pandemic has unleashed a health crisis and an economic crisis all at once. It is a war being fought on two fronts. One is where lives are saved. The other is where livelihoods are salvaged. The fact is only a few of those that have gotten the virus may manifest severe body ills. But you don't have to get hit by COVID to be hurt by economic hardships it has caused. Not all COVID victims will see the inside of an ER, but the virus has placed our entire economy in the ICU. Our GDP cratered last year, sinking to a negative 9.6%. The unemployment rate seesaws between 7 and 18%. As business led, the economy shed at least 2.7 million jobs. For every day of ECQ, income loss is 2.8 billion. The toll on millions is best captured by this observation. Ang dating isang kahid, kahig, isang tuka, ngayon ay kahig ng kahig, walang matuk. Prevent the economy from fully flatlining and to lay the foundations of a turnaround. A suki of this institution, he has been counseling us on the relief, recovery, resilience measures that we must undertake if we want the greatest threat to this nation in 75 years to be over soon. Mr. President, I've been working with Domini for many years on all the measures the economic team want us to pass. I always find my encounters with him a learning experience for me, although I suspect that he may not have treated it as a teachable moment for him. I value the hundreds of hours we have discussed policy, even if I know that he looks forward to meeting me with the same excitement as when he goes to the dentist for a root canal. We have crossed swords on many issues, and we have lost count on the times we put each other's ideas on our own crosshairs. But always I come out of those encounters with a higher respect and deeper admiration for this patriot and professional whose love for his country and people is beyond doubt. Mr. President, the likes of him should be the rule in the cabinet, not the exception. The presence of the Neda chief in the cabinet serves as a, a government must do for its people. I mean, the things that truly matter, not the trivial ones trolls want. Things like jobs created, investment generated, GDP growth, exports, the poverty incident slashed, literacy, among others. This is the scorecard Neda keeps, 
and it is the only accurate barometer which tells us where we are. The true state of the nation is in our economic and social numbers. They are not in opinion polls which report the perception of the poll. Neither are they in the reach of the SOCMED polls. Surveys can never be a substitute for the development index. And the nation can only score high in that index if it follows and funds the plans of NEDA and if the government heeds the advice of its head. Mr. President, there is one line in the nominee's official CV which strikes me the most. No, these are not the impressive catalog of his published works. Neither are, are these his academic credentials, his AB from Ateneo, and his MA and PhD in economics from that public school down the road, which, as one joke goes, serves as a re-education camp for anyone coming out of a Jesuit school. Rather, I find it on his civil status, where he writes, married with one happy little boy who misses his dad. That boy is Cade Ashby, an incoming grade one student at where else? The Jesuit school, Savior, where his dad was the high school valedictorian 25 years ago. Cade is a star in the constellation of Eridamis, where habitable planets may exist. And Ashby, from what I've heard, is some economist. Obviously, he was named after his father's two passions, astronomy and economics, which bookends the day of this busy man. Mornings, he bikes to work with two pieces of pandesal as baon. To his day job, lead government economist. And after a day of poring over spreadsheets, he searches the sky for stars. So when we had that lunar eclipse some nights ago, I imagine father and son watching it together with the dad annotating the phenomenon to his class of one. But if he had the nation as audience that night, Carl Kendrick Chua would be telling us that we must have a man on the moon goal. I am referring to Kennedy's vow to put a man on the moon before the 60s was over. That we must break free of the political culture which treats grandiose dreams as grandstanding. That although we are in the gutter, let us reach for the stars. Mr. President, my dear colleagues, it is my honor to sponsor the confirmation of the appointment of Carl Kendrick T. Chua, father of a boy, who misses him terribly as the Secretary of Socioeconomic Planning and the Director General of the National Economic Development Authority. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I second the motion of the distinguished chairman of the committee. Uh, yes, um, Senator Zubiri. I would like to second, Mr. President, the nomination and interim appointment of Secretary Carl Chua well-deserving indeed, as I said, and I agree with our distinguished colleague from Batangas, I wish all our uh, cabinet secretaries, the profiles would be just like his. He's a good man, Mr. President, and I hope that he can be retained in the next administration, whoever leads this uh, nation. Marami salamat po, Mr. President. All right. Um, yes, the minority leader, Senator uh, Frank Delon is recognized. <laughs> Mr. President, uh, may I be allowed to second the motion of the Senate President for temporary. Uh, Mr. President, I rise in order to second the nomination of the Senate President for temporary. Mr. President, as you are as you are fully aware, the Senate with 24 members is often called the 24 republics because the 24 senators would have 24 views on every issue. But if you come to think of it, if there is one issue where there is unanimity by all the 24 senators, it is in the confirmation of the ad interim appointment of NEDA Director Carl Chua. Why is that, Mr. President? In my view, the most challenging force today in the cabinet is that of the NEDA Secretary. Why? Because for the past 18 months, 
our economy has been battered by the pandemic. As a result, we have had construction in the economy for the past five quarters. Millions were unemployed and continue to be unemployed today. Uh, the, we, have, we, we are on recession uh, for the past five quarters. Uh, our, our, the statistics would show that millions of our families have experienced uh, involuntary hunger. All of this is because of the very challenging and difficult time in our economy. Never in our history have we gone through this very difficult phase. And in our view, in the view of the 24 senators, Mr. President, the most qualified that to, to lead the planning for the recovery of our economy is no less than the nominee today, Secretary Carl Chua. Uh, Mr. President, indeed, more than any other time in history, we need someone who is competent, who is able, who has had experience in economic planning. We have known Carl Chua over the past five years when he was in the cabinet. He is one who is very competent, in my view, but at the same time, very humble and has always have his feet on the ground. Uh, we have had dealings with him and uh, uh, he is one who will, who, who is not theoretical, but is realistic. So it is with these views, uh, Mr. President, that I join uh, our, our Senate uh, uh, President Pro Tempore and our majority leader in seconding and recommending to the commission appointments, the confirmation of the ad interim appointment of Secretary Carl Chua, so that he will be better equipped in the last 18 months or so of this administration to in order to be able to effectively and plan for our economy and provide our country a fighting chance uh, in the near future, uh, in the future. Thank you very much, Mr. President. And again, I reiterate my support for Secretary Chu. Thank you, the Minority Leader. <clears throat> so, um, there is a motion, duly seconded, um, coming well recommended for the Commission to give its consent to the nomination of uh, Mr. Carl Kendrick Chu, Chua, as Secretary <laughs> of the National Economic and Development Authority. Is there any objection? Chair hears none. The motion is approved. Congratulations, Mr. Chua. Mr. Majority Leader. Mr. Chairman, may we now proceed to consider the recommendation of the Committee on Foreign Affairs on the nominations and ad interim appointments of 16 officials in the Department of Foreign Affairs. Any objection? Hearing none, consideration of the recommendations of the Committee on Foreign Affairs is in order. Mr. Chairman, I move, I move that the chairperson of the Committee on Foreign Affairs, Senator Panfilo Laxon, be recognized. The gentleman from Cavite, Senator Panfilo Laxon, is hereby recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was about to say, after a uh, rectus speech, whether from Claro or Ralph, everything that follows is surely boring. <laughs> but then my two colleagues, the majority leader and the minority leader, delivered uh, equally eloquent speeches, so I'm taking it back. Mr. Chairman, distinguished members of the Commission on Appointments, this representation as the chairman of the Committee on Foreign Affairs presided over a public hearing this morning to deliberate on the nominations of two ambassadors, extraordinary and plenipotentiary. The committee likewise deliberated on the ad interim appointments of 14 senior officials of the Department of Foreign Affairs, consisting of one senior official who is promoted to the rank of chief of mission plus one, five senior officials promoted to the rank of chief of mission plus two, four senior officials promoted to the rank of career minister, and four senior officials promoted to the rank 
of Foreign Service Officer Class 1. Your committee, after deliberating on their qualifications and fitness during the public hearing, determined that they are fit and qualified to be in the posts where they are nominated and appointed, and therefore ruled to, to recommend to the plenary their appointments for the consent and approval of this body. Mr. Chairman, it is my privilege and honor to recommend that this body give its consent to the nomination of Ambassador Myla Grace Rahinya Atalbas Makahili as the Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary to the Holy See with concurrent jurisdiction over the Sovereign Order of Malta with the rank and emoluments of a Chief of Mission Class Two. As the current Assistant Secretary of the Office of Financial Management Services of the DFA, our appointee or nominee has a sterling reputation of introducing financial management reforms in the department. Under her leadership, the Office of Financial Management earned the Global Implementer Award for executing and utilizing electronic budgeting systems. The first time DFA has been recognized for a national award since the systems were introduced and adapted for its global and local operations. In her 22 years of service, she has also capably served in various foreign postings, particularly at the embassies in Wellington, New Zealand from 2002 to 2009, and London, United Kingdom from 2012 to 2014. Mr. Chairman and distinguished colleagues, it is my privilege and honor to recommend that this body give its consent to the nomination of Ambassador Myla Grace Rahinya Katalbas Makahidi as the Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary to the Holy See with concurrent jurisdiction over the Sovereign Order of Malta with the rank and emoluments of a Chief of Mission Class Two. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Mr. Chairman, it is my honor and privilege to recommend that the Commission give its consent to the nomination of Ambassador Ezzedine Hamdi Tago as Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary to the Arab Republic of Egypt with concurrent jurisdiction <coughs> over the Republic of Djibouti, the Federal <coughs> Democratic Republic of Ethiopia, the State of Eritrea, and the Republic of Sudan with the rank and emoluments of a Chief of Mission Class Two. Our nominee started his career in the DFA as a casual employee and moved his way up to the ladder in his 26 years of foreign service. He handled sensitive positions at the home office and overseas, particularly at the Philippine Consulate in Jeddah, Jakarta, Indonesia, Riyadh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and Philippine Consulate General in Sydney, Australia until the subsequent nomination to his proposed post. In 2007, he was conferred with the Order of Lakandula, rank of officer, and a Gawad Mabini rank of commander award for his various diplomatic services. His high-level intelligence and diplomatic skills, particularly his specialization in Arabic, Middle East, and Islamic issues, and the peace process in Southern Philippines make him a highly reputable official in the department. Mr. Chairman and distinguished colleagues, it is my privilege and honor to recommend that this body give its consent to the nomination of Ambassador Ezzedine Hamdi Tago as Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary <coughs> to the Arab Republic of Egypt with concurrent jurisdiction over the Republic of Djibouti, the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia, the state of Eritrea and the Republic of Sudan with the rank and emoluments of a Chief of Mission Class Two. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Chair, he is done. Motion is approved. At this point, Mr. Chairman, I would also like to recommend to the Commission the confirmation of the ad interim appointment of Ms. Maria Teresa Cruz Daza to the rank of Chief of Mission Class One. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Hearing none. Approved. Mr. Chairman, I would also like to recommend to the Commission the confirmation of the ad interim appointments of the following officials to the rank of Chief of Mission Class 2. Ms. Charmaine Ruena Kawile 
Abi Bivil. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Hearing none. Approved. Mr. Adrian Bernie Cabardo Candolada. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Hearing none. Approved. Ms. Lilibeth Velasco Pono. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Hearing none. Approved. Ms. Josephine Magpantay Reynante. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Hearing none. Approved. Ms. Elizabeth Tan Te. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Hearing none. Approved. Mr. Chairman, I likewise recommend to the, the confirmation of the ad interim appointment of the following senior officials to the rank of career ministers or career ministers. Mr. Roderico Caparas Atienza. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Mr. Dona Celeste D. <coughs> Feliciano Gatmaitan. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Mr. Emmanuel Donato O. Guzman. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Donaranao Bantuas Musor. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. And finally, I recommend the confirmation of the ad interim appointments of the following senior officials to the rank of Foreign Service Officers Class 1. Ms. Erika <laughs> Anna Tan Abad. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Ms. Lili Ann Chen Cheng. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Ms. Chiena R. Escoto Tesorero. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. And finally, Ms. Anna Marie C. Santos. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Chair hears none. Approved. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, the Majority Leader. Mr. Chairman, may we now proceed to consider the recommendation of the Committee on National Defense on the nominations and ad interim appointments of 29 senior officers in the Armed Forces of the Philippines. And so moved. Any objection? Hearing none, the consideration of the recommendation of the Committee on National Defense is in order. Mr. Chair, I move that the chairperson of the Committee on National Defense Representative Luis John John Ferrer IV be recognized. Another gentleman from Cavite, the chairperson of the Committee on National Defense, Representative uh, Luis John John Ferrer IV, is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, distinguished members of the Commission on Appointments, this representation as chairman of the Committee on National Defense presided over a public hearing this morning to deliberate on the 26 ad interim appointments and three nominations of senior officers in the Armed Forces of the Philippines. Your committee, mm -hmm. after deliberating on their qualifications and fitness during the public hearing, determined that they are all fit and qualified to be promoted to the ranks where they are appointed and nominated, and therefore ruled to recommend to the plenary for the commission to confirm the 26 ad interim appointments and to give its consent to the three nomination of senior officers in the Armed Forces of the Philippines, namely, Greg P. Almerol, to the, to the rank of Lieutenant General. So moved, Mr. Chair. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Stephen P. Pareño, to the rank of Major General. So moved, Mr. Chair. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Manuel V. Sequitin, to the rank of Major General. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Lowell R. Tan, to the rank of Brigadier General. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Joe Anthony C. Orbe, to the rank of Commodore. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Vladimir Lenos T. Villanueva, to the rank of Colonel. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Gracioso D. Merioles, the rank of Colonel, Philippine Army. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Gremel B. Broal, to the rank of Colonel, Philippine Army. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Alvin G. Eo, to the rank of Colonel, Philippine Army. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. 
Eros James M. Yuri, with the rank of Colonel, Philippine Army. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Roderick L. Paralyag, with the rank of Colonel, Philippine Army. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Thomas Dominic B. Baluga, with the rank of Colonel, Philippine Army. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Justado Carlos D. Pambid, with the rank of Colonel, Philippine Army. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Sergio Macarandan Jr., with the rank of Colonel, Philippine Army. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Silas D. Transmontero, with the rank of Colonel, Philippine Army. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Jesus C. Pagala, with the rank of Colonel, Philippine Army. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Rimrad B. Peraer, with the rank of Colonel, Philippine Army. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Constancio M. Espina II, with the rank of Colonel, Philippine Army. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Frederick A. Ancheta, with the rank of Colonel, Philippine Army. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Mario Lito I. Reterva, with the rank of Colonel, Philippine Army. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Jerry Boy P. Paminyal, with the rank of Colonel, Philippine Army. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Ian Noel P. Ignes, with the rank of Colonel, Philippine Army. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Dean B. Ramos, with the rank of Colonel, Philippine Army Reserve. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Anne Marie T. Herodias, the rank of Colonel, Philippine Air Force. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Roselle B. Salvosa, the rank of Colonel, Philippine Air Force. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Ariel C. Alasan, the rank of Captain, Philippine Navy. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Jonathan A. Salvilla, the rank of Captain, Philippine Navy. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Alan E. Romero, the rank of Colonel, Medical Corps Reserve. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. And Pablito F. Melchor, the rank of Colonel, Chaplain Service Reserve. Any objection? The chair hears none, approved. That is all, Mr. Chair. Maraming salamat po. Thank you. Majority Leader. Mr. Chairman, there being no other matters to discuss, I move to adjourn. Any objection? Chair hears none. The session is hereby adjourned.